all government governments in Nigeria. By the words, the only media have been, that have been consistent speaking against the bad government and for the purpose for reformers. Major words, yo! pointed out that the, it's unfair to involve the Southeast governors, you know, making a political matter rather soci sociological, I believe that those yes. were your words. Yes. But the, um, seeing that, for instance, the stay at home um, or sit at home order is one that affected the Southeast governors. There are fears that, you know, the continued detention could actually continue to inflame tensions in the region. So do you think that they should play some kind of role, seeing that they are, have been affected by his detention one way or another, should they play some playing, role? They are playing the correct role. This. They are fighting it. They are asking people to come out. They, you know, and they are asking people to come out. But like I said, I said blood is thicker than water. You see, you, you may not necessarily come out to say you support something. Mm -hmm. huh? uh, tacitly or spoken way, you get me? People know where their sympathies lie, but it's not the sympathies that they can manifest openly. And these governors are doing their best. They are forcing, they are almost forcing people to come out. In some areas, they are successful. In some areas, they are not. So it is, they are using their uh, constitutional clout against the formal might of the man in detention. Get me? And you see, he said the other time that if he just snapped his finger like this, that would be the end of the matter. But he doesn't need to snap his finger. Let him renounce the session today. I'm sure he'll be out of prison tomorrow. And it's so, interesting that you say that because in the video we, we've been playing of him, he's saying, you know, once he's released, uh, you know, all the insecurity in, in the region will be gone in two, two minutes, two minutes. Right. But, you know, you, you, earlier you mentioned the political cost of, of an amnesty. But let's look at some of the potential benefits of, uh, of, of his release. And some people are even comparing it. I know every case is different and individual, but people are saying, well, if Sunday Boho can be uh, freed and if... Uh, um, so worry can also be forgiven uh, for 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 his uh, cases that he had withstanding. Um, th then surely there must be some benefit to extend an olive, olive branch since this case has been going on for so long. I'm a Yoruba man. Ugo is not in the same class as Kanu to the Yoruba. I don't even know Ugo, the governor. Uh, 
See, they are paper tigers. The same thing this other man you mentioned. So He's right. an act activist, a human rights activist. That, mean? that is his way of life. And he knows he must have, if you do some things, you have clashes with the law. Huh? And people like that invariably have a, a coterie of lawyers supporting them. You get me? Because they know they are fighting for society, not for themselves. You cannot put Kano in that category. He has an organized IPOB. You know what that crony, that crony, that, that crony what it means? It's a challenge to the legitimacy of the Nigerian government. Let him go back on that, he'll be a free man. It's so simple. Or you don't think so? Oh, I think if we do <laughs> that, that ball simple, is, we would have the, seen the ball is in the court of Mr. President. Ah, and the courts. Oh. And the courts. We'd like to thank you for your analysis. Okay. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to every one of you, my people. It's good to be back here again. Thank you very much for your time with us today. Today is Friday, 5th April, 2024. Happy weekend to you all, my people. Yes, no, 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 do this weekend again. Ah, if you are listening to me right now, you are getting old. You are getting old. <laughs> ah, thank you very much, my people. I appreciate you all. We have over 362 people watching us right now. Uh, the visibility is quite low, but still, uh, but if you check the lights, it's very, very low. Please press on that like button if you know you are hearing my voice. Let our voices go far. I appreciate every one of you, my wonderful people. Thank you very much, Mother of All Mommy Diaspora. Good evening to you, Mommy. Thank you very much for all you do. Uh, thank you very much, Dixin Idagbon. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, Abu Azi. I appreciate you for all you do. Thank you, Mother Iris Finest, Mother Martina Basi TV. God bless you all, my wonderful people. Thank you very much, uh, Nena Ogbona. Thank you, Larry Dipo, Stella Fini. Uh, thank you very much, Evie Jack, and many others right there. Madam Bella Naomi, thank you very much, man. I appreciate you. And thanks for the super chat earlier on as well. I appreciate you. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. I do like watch. And thanks for the super chat. God bless you. Good evening to you. And thank you very much. Um, I try not fail. My dear sister I can see right there. Lighthouse, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Joshua Ogbori and many others that have already showcased on screen. God bless you all, my wonderful people. Frank Uno and many, many others. Now, God, God bless you. Now, do your part. Press on that like button. Let our voices go far. There's um, protest happen. There's, uh, I don't know. Protest happened in one of the states in, in the north today. But why? 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 I'd like us to see the why together. Why this happened? Is it because of the situation of the country? Or it just happened, but let's listen to this quickly.
Palestine. We are all Palestine. We are all Palestine. Yes to America. Yes to Israel. We support Palestine. We support Palestine. Palestine na Muslim. Palestine na Christian. We are all Palestine. We support Palestine. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Okay, uh, my people, Una don't see why they, they protest, right? I said, make say about myself. I don't know what to call this if it's a misplaced priority or no way to. This will not be the same people where they say that they're hungry that day, where they, where they block lorry, they tea food for inside different lorries. Not be that be this. I don't know. I just they ask oh, come in all that stands, you know. <laughs> hey Kai, don't we not go see for it. No, is Palestine part of Nigeria now? Is he I don't understand? Is he not part of Nigeria? So the sound way there our eye, we never feel remove them, right? With a breed on for Baradin. Breed on for Baradin. Hey. Oh, wow, breed on for Baradin. Anyway, thank you very much, my people. I'd like us to move on. That's what we see our country. The same people we they call this why say made the day street, made them able for take the serious. None of them come out. All we are hearing is breathe up a baradin. We are not serious. Now the northerners are breathe up for baradin. Why the south 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 southerners are on Instagram looking blow blow and 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 something else. We can now do so now. They are JK 33 10 different lounges. So tell me, how are we serious? Or tell me how politicians will ever take us serious. Just tell me. Tell me why politicians are supposed to take us serious. When, because if you check how many of us now, where they talk on, online, I don't know. I, I don't want people to feel like, okay, we are praising Nigeria Watch or whatever, but. You have to look people that is doing what Nigeria Watch is doing, and I'm not sure we are up to three. That is consistent like this in the whole Nigeria. I'm not sure we are up to three. Um, let's say, let's say, even though say we reach ten, safe, it's still too small. Let us you say, I'm not sure we are up to ten. Even though it's still too small, the rest they press blow blow they go. You see. We are breathing for Baradin. Breathing for Baradin. That is what we are seeing now. See that crowd. And the same people, now whole lorry, Ramson, whole government warehouse, Ramson, carry all the food where they inside there. None of them came out to say, Tinubu, we are hungry. Do this for us. All we are seeing is breathing for Baradin. Breathe off for Baradi. Ew! Mm -mm. What a country. You see, we have a long way to go, my people. Ew. We have a long way to go. You and I cannot do it. Yes. Although we are we are doing our part, calling Tunubu out to do the right thing, calling our government out to do the right thing. But the people back home are not ready. Let's assume this crowd now was to all the play card, all, all of them were, you know, uh, uh, saying, Tinubu, we are hungry, do something about it. You they tell me, say the government, they're not going to shake, maybe they do something about them. The government can't take you serious. It's just like somebody, is as, somebody that is assuming that you know what they are passing through. Tomorrow, the person will be accusing you, and you want to tell me, say, you don't know what they pass through. To open your mouth, you tell me what you they pass through, you don't talk. You they tell me, you they blame me, say, you're supposed to know what I they pass through now. That day why I call your eye, you don't see my eye. You don't see, say, I know, I know to look fine. That is what we are doing to Tinubu now. Tinubu is supposed to know what we they pass through now. Uh, even though they complain for our living room. You supposed to know what we they pass through. Breathe on for bad idea. Anyway, thank you very much, my people. I appreciate every one of you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to every one of you right there. I'm going to post out a link right now for those of you that want to join this broadcast. All we have right now uh, left is just 
the articles that I need to uh, either take the headlines or take one or two paragraphs from any of the articles quickly. But my articles is not much today. So I think we're going to start talking on time today. So I've posted out a link for those of you that want to join us. Please click on that link and join us and let's do this together. And God, God bless all my people. I appreciate every one of you right there. Thank you so much. And for those of you that are just coming in right now, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate every one of you. So please help us to do your part. Press on the dollar sign. It's weekend. You know, encourage us on what we do here. You know, at least we are not part of the people that say freedom for Baradi. So you should encourage us to do more for you. We are not much there. We are not much. You know, I would like you to do your own calculation or go on social media and find that many of us calling out our government to do the right thing for us. You know, I'm not sure we are up to 10, to be honest. I'm not sure. So if you know these 10 people or 10 platforms, always encourage us. Encourage us because we are not much. We will not be, not be only 10 of us did the whole Nigeria. You know, we are more than 200 million, according to uh, the statistics that have never, ever changed. You know, so always encourage us to do more for you. Make we not go vest, join Bridon for Baradi. You know, it will make us vest now. now. We close this one down. Say, okay, no need. More your quick woman go join the crowd of Bridon for Baradi. You know, um, and take it from there. You know, because it, it looks like Nigerians are always happy when you see people do irrelevant things. You know, mo not all Nigerians are not generalizing. You know, doing irrelevant, inconsequential things that is not meaningful to us at all. It looks like that is what Nigerians, most Nigerians like. Yeah, I'm telling you. That's why I see people like Bob Risky, you know, go do, go do, blow, blow, do everything and all that. You know, you see our, our guests, Nana, their priority, Nana, to the do backyard. You know, if you see all of them, the way God they created, they're not living like that anymore. All of them don't go pimp their backyard. They spend five million, ten million until they do their backyard. Every all of them, almost all of them. That is their priority right now. When they don't do that, their backyard, they can't do the blue blue journal. Then they come buy one uh human head. You know, whether a human head, I go call on human hair. I don't know. Or come buy that one journal. Then they are they are very good, they are satisfied. Life is beautiful. See, misplaced priority yes we are not serious at, um that is why sometimes which is not good for me to say but you know if we have to face the reality it looks like we have a long way to go i appreciate every one of you my people thank you very much i'd like us to quickly take this article right here uh nam the Kano situation is still critical well i'd like us to quickly take this as you can see there, you know, uh, I pop leader Nam Dekanu seeks restoration of his revoked bail from Abuja High Court. The Federal High Court on April 25th, 2017, granted Kanu bail on the treasonable felony charges preferred against him by 10 president, uh, then President Muhammad Buhari's government. He detained leader of indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP Kano. Nam De Kano has filed uh, an application before the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja demanding the restoration of his revoked bail. So I'm going to leave that one right there. But, you know, I don't know what you guys need to say about this. That Nam De Kano can be released immediately tomorrow if he renounced his secession. Hmm. What's your take on this, my people? Anybody that want to call into that, I'd like to hear from you on this. And I'm not saying for this platform, everybody, they learn. No. You know, they said, Nam the Kano can be released tomorrow. In fact, this evening, this evening, so if not the Kano for his side cell or anywhere they put her right now, just raise up your hand and say, I renounced my secession. They said they will leave her today, today, this evening, make it go house. What's your take on that? I want to hear from you guys. You know, um, for me, I don't know what I want to talk about this matter for now. Maybe I might get with it. I will talk later on at the end of the broadcast. But I would like to hear from people first. Let me learn from you guys first. Let me hear from you. Because remember, this man is sick. Uh, I believe many of you don't want him to die in prison, right? Okay. So, but I would like to hear from you guys later on. I'll just leave that one quickly so that I can take another, um, let me take another uh, article here so that we can move on then we have <laughs> ESCC let's take this one quickly bear with me guys god bless you all okay 
As you can see right there, Nigerian High Court award 5 million naira in damages against EFCC for posting picture of arrested suspect on social media. I don't say EFCC when they catch people, but did they catch them where where? No, 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 no. They'll take you picture, go put out for their Instagram and Twitter account. So this the way this person do. So me, I can do these kind of things. Yes, you know, I'm very good with this, things like this. You know, once you don't do it, you want to finish. Hey, only if you know, so you know, be yahoo yahoo man, no, never thief money for Nigeria. Uh -huh. This person now, now, no, say, he be innocent. They're not listening to him. When he want to talk, they say, shut up there. No, say, that's why our police and the army, soldier, all of that they do. When you want to talk, shut up there. Please, sir, can I explain? Shut up there. Sir, I wanted to say, shut up there. That's all. You can never talk. You understand? So I believe that is what led them to this. I, I, I want to, you know, give kudos to our court. You know, thank you. I appreciate the uh, the Nigerian High Court for doing the right thing on this particular one. So EFCC have to pay five million naira to the person where they go pay where they go post a picture for their Instagram and their Twitter or anywhere they post them. You know, on social media, they have to pay five million. Is even too small. I wish they tell the same. They pay half a billion naira. Therefore, stop them. Then you be you investigate properly. Nigeria is a country where somebody they vest for, vest for you. He go use EFCC against you. He go use police against you. He go use army against you. Don't be say you commit any crime. Or they just use these people to intimidate you, suppress you. Yes, it's our country. Now these kind of things they happen. You know, you hear where the uh, the, the police uh, uh, head or whatever. I don't know the position where they hold. Went to, to uh, China's television a couple of days ago when it was being asked that how come that uh, this man is still not yet arrested, this man, uh, he, she, uh, Bobriski, is not arrested because of what he's doing. The, the police officer responded by saying that we don't have proper investigation against what he's doing, so they cannot arrest him, you know, concerning this cross-dressing and all that. Do you know that after the police officer said that on channels, because we don't have proper investigation and all that, Nigerians now start talking on social media, asking the same police officers in the history of Nigeria. So the people who are the carry, who now you go out, so I pass window, jump into your house, and you arrest them. What do I do? What do I do? You go say, you station, we'll go tell you. Now you humiliate do everything. Sometimes these people will spend three days, four days in, in cell before allowing them to go, and they will even bait themselves out. Just because, say, maybe he get argument with his neighbor. Then the neighbor now take advantage to call police, say, I beg, arrest Tunde for me. This has been going on since Nigeria was created. Intimidation like that. So if they can stop this kind of thing, because you cannot say there's no proper if, uh, 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 you know, uh, proof to arrest a person, that means the law, you are telling us that the law, or who, how, however you guys are doing your job, is being selective. Yes. And for the way they go party, they spray money anyhow. You know, Nigerian government is against it, although the law is against it right from time. You know that I, I said it before on this platform that our law is against so many things, but many of them is not being enforced. Yes. So they buy this Naira spray money or different kind of party now. I believe they have enforced it. So it's active right now. Now two people who don't say don't go prison now. So many to come. So for on our way, but did they cash now? You all go party, go they throw more money to the blind people. I, I will advise you guys to stop now. You know, if you want to give person money, put that for a, uh, a, a pocket or put that for envelope or transfer after it's an account. You know, let's. Let, let, I know some people say now our tradition. I don't know where they for our tradition. So say now our culture. So say now this. But thank God now say the Lord don't tell you now say not be our tradition. Uh -huh. If you don't want me to use you as a scapegoat to now because they do all this headline, they could have learned. Make you not me not may not come be like say you can't end up the lane in the hard way. <laughs> you know, you know, say very dark, but don't talk that one. Tell it, tell it. See, person now with the lane, the hard way for yeah. This he he she he she breaking Nigerian High Court convicts popular cross dresser Bob Risky for abusing Naira. Nasam, so and uh, today now, you know, they don't convict them. So on the night, and they said they go sentence them. So only God know because you don't say the previous get the other actress they sentenced the other time. I think that she was sentenced for six months, right? You know, so maybe Bobby could still go do six months now. Who know? You know, for spraying error. 
So you people respect the law. Now, no say for me, I'm a law abiding citizen. So I always tell people all the time, regardless of what calling out the government all the time and all that, you must be able to live by the example. You cannot call the government to do the right thing. Why you that is calling the government, you are not doing the right thing. I've said it so many times on this platform. You know, you must be able to do the right, set the good example that others will follow. Yes, kidnappers demand 14 million naira as ransom to release two out of three university Calabar students taken from hostel. Hmm. Hmm. Ah, oh, wow. So people say not concerned them. You're not, you're not concerned there. But nevertheless, uh, I only have only one article left uh, here. Then we are done. Where is our people? Nobody's on the planet today. Where did they happen? Now, weekend now. I'll be some of them the press blow blow as they talk so. All right. I like this one. I want to take so. So governor will turn state police to instrument of oppression. And I support this. The only headline me don't see. I, I, I support what he found on the talk for you 100%. I don't know about you. I'm talking. Uh, they talk my own. So, um, yes, many governor would if if we if if Nigeria has state police. Let me say no. I I be want make it happen, but unfortunately, most governors will do this. Wait till this uh, Falan I just pointed out now. Let's take this. As talks about the state police gain momentum, human rights lawyer Femi Falana has warned that there must be proper guarantees under the law to prevent situations where governors use police apparatus to intimidate and oppress political opponents. I'll just leave it right there. Anyway, my people, that's all we see and that is all we have for you guys today. I appreciate every one of you right there. I'm going to take calls first. You know, there we start talking. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, when I see what he did that screen right there, you know, if now the colonel renounce his secession, he will be released immediately what is your take on that then you know uh at 2024 who is your choice we are going to be talking about that one today if you don't say you are from a door state you are listening to us come to the planet today don't be behind the door and be saying that uh, nobody go rule or this one go rule come to the panel tell us who what do you think or talk to people who they should support i appreciate every one of you right there madarita thank you very much i appreciate you Thank you, thank you. All right, uh, let me take uh, Mr. Shimizu on the phone. Mr. Shimizu, thank you very much sir, for calling in. Happy weekend to you. Please talk to us. Yes, sir. Please, Please. I'm here. I'm not I'm pressing bolum, bolum. <laughs> Hey, You know, because I'm not surprised. I can't say we are not there. Whether I'm blow, blow, not depressed. Me not can't understand, though. <laughs> <laughs> this man. This man. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, even, even, sometimes I'll be laughing. I'll be laughing where I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because on weekend, you know, say weekend, I know the user of the play now, nah, Nigerians. So I, I needed to be sure where on a day. <laughs> which, which did I, which did I do? <laughs> so all Nigeria, whatever you are. Huh? Ah! Thank so much. Yes, sir. You see this country? You see this your country? See the kind of country you're fighting for. Eh? Some part they making <laughs> doing uh, protest for, for for something I don't know. No. Hey, is it no crazy yeah. what you're doing? Free is ballet. No, for? no, your guy you're not talking where free ballet dean. <laughs> free <laughs> Freedom for ballet dean. Uh, <laughs> uh, the intention they are using to say it. I can't even say it. You know, uh -huh. you know, you see freedom for uh, all, uh, some freedom for Bala big, Bala, I don't know. These are Bala blue, they know. See, it's why, why, it's come on, why not answer doing this? Even their so called aiders can, can't even call them in order. <laughs> but then, not be them arrange, not you, not, obviously, that some of their aiders now uh, arrange this it's protest them. for them now.
We have bad people in every every tribe, sir. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. I said. I said it. That when I said, I said that is colorful ones in in, in, in Ibo too. You know. Mm. So all this we need to come out. You know, stop tribalism, nepotism, all these things. You know, for their head. Stop saying I'm white now. I'm white now. Ibo, Ibo, Yoruba, this, Hausa, Edo, blah blah blah. All these things. You can't take Nigeria nowhere. You see, Bobisky, eh? Your name is sorry. And people that that is telling you, they hate, they taking you to grave, but you don't know. If, if if you go inside, if you go inside, your body will decay. I, I believe me, because this is your body. You you already put something bad in, put some uh, uh, medication, put here, put here. It will start decaying. If you stay there, how many months? Because you need the maintenance. You know, you haven't know what to do. You cross dressing, doing this. I said, hey, I'm here. Um, 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 yeah, yeah, I don't know how how she put it. I saw I saw one of our video. Two days ago, they are hailing him, hailing him, taking pictures. You see, see, why are these things? Even the so-called here we are, they are, they are, they are, they are um, uh, doing gay. Now, you watch. If you moving, moving like let, let's assume you come here to America, then we hold our hand together the way we move in Nigeria. Hey, if you see how this would do. They will say, hey, 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 they will, I say, but if you are, you are, you are gay, then you are not. You are just holding your friend or your brother okay. or together. You guys are moving. They will look at you as somebody, people that are, are gay. 
day too. Thank you, sir. So it's it Nigeria NATO where it's not our culture. Okay. And you can never be. If EFCC not only that they arrest him because mm -hmm. Nigeria we don't practice that. But they are doing it in a secret way. Thank you, Niger Watch. Thank you very much, sir. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Good evening to you. Your name and where you're calling us from. Hello, good evening. Thank you, sir. Your name and where you are calling from. Please off your off your TV, please. All right, you know, just a, a, a moment, please. Good evening. My name is Osagi Humphrey. I'm calling from Madrid, Spain. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Please talk to us. I, uh, I just want is it has been a long time. I've not called you. I I was a little bit busy. Maybe you don't know the person that is calling because you have a lot of fans. Oh, I'm so sorry, sir. I, I can't really remember because this number is not on our phone. Ah, he's the man that only called you during that 2020. You said home floor, you will say calling from Madrid, Spain. If you can remember the man. Oh, yeah, that I think I remember him. now. Yeah, yeah, it's been a while. Thank you very much, sir. How is everything? How is your head? How is the family? Everybody is fine, sir. Please talk to us. I, I guess you are watching this broadcast. I, uh, yeah, I just came in. I saw it, and uh, it's so amazing. The worry is there is that what Nigeria, and the problem of Nigeria generally, if I say it now, maybe you will know, people will not accept it. Nigeria don't have constitution. That is the problem. Mm. Just if if they say Nigeria have constitution, just like somebody that went to to university and he graduated, and he did not work with the certificate, meaning that person did not go to school. Mm. So Nigeria did not have a, you know, thank God you are in the Western world, constitution provide institution and provide system. So for them running around, all these things they are doing every day, every year, they are making policy that is, is unconstitutional. They all wake up, they said, you, you, they want to they want to reduce the price of uh, uh, transport. They want to construct road. You know what I'm trying to say. But if there is constitution, constitution provide the institution. What are the institution? The Ministry of Internal Affairs is institution. The Ministry of Defense is, is an institution. The Ministry of Education is an institution. Mm. The Ministry of Works and Housing is an institution. Information. They are institution. But all these institutions, the people working there are the system. The system is so corrupt, it's so bad. Because the constitution, the constitution is not there. Because the constitution protects lives and property. Just like what happened, the kids 17 soldiers, less than two hours. It can happen in the Western world. Police were key. Because the country don't have constitution and their watch. That is the problem. So, of Nigeria. so, so, what, what are you calling for, sir? Are you calling for amendment of the constitution, current constitution, or a total scrap? The Nigeria constitution should be scrapped. We have people like Falana. We have people like uh, we have people like Uzome. We have so many of them that are sound, that are that are constitutional lawyer that you sit down because the people that drafted. In 1999, constitution I have no business being that constitutional conference in 1999. Nigeria was. Mm. Falana is saying, now, you know what I'm saying. Professor Zome is listening, you know what I'm saying. And many of them, people like uh, 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 K. Amon, all of them, they, these are people that are well read. K. Amon is still very young, he's in the 50s. So, Falana, thank God, is still alive. You know what I'm saying. The constitution of Nigeria is not existing because the people that drafted that constitutional conference that were members and that chaired that constitutional conference in 1999 have no business in that constitutional conference. Mm. Wow. Because the constitution is the power is the chromosome of a country. Any country that don't have that, that don't have constitution, that country is dead. That is why you see Nigeria is crumbling. That is it, Nigeria was. So when they begin to say the police don't work, it's because the constitution is not there. If you go to Nigeria, the army are doing police job. Road safety are doing, are doing police job. NDDC are doing police job. Civil Defense Corps are doing police job. Home vigilante are not doing police job because there is no constitution. So if they are saying state police, 
Nigeria is, is too immature. Let me use that word. Nigeria is too immature to create a state police. The conventional police, which is the national police in Nigeria, are on the phone. Have you seen Nigeria police on the highway? Cut out. How much is the minimum wage of a Nigerian police force? So creating a, 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 a state police, you know that it's political motivated. They will use it to oppress the opposition, oppress people on the street. And there's no state police. Now you okay. know what I'm saying. Yeah, that's fine. Let us also hear from others. I think uh, a lot of people would like to contribute All on right. that area. Thank you very much, sir. It's really good to hear from All you. Right. Thank you, sir. God bless Harry. you, sir. All right. Have a blessed day. Yes, sir. Have a blessed day. Thank you, sir. Ciao. Yes, sir. Ciao. Okay, let me pick another call quickly. Um, thank you very much, Mazi, for calling in. Good evening to you, sir. Please talk to us. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, my brother, sir. Good evening, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Good evening to you. Please talk to us. Yes, good evening. Yes, yes. Good evening, Mazi. Uh, the Almighty Father continue blessing you and protecting you and giving mm. you a good health for the job you are doing for all Nigerians around mm. the world. Um, what I want to say concerning uh, what you have been saying that uh, they say that uh, uh, if Mazin Manikalo denounced Biafra, even tonight he must be released. I want, uh, if somebody is talking like that, I want you to uh, provide uh, uh, the father of Manikalo and his, uh, the mother this night. I want the person to provide the mother of Manikalo and the father this night. Because sometimes these people are, they are saying something and they, they cannot reason. See what these people have been doing the governments for many years now. Killing people. Okay, see what's happening with Palestinians in, uh, in the north. They say freedom for Palestinians. Freedom for Palestinians. But now Trump, did you see some, did you see, uh, did you see any today to come and shoot people? But now Trump, uh, 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 as you in the office as the president of the United States, they kill people uh, in, in, in the United States. They shoot people. How many, they, you can see, you know, so how many people have died there? That's to show you that this, this, uh, Nigeria we are talking about, I don't know what, they, what, they, what these people want. They must come down. And the, the Zonda's Constitution uh, we are talking about, and the dialogue, must, uh, that confirm, that confirm, national conference, they must bring that thing out and the people should stay around the table and talk about how Nigeria will, will go if it's possible. If it's not possible, people will go his own way. So that's what I'm saying. So thank, thank you. thank you for the opportunity to give to me. I don't have much to say. Thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. Good evening to you, sir. Thanks for calling in. Uh, please talk to us, sir. Uh, good evening, Mr. Niger Watch. Yes, sir. More grace to your elbow. God bless you. Amen. Bless you and bless you again and again. Amen. Uh, you, will, you, will, you will live long. Amen. Let me start from the, one, uh, the first point about the uh, power, whatever they call it there. Neither one does that show you that uh, we are not, uh, we are not uh, on, uh, at par with the people on that side of the divide that our priorities and theirs is not the same. Nigeria is burning. Somebody's house is burning. He's chasing rats. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable, I know. <laughs> I'm telling you, how can somebody be, don't stand out there, you're talking about Pakistan, 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 and Nigeria. See, I'm warning. It's a shame. It's a very terrible shame. Big so shame. tell me now, when you agitate on this side, they say, why are you agitating? What are they telling you? That you don't belong to what they, what they want. They know where the aspirations are, not what you are pursuing. So I won't want to waste my time on that. Then I'm the kind of issue, my brother. You ask the question. Uh, they say such and such. Do you know what in uh, Niger what? If we now the Kano renounce what they say he should renounce today, 
I think these people, their, their, their wisdom is just, I don't know, is it's pocket wisdom. Do they think it's only Namdi Kalu that has such a, you know, an aspiration or ambition in that part of the, of the divide? People just want Nigeria to work, that's all. If they allow Nigeria to work, they won't hear anything like that. Whether they ask him that they can to renounce anything or not, Nigeria will move on. But if they continue this way, now they can, can, I can advise him now if I have my way, hey, renounce that thing now, and another person will raise up head the next minute, and they can't do anything about it. Why are we so 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 naive and so 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 little-minded? People, people, people are doing this, and I don't know, and they call themselves our leaders. Like that was these people, your type of leaders. Look at the man who came on, 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 on a rise a moment ago, talking on this same issue, telling them that in the Kalu's issue is not the same thing with Ibo, it's not the same thing with uh, uh, Shoure. This was a freedom fighters, this one and this and that. Tell me what, then what, what are the Boko Haram people? The people they call the bandits and all the rest of them, can they compare them within Nandikar? Why are we deceiving ourselves in Nigeria? May God have mercy on, on that country. Look, my brother, whatever you need to do as you are trying on this your platform, don't leave it. God helping us. If we listen to you one day, we will come out with a very neat Nigeria. But if the die is cast and it gets to that point, I am telling you, uh, uh, certain things we are seeing are not best said in public air like this. God bless you. Thank you. And bless the work of your hand. Amen. Thank you, you sir. You will never lack and you will never walk in vain. Amen. God bless you. Have a nice day. Thank you very much, sir. God bless you too. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Okay, uh, I have a couple of other people calling in right now. I have uh, Bright Asamota. Bright Asamota, um, okay. No, I have uh, um, Black Panther on the phone first. Black Panther, what are you doing on the phone? Good evening to you, sir. What are you doing on the phone? <laughs> Talk to us. <laughs> I just want to throw, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can, yes. Go ahead. I, I just want to throw a light, a prelude on... That state security, uh, state policing. Mm. Any Nigerian that say Nigeria is not mature enough, it is all fallacies working for the government. Any Nigerian that will say, oh, the political people will use this for their own self aggrandizement, that person is not a democrat. Now, what is democracy? If you want to practice democracy, it's either you practice it to the full length or you don't do it. Now, you are saying, oh, Nigeria is not right for it. Then you are probably, you are, you are in support of unity system, the system they are practicing now. So I want to ask them a question. When, when are the politicians not using police to do what they are doing. When? <laughs> so people should stop all this rhetoric they are doing. If you want if you want democracy, you are fighting for the rule of law, you must accept the totality of democracy, which includes state policing. Every region, every state should have its own power to secure itself. Then if you say they should not have then let them take the power of security out of the hands of the government, the state, state government, the governors. That is what you are preaching. If you say they should not have state policing, then you want them to expose the power of securing the state from the state governor. If you even don't understand it, we should go, let us discuss it, let everybody is on side. If you want democracy, practice it full length. You don't have any way to go. If you don't want this, let us continue with what we are doing now. Let us see where it's going to lead us to. And um, from my own understanding, Valano is not a constitutional lawyer. We need a constitutional lawyer to speak on this issue. Valano, I don't understand where it's coming from. Thank you, Mr. Najawa. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Black Panther. Falana is a human rights lawyer. So I believe. All right. Anyway, I'll leave that one for now. 
Thank you, my wonderful people. Let's hear from Brighter Samota. Then we are done. And then I'll come to the panel. Uh, thank you very much, my brother. Uh, Bright Samota. Can you talk so your picky don't take over the phone? No. <laughs> good evening, good evening, Nigeria. Good evening, my brother. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Talk to us. Uh, I won't be. I will. I will. I will make it very snappy. Better. Uh, I greet everybody. I will greet everybody in the house. Uh, I want to just uh, quickly talk about Namdikano and uh, the statement that was made by the federal government that if he renounces, uh, if he renounces his uh, his uh, action, then they will they will give him more. They will they will release it. Well, uh, first of all, that is a sign that uh, whatever Unam Dikan was asking for is already making progress. It's already hitting them hard. That is why they are making those kind of uh, statements. And uh, secondly, yeah, you will remember I told you yesterday that uh, there are international uh, hands in the release of Unam Dikan that are making him to still be there. And uh, all of them have already seen it, and uh, that is why they are using those kind of rhetoric that if you if he renounces, uh, they will release him because they know that if the man comes out, uh, the table will turn. A lot of things will change. Some people who have, uh, you know, contracts in Nigeria, their contract might be laid off. So, and these are international bodies, so they won't want things like that. So that is why they are using those issues. It's just the same thing they did with Mandela. Mm. You know, there were options for Mandela to renounce. They wanted to make uh, him a kind of uh, give him a soft uh, part. So that the the people who were you know on leaving the appetite to continue whatever they were doing, the man said no, he's going to stay there long at the end of time. So when they when they found that that the whole world people were now moving for his release, that is when they now said oh they were not they could do they, they left him. So I think Kunam the Kano issue should be more spoken now because before people were looking at it as if it's only the evil not consigning. Now everybody should be concerned. I think if there is a global movement, exactly, in this now, not only for the people now, then the world will recognize that somebody like that is being held captive, and it will now there will be nothing again for them to do that to release him, and then he will fight his aim. That is for that. For the issue of uh, the, the the state policing, uh, I, my brother, one of my brother was saying just now that it's democratic for the state policing should to be enforced, but. Uh, I don't agree with that because uh, you cannot have a petrol and uh, around your house and you'll be lighting fire uh, in the backyard. Uh, it's not going to work. Nigeria is a country that does not have law. They don't respect law. There's no constitution. Some people are above the law. Some people are more ignorant. Some people are more powerful than the others. So uh, state policing will not work in a situation of Nigeria. If Nigeria is a country whereby you 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 have lawyers. Uh, a, a court will give a, a court will give a judgment. Somebody in his house will be ruling against what the court has said. So how will you have a system like that? So these things will turn out to be a a a, a, a state of uh, chaos. Some people will, some people some people will capture it. Some people will use it for the good of it. Some people will also capture it. It's the people that will capture it there will be more. And uh, we don't pray for that. We should first of all rehabilitate the system. We should make Nigeria work best constitutionally. Everybody should sit down around. Ten. That is what is supposed to happen. Because all this one that Peter Obi is still moving around politically is good, but it will not work until everybody sit down on the round table, both show and everybody agree on a constitution, electoral constitution that will work for everybody. If that one is, if nobody is saying that, Mr. Nigeria Watch, we are just in the loop. Mm. Nothing will ever, ever change. In the next few years, we are still going to be the same. Because nobody is saying that now. If we just find ourselves in 2027, is it not the same thing that we are going to do that we're going to do? They will do worse. This one said, you might even be voting, and you're, you're like, in, in that place, it will not even be. You will be voting LP. You will be seeing it in Sony to APC in your presence. And there will not, you can't do anything about it. It is going to be worse because these people have learned their lesson and they have learned the hard way. They are not going to let it cheat for anybody next time. They might even bring police. Soldier will be there beating you to, to vote for who you don't want to vote for. And nothing will happen. All right. Nothing will happen. We will still cry in that time. So we, 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 we still have a long way to go, my brother. We still have a long way to go. 
Thank you, my brother. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you very much, my brother, uh, Bright Asamota, right there. Okay, uh, call us. We have to leave you for now. We'll come back to you guys again later on before we end the show. Let me go to the panel quickly so that we can start talking. Uh, yeah, we are not much today on the panel. Maybe people might join us later on, but let's take it the way it is. Uh, Mr. Destiny, thanks for joining us. Uh, you're the first on the panel. I'd like you to talk, quickly talk to us. Eight minutes. Thank you. Good evening to you, sir. We, we can't hear you. We can't hear you, sir. Your voice is too far away, please. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I greet everybody on the panel. Uh, but Bishop Nigeria every day is always so. Let me start with all those guys from Palestine. I don't know if they are from Palestine. Your line not clear, my brother. Your line not clear. Okay, maybe later. Yes, yes. yes. Okay, yes, I'll come back to you. Okay, I'll come back to you. Thank you. You know, the line is not that clear. But nevertheless, uh, let's move on. Thank you very much, my people, for your time with us right there. I appreciate you all. Madam Rita, it's good to have you on the show. Good evening to you, ma'am. Please talk to us. Yeah, good evening. Good afternoon, Mr. Elvis and uh, Mommy Diaspora, my sister, finest, and everyone in the comment section. Um, I think I entered quite late. I think you, but I, I'll just pick up from what's on the screen. And then um, the last video that I watched was, uh, I think the Northerners were shouting freedom for Palestine. And I, uh, I, I know it's Palestine, but I know you were just trying to be sarcastic. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, see, there are two things here. Um, I think in the North, you know, the, not, the Northerners, unfortunately, with all the respect, because of the poverty there, they are easily cajoled. They are very gullible. So if one wealthy northern, you know, sponsored by Hamas or whomever, um, just give somebody, give a group of people, okay, just go and share this half a million naira, because there's suffering and poverty, it's very easy. You can governize like half a million people in, in, in the next one hour. That's just how the north is. So those people, obviously, they were paid. They were given the flags of the Palestinian to fly along. What is so funny that is that the governor of that state, nobody's arresting anybody. Nobody is even using the police or the army because that's what they do in the South anyway, to cordon those people or, you know, or to even stop that kind of protest or if it's affecting you know, daily activities. Nothing is being done. So what does that tell you? The government of that state, I will let me use the word allegedly, is in participation with these shenanigans just to distract Nigerians from what is really going on in Nigeria. What is our business with what's happening in Palestine? We, we are, in fact, what's happening in Palestine and uh, Israel right now, they have 24 hours lights, don't, don't they? They do. They have functional hospitals, yes, even if you know the Israelis are shutting it down, but those services are available. They have 24 they hours have lights. Good road infrastructure. Exactly. So... It, all these are just dis distractions, you know, Mr. Elvis. I just think they are just distractions. And it's obviously sponsored, allegedly, by people in the same government in that state. So that's why nothing is going to be touched. It's just, see, I don't know. It was, well, I think it was Mr. Um, um, what's his name? Mr. Victor, who is Mr. Black Panther. You know, he said something yesterday, I think, or one of those programs. He said, Nigerian politicians will never change. They have three cardinal points in which they can display their inept ineptness. And that is either religion, um, tribe, or geographical location, something of that nature. And it's true, this was, or sometimes even external problem, and they bring it and kind of relate it to the gullible people, just like this Palestinian, Israel, you know, and whatever it is that's going on. You know, all this hula balloon between these so-called superpowers. It's none of our business, really. Really and truly. We have we have issues to deal with in Nigeria. So that's just what it is. Unfortunately, Northern Ireland, they are suffering. They are not protesting that the prices of rice or price of millet is expensive. They're not even protesting about the, the BK people that is harassing them and kidnapping them and, you know, messing up their villages. They're not even protesting for that. So what does that tell you? 
that region has some serious issues to deal with and take it or leave it i know we, we call ourselves nigerians we're not one we are one nation but in essence we're really not one nation and the northern elites the northern elders the caliphate they are responsible for all these menace they are, in fact they have they have responsibility i would say 80 percent 80 percent responsibilities of what's going on in the north and they should sort it out themselves it doesn't mean that i don't care it doesn't mean that we don't have issues in the south but really and truly it is the same people they use the same religious uh, um do it they use the same uh, um laws you know same kind of his police it's the same people they are, and the people that they are persecuting is their own people it's their own people Regardless of religious affiliation, because not everybody that's a Muslim in the north, but it is their own people. See, that's where I'm coming from. So this um, um free Palestine, whatever, is just to me, just another noise, another distraction to what's really going on in the north. The governor of that state should be ashamed of himself. And um, Mr. Nigeria, because it's your program, I will add with all due respect. Because I, honestly, I really don't want to add with all due respect to the governor of that. I don't is it Kano or Kaduna State? I really don't want to add it, but because of your your, your program and your on your rules, I will say with all due respect, the, the governor of that state where they are shouting for policy should be ashamed of himself. I'm going to Bob Risky's issue. Um, what's on your screen is that uh, is convicted to be sentenced. Well, uh, from what I was, um, what I know, you know, they said um, it has to do with um, there are several charges. I think there are about four or five charges, and the EFCC charge of money laundering is there because. He has uh, unexplained millions of naras in his account going in and coming out. He cannot explain and he says under his business name. Well, there's a lot of answers, a lot of questions to be answered. And then the other part, well, they say, you know, when government wants to deal with you, if they arrest you for one thing, they'll start to bring all, they will bring all sorts of charges against you. And that's what's happened to this Mr. Idris that calls himself a uh, Bob Risky. Um, you know, that's what's going on with him. But, you know, um, I don't see what I'm about to say. I, I don't want to make it seem like um, maybe I'm supporting or I'm trying to encourage, you know, some kind of behavior. But what this, okay, this is what I have to say. Like we've always said in this show, I have always said the Nigerian law is selective. It is selective. And on a daily basis, we see examples of how the law is being selective now okay let me go to the first the first one is that they're convicting him for i think section 21 of the cbn act you know when they talk about uh, you know uh, you know um defacing or you know uh, messing up the naira notes you know that sort of thing and I, I think he said he pleaded guilty to that because i mean there are videos out there of of him you know displaying such act and then the second one was the efcc one okay now we all know that for example this fuji musician was you i mean when he's playing you see what other people do you know they're spraying him um we've seen severally it's selective because i think there was one actress beginning of this year or so they find her three hundred thousand naira because the fine is you spend six months in jail or you pay fifty thousand naira or both you know i guess on on the discretion of the judge but you know that is selective but prior to that we've seen other so-called celebrities nigerian celebrities or rather influencers people in the government even people i would say in the um uh what would i call it now and I, I don't like the traditional institution but i really don't like going there they're displaying these things and nothing is being done so it still goes back to what mr price asimota was saying we don't have a constitution we, we don't we don't have because it's the law is selective now for him being arrested that's why in the beginning of what i said i said i'm not in anybody's side but fine they are doing the right thing they're doing the right thing right because he went against the section 21 of the cbn act right but the other the other part of the other side of the coin is why is this selective and they say he's being remanded until the eighth the judge says he's going to be remanded until the eighth until the eighth for crying out loud if we have a law in nigeria he has a right to bail for christ's sake it's a right to bail and I, for somebody explained to me that you know it's, it's not just about the spraying of the naira is when the naira falls to the ground is being defaced is being de disrespected as in people will step on it that's why i see sometimes some people when they want to spray money they put it in a basket or they put it in a bag directly they don't spray the money on the ground it's not thrown in the air so that's that's what you see the the, the law is they're not really they don't really explain it properly 
you know, it was a lawyer that was explaining to, to me like that is that is the issue. Spraying of the money and people stepping on it. You're already going against Section 21 of the CBN Act, you know. But putting it in bundles and you're giving somebody and they're putting it directly in a bag, that's that's not an offense. It's not against Section 21 of the CBN Act. So you know, people need to be um to be taught. Uh, maybe Nigerians need to be taught to explain. CBN has to come and explain it to us. Not or maybe a constitutional lawyer can explain it to us in simple language, right? Um, so it's so you see, the law is selective, it's selective. And another thing, I don't know why all of a sudden this so called influencer, you know, aka Bobrisky, you know, I don't know why they're kind of making him more popular. Fine, of course, he has to me personally, he has a negative effect, effect on the generations, you know, future generations, and you know, people are seeing this thing and they think it's right. And then, you know, and this guy, I think he's smart enough, you know, not to go against um, what, I've forgotten what section it is in the constitution about same sex and behavior and, and, and all that, you know, so he's just like, a cross dresser. Is there any law against cross dressing in Nigeria? Somebody can bring it out. They can bring it out there. Not just because to me, this conviction and sentence or whatever, is just like, is that you just, because you don't like a dog, you're going to give the dog a bad name. That's how it looks like. So in, in essence, in the essence of it all, it's not really, you're not really educating people per se. This is my opinion. You're not really educating people per se about the constitution, about section 21 of the CBN Act, about same sex, about cross-dressing or you want to be a transgender. The constitution of Nigeria, they're not, they're not making it clear for people. So to them, they're just saying they don't like the guy. They don't like his behavior. Okay, so therefore, let us persecute this guy. Let us sentence him. Because everything he has displayed, Every other so-called celebrity, even people in the government have displayed it. So you see, it's to me, it's worthless. If the example they're trying to show out there, the security agencies and the courts, it's worthless because we haven't we haven't seen anything that's different. The people have two eyes, they are seeing it. The social media, the internet is over there, you know, in all social media platforms where different people display similar characters. Nothing is being done to them in Nigeria. In Nigeria. So what is the essence of what you just did to this guy? You didn't, it's not even a teachable moment. It's not because people are not dumb. Nigerians are not stupid. If you go out there, people are talking. So it's not seem like this guy's gonna get sympathy from the, from the people. So that part you're supposed to teach people is, is kind of obscured. You know, so it, it's just unfortunate. The law is selective in Nigeria. Well, we've seen it time and time again, and they're proving it to us. People like me, that always say the law is selective. You just proved it to me again. That the law is selective. Moving along, um, for Kanu, um, you know, uh, to be um, to be uh, released. Uh, I think you, I think I saw a captain. He said the one Dayo Shobowale. I don't know if he's a, a lawyer. Um, he said he has to renounce his secession. That's um, withdraw, depart from the IPOB, um, the Biafra ideology. I mean, that is. You are just trying to prove to the world. That everything that uh, Mazen Namdi Kanu has been saying, everything Kanu has been standing for, is right. The longer Nigerian government or the entities keep this man in prison, this man that was kidnapped, the more the longer they keep him in prison, I, I kid you not, they are popularizing this guy the more. They are making people to now realize that this guy is standing for the truth. They are making themselves look bad. They're not, listen, they are doing themselves a disservice. I don't know why, I don't know if there's something blocking their sense of reasoning or maybe their brain is made from a different substance that they can't just think. Let me tell you one thing that um, I think the West learned from Mandela, the appetite struggle. They have not learned that keeping a man for 27 years, a man that didn't do anything in just because he wants the freedom of his people because of the appetite going on in South Africa. They have realized that them keeping him for 27 years in prison has made him like a, a matter of all sorts because till, till date, even the oppressors, they're already, they're already admitting. They're already, they're already admitting this will be forever in the world. Nelson Mandela's name is a name that you want to mention when it comes to 
agitation for freedom when it comes to oppression his name will always be an example we use they cannot take it away it's there in the books they cannot even change it they cannot even alter it like they've altered most of our history books they can't that is the biggest mistake they've ever made they haven't learned these people these entities in nigeria international and you know internally they haven't learned anything they haven't learned anything the more they keep Nam Dukanu in that incarcerated, the more greater he is becoming. He's a great man anyway, but they're making him greater. That, that's what they're doing. So if anybody's they are listening to me, if you have the power to these um, entities that are keeping this man, the longer you keep this man, he's going to be another Mandela. I kid you not. And to be in coming from Nigeria, southeastern part of Nigeria, Abia said, I kid you not. The more they keep this man, they are making him more popular. They are making people love him more. They are making people listen to him. Now, many, many, making people have, you know, uh, follow his ideology. They are making people even want to embrace him more. And they are not doing him a disservice. Fine. They say you can buy the body, but you cannot buy the spirit. You can't. So the spirit of this man is just getting bigger and bigger. And the foolish people, you know, when you are doing evil, you, you, you think that you are doing a disservice to the person that is hurting or seeing that is hurting and is sweeting you. Let me use the part, it is sweet you. But in essence, you're actually damaging yourself. You're not hurting the person. And evil has an expiry date. Evil has an expiry date. Those of you who are keeping this man, Evil has an expiry date. See all the things going on in Nigeria. See, eh, there's too many, too many things have gone wrong. Too many people have been cheated. Too many, too many people have died. Too many people have been murdered. Too many people have been intimidated, taken advantage of, of all ages and sizes and you know, religion and, and ethnicity. Too many people over decades, and their spirits are crying. And that's why there's no peace in Nigeria. If this man is not released. It's part of the reason why there is no peace in Nigeria. I'm not just, you know, I'm not a prophet of doom, but it's a fact. It is a fact. The West have learned it from the experience of Nelson Mandela. Nigerian entities, they have still not learned. Their own is just to still to be eating dollar, 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 dollar. They're not, they're not looking at the damage that they are causing to themselves. Not in Abdikani. Not in Abdikani. Not, not at all. So, you know, it, it, and, and definitely we all know that... <laughs> Nam Dukanu would never, never renounce his succession. Never. The same thing they were doing to Nelson Mandela. At the end of the day, he would have an expiry date now. Abi and Nelson Mandela came out and he became president. And there was some sort of healing in South Africa. And that's how South Africa is progressing more than Nigeria. Take it or leave it. They are progressing more than Nigeria. Now, moving along to um, uh, what you said about, uh, I think it was uh, Femi Falana. Um, thank you, Mr. Black Panther, for what you said, because that's exactly what my, my train of thought when he said that some governors will turn state pol police to instrument of, uh, you know, instrument to, to intimidate opponents. Or, what is what is happening now? What is happening? And it still boils down to the Constitution. Nigeria is not a nation yet. We are not a nation. That's why the law is selective. That's why the Constitution is skewed. Anybody, yes, that document exists. But in, in, in actual reality, nobody's really following the constitution per se. They see some sort of division. They nobody say some sort. There is division. You understand? So, you know, um, let me find a piece I beg, you know, they say it's better to, you know, focus on what your forte is. I understand that constitutional law is not, I didn't even know that's not even your forte per se. You know, you're a human rights lawyer. And I think somebody like um Chief Michael Zekome, you know, if you can come out and educate us more, you know, about um, state policing. I mean, look at the rest of the world, where you guys live, where I live, you know, you cannot, they will not wait for, I mean, you have the state police, you have, uh, like in Canada, they have the, they have the, um, what they call them, um, RSCMP, you know, they have, um, you know, highway patrol police, you have the different divisional police. So everything is, Nigeria is just, we are still under the elephant. If you look at the, the logo of even the Nigeria police self, that elephant, elephant, uh, uh, what they call it, is the um, colonial symbol. It's still, it's still there. You know, you, if listen, there needs, there has to be a revival. Nigeria needs a, a complete turnaround. 
constitution start first then we we'll start going to the different institutions that needs to be changed but to have that constitution some people will not agree some entities that are still existing today internationally and locally they are still exist they are still holding on to that that um uh, what they call that uh heavy load that yoke of the mistakes of our forefathers they are still holding on to it holding on to it like 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 cement on their head and that's what's affecting us today so um then uh, moving along to um the efct you said efct uh, to pay suspects five million naira for posting picture on social media well that's judgment on paper if you want my opinion on that but implementation is not practice if we had a good investigative journalist that would actually follow up on this story to find out if the so-called efcc actually pay that man his five million naira because we just see the the end of it or we just see the caption and then nigerians move along but i am believing that 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 money is not yet paid to that person because they will use the courts to drag the matter until the guy will say you know what i don't even want the money anymore so whatever the judgment will say on on paper or on the social media is not being implemented in real life yes i can take that to the bank if i say so some people will say oh why have you say that hello we see it every day we see it every day it's just on paper to make it seem, seem like oh the law is really working the law is selective constitution is selective so these kinds of things efcc will not pay this guy five that five million the judgment is there he will drag it until the money he spent for lawyer fees will be more than the five billion he will give up the money so so it's you know it, it is what it is and hey, mr Elvis, thank you very much okay the last one he said the uh, ago 2024 who is your that, choice yeah who is your choice mr mr Elvis, i just had i have a feeling that you just you're just trying to like that that <laughs> at <laughs> me you just you just confirm it like a hair she's she's not she's missing that she was almost missing that part campaign goes to start to margarita campaign hasn't started and to date, I, I told you guys, I told everybody, I sent, uh, Aswe, um, not Aswe Godal, I sent uh, Mr. What's his name? Uh, Akpata. I sent him a Twitter message. If I have sent him two Twitter messages now, you know, saying, where is a running mate? What is going on? Everywhere is silent. Okay, well, you know you that he entered me. air peace. We entered, you know, reply. We went to, uh, we know that he's in the UK right now because he was on the plane when air peace uh, went to Gatwick Airport. So I'm assuming he's in the UK. Whatever he is, he's doing in the UK. That's fine, personal or whatever. But um, I mean, I'm not going to say he's going to have uh, issues with the internet in Nigeria. Uh, you are in the UK, sir. I don't know if you are back in Nigeria, but you are in the UK based on the fact that we saw you in the plane landing Gatwick Airport. Please respond. Where is uh, uh, Olumide Akpata? Now for the other candidates, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not putting so much of my energy. I don't want to put so much of my energy on the other candidates of the other parties. And I'm kind of focusing on these three parties, APC, PDP, and the Labour Party, because I know for sure, it's not like I know any information, but I'm, I already know that none of those other parties, political parties, you know, have any strength of some sort in the scheme of things. I'm just being realistic. And so that's why I'm not kind of disrespect, with all due respect to them, because it doesn't. it's not easy to come out, you know, you know and for an elected position that you want to run and especially you know with, when you're dealing with um in nigerian politics so i respect those other candidates from the other party like accord or ypp or uh, the one with the red hats party and all that you know but in the scheme of things these are the three uh elements you know these three the, the three parties these are the three candidates that i'm focusing my energy on and so where is um Olumide Akpata? i have not made my choice if you ask me I have not made my choice. And even if I'm asking about Olimide Akpata, I have seen to the best of my own knowledge, and I'm still learning, you know, the antecedents of the other two candidates. But Olumide Akpata is, is kind of new in the scene. That's why I'm still like, you come out, sir. Let me, let, let, me, let me know more about you. Where's your deputy governor? Where's your deputy candidate? Talk, how come you are like Andrew Lever Salt? You shima, 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 and now you have gone like ice water what's going on so that's why when i hear from him and i i see what these three candidates are doing and then i'll make my choice for now i'm not going to make my choice and i will not be pressured mr elvis <laughs> i will not be pressured <laughs> okay no while i'm waiting i'm waiting uh i'm not pressuring anybody though uh, campaign have not started 
So uh, when campaigns start, then, you know, we'll know where everybody stands. Uh, we all should know that it's about our state. So, you know, we must get it right this time. We must get it right. If we refuse to say something, then one of them will certainly be the governor of those states. But thank you very much, Mother Rita, for your wonderful submission. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Okay, the last person on the panel is Two Niger. Two Niger, it's good to have you on the show, sir. Good evening to you. Please talk to us. Yeah, good evening, and uh, thank you for having me, Niger Watch, and greetings to um, uh, this thing, Rita, <laughs> on the panel. She's the only one. Um, <laughs> Today is a very wonderful day, Mr. Albus. Please lock it in. Let me see Niger just be here. You know, see, you know, she said, "Not stop, Madarita when she did talk." So, two Niger, take over. You the talk. Yes, before. just lock it in. Two of us that, today that, is Friday. That, that, that's why I'm smiling here now. When and you greetings. finish, then I end the show. <laughs> <laughs> greetings to the chat and uh, to the viewers. All those uh, other panelists can sit it out. Uh, any miss of progress, they should come. <laughs> <laughs> Let us stay there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yes, um, this Bobriski uh, matter. I think. Um, it's one of those things, um, it's an example of what we I experienced myself in Nigeria when I was there, where you have uh, the way people respond to um, law enforcement is that, how about the other crimes? Why are they not dealing with it? The question I, I often, I, even if I'm sympathetic to that view, that there are grave crimes in Nigeria that a lot of people are getting away with. Um, the terror, the people that are funding terrorism in Nigeria, I don't know anyone that has been arrested, though. Nobody has told me. Um, the one, the people that have been stealing our oil on an industrial scale, has anyone been arrested? I don't know anyone. Um, the corruption that has been going on in the government, the scale, the billions lost, nobody in jail. Yes, that's why I'm sympathetic to that view. But that's, that said, how about if somebody something is done the right way in terms of if somebody breaks the law they hold them accountable we cannot always say um how about the other bigger problems um it's like you know you have um see insecurity issue and somebody gives you power supply say but why why give me power supply how about the other insecurity deal with the other ones first you, you see my point you you have to take what you have and um, and the, I'm sure part of the reasons why they uh, took him in for this money issue is because the reason why they passed that law is to discourage Nigerians from using their currency the way they, they do, um, which is it's a, it's a strange thing that they choose whenever they want to enforce it and enforce it the way they like. Um, I would I prefer to see somebody, you know, you know, some other person that is like a politician that breaking the law and being hauled before the court. And that is how a system is supposed to work. But you don't see that. The one you see is what you take. And this stuff is universal, to be fair. In all systems, human, human beings tend to be biased the way they enforce rules. It's not equal. You could go and steal a banana in a marketplace and you'd be lucky if the police come and find you alive. But yet, somebody can steal billions and get, they get away with it. And this, we as a society still accept it to an extent because we don't go and touch those people that do those things. Uh, they don't lynch them. They leave them to walk the streets. Some of them, they wouldn't come and the family, the village members would be praising them. Hey, welcome, hero, and all that stuff. This is what we do. And I feel like the prosecution of uh, Bob Risky is not necessarily a wrong thing. It's a right thing. But the problem is we are not seeing enough of them. We have not seen a lot of lawbreakers being brought to justice. We are not seeing a lot of lo enough lawbreakers being prosecuted harshly to the fullest extent of the law that this, the state of Nigeria now requires. You don't see them jailing people and even carrying out the death penalty that the capital punishment that they uh, have, um, the court has managed to uh, um, uh, uh, put in place. Because the court, sometimes they are doing their job, but they say they have over 3,000 Nigerians that have not been executed because the Nigerian government is shy about uh, carrying out death penalty because if they do it, internationally they will be criticized for uh, being barbaric and all the rest of it. Which is silly, because all these nations themselves, when they were going through the phases we went through, they were barbaric. That they were far more barbaric than we are. They killed for no reason. Then they are the kind of people that if you belong, you are you are Christian, you know, 
you belong to Catholic and the other one belongs to Protestant, they will kill you because, because you are Protestant. Vice versa. They will burn you at the stake. Death sentence straight. This, that's how mean they are when he, when he was their time. And then they come and tell us that uh, we shouldn't prosecute people when they break the law in Nigeria. We shouldn't convict, the, uh, convict them uh, with capital punishment when they uh, this thing, uh, have been convicted by the courts. And our people accept it. And you wonder why rogue agents are running rampage in the country. This is what happens when you don't give space for law and abiding and people, people with integrity, you don't give them space to emerge. This is the state you see. And the people become so um, uh, this thing, um, um, distrustful of the system that no matter what you try to do, they will criticize it. Like what you see now. Some people will say, why are you prosecuting them? Um, uh, uh, Bob Risky, and we have bigger problems. But the bigger problems are still going to be there, you like it or not. And the, pre the question is, why those bigger problems are there? Why are you not chasing to stop them from doing those those ones? And the truth is, you, you can, I think a lot of people have expressed this uh, uh, opinion on this panel, where they said uh, there are some Nigerians that they feel like some Nigerians in Nigeria don't, you know, it's like they've not felt the pain enough to come out to protest and stuff like that. The reason why that feeling, that opinion is being held is because they expected Nigerians to come out and fight the, the people that are oppressing them. But the re why are they not doing it? It's partly because they themselves have signed on to the system. They are used to the system. They, they bought into it. I Was it not the other day I was saying that a lady who came on TV, I'm not sure whether it's TVC or this in Arise. She was saying that when she asked people that were graduating from school uh, what they want to do when they get older, that 80% of them were saying they want to be politicians. So these are the, and the reason why they say they want to be politicians has nothing to do with why they want to go and serve the people well. It's just to go and enrich themselves because that's the way they see that they can earn a living in Nigeria. So uh, many of the people have signed on to it. This is why you don't see the kind of process you expect to see in the North, in the South, in the East, and they have not, you will not see it. We've made our peace with it and our people have become, have absorbed that consciousness of a kind of existence in a kind of sub um sub state or sub economy where we don't we can't compete with the world in any way we cannot allow that to happen because people like us are see into what is going on we have to wake the people up to the fact that they deserve better this is not how they should be you can't we can't live like this where every, every system is messed up you can't get good power supply. We are, we are generating six uh, point something gigawatts or five gigawatts of power supply. This is a country that has been around since 1960 with 200 and something million people, six point something gigawatts. I can tell you that there's no nation that exists like this. Only in Africa you see this. Only in Africa you see this. No nation exists like this with this type of anemic power supply. Some of the nations that have more power supply than us there are actually about 2 million <laughs> in them, 2 million people in them or less. And yet they still have similar power supply as we do. This is what our leaders have given us and our people have signed on to it. They have not woken up to the fact that this is unacceptable. We have to demand more, even if uh, OT is doing very well. That is not the best performance you, you expect from your people. They should be doing a lot more to make the country very, very rich. Nigeria should be extremely rich by right not even because of our natural resources because we are the most populated market on the continent we are also quite influential on the continent people will want to come and invest just like when people go to the east they want to go to china they should be coming to nigeria, nigeria should be absorbing that's attracting far more resources than even the population indicates because all, all businessmen should be biased towards coming to Nigeria because they want to, once they know that when they come into Nigeria and succeed, they will go, they can expand into the entire continent of uh, this in Africa from uh, this in Nigeria. But our, our people, our own government have not even decided that that is a good idea for us to do. So we don't want the, the law to be upheld. We don't want to push people to um, uphold the law. What do you expect? This is the system you are going to get. When I gave the example the other day, if everybody in a swimming pool start pissing in the water, which is immoral action, like uh, Bob Risky just did, like the people that uh, sponsor terrorism did, like the people that steal our oil did, everybody is doing one immoral act after the other. What do you think is going to happen to that swimming pool? Everybody is pissing in the swimming pool. You are going to all be swimming in your piss and filth until you all drown. That is what Nigeria is experiencing. 
one immoral act after the other. Maybe now and again, if you catch one person doing the wrong thing, if they are stopped, don't say, what, how about the other people that are pissing a drum? Because every single one is adding to the mess we are in. Every single immoral act, every time you bribe a police officer, every single time you, you um, uh, this is ask somebody for a bribe, every single time one person gets away with um, uh, committing a crime or killing somebody, you are, they, are, they are causing problems. Every single time they are not punishing somebody that commits a crime. A judge passes a, a judgment that for capital punishment, they won't carry out. And most Nigerians, you know what they think? They think it's because the politicians are scared or the politicians have um, um, some kind of a moral quandary or, or conflict whereby they feel like if they, if they execute the prisoners, they are, going to, uh, they are going to be judging themselves. No, that is not the reason why they are doing it. They are doing it because of international pressure. They want to make themselves look good for other people, not whether our society is functional. That is why. And the other day when I was trying to highlight this, a, a journalist was telling me that it was because of the other reason that I gave you just now. I was like, then I just went online and I saw so many links of how international community are telling us not to um, uh, carry out our death penalties. We should abolish it and all the rest of it. And I was talking to a Kenyan the other day. Kenyan told me the reason why their government are not executing people too is because they are taking money from the West. All these things our people don't know. Most of the countries that have death penalty, look at Saudi Arabia, look at Singapore, look at China. Because you have to give space for people that obey the law to emerge. How can you have a, an environment where people break the law, like, like a businessman wants to make money and he works very hard. Like look at the Yema, works for how many decades to build his business. Then some other person just becomes a politician yesterday and decide that he's just going to steal all the money and get away with it. How does that encourage more Oyema to emerge? And we will let that person that steal all that money get away with it. Then you are making sure another Oyema never emerges again. This is why I'll be saying, if you are serious about corruption in this country, you have to bring back capital punishment, especially for government officials. The ones that are supposed to govern our country properly. If you are serious, if you say you don't like corruption, advocate for that. If you say you don't like corruption, we are a democracy. Elections should be sacrosanct. It should be a, a sacred process because it's very, very important. The process we use to transfer power from one person to another is honored. And anybody that violates that process should also face the capital uh, this thing, penalty. Watch how election, um, uh, this thing, election process will go smoothly. Watch how your government officials will start buckling up Anytime anybody does anything, they will be the first to be shaking. If you are serious, so that's what all, all I'm going to say on that one. Um, the idea that uh, about the Palestinian, um, I think uh, they were saying something about Palestinian protests in the north. Um, I think um, there is merit to that, if you ask me, um, because you can't, as a human being, if you see the suffering of other people. Is on you to say, you know what, I don't like that, what is going on there. Um, it's not only because you are reacting as a human being and you are just trying to be human and, you know, empathetic to other people because it becomes part of you. Because if you see people suffering and dying, don't be surprised you inflict it on your own people too. You see what I mean? You, don't be surprised you start inflicting that same behavior on your own people because it becomes part of you. What it implies is that it, it, it creates this standard in your own consciousness that certain things are not acceptable. You can't treat other human beings like this. That, there's a reason why we don't eat human beings. Why do you think that? It's not because human beings and uh, this are not like other animals. Because it's too close to us. And if we start doing that, we will start, we don't know where the line is. There has to be a line of cruelty, a line of inhumanity somewhere. And people have a right to be able to express that. And there is also the geopolitical implication, which most of these people that are protesting don't necessarily care about. There is the concept of total war. Most of the war, war we have seen after the Second World War is not total war. Total war was the type we saw before the Second World War and this, during the Second World War, where you use everything you've got and you throw it at your enemy. 
these days, if you see a total war going on, it will be horrible. Chemical weapons, nuclear, all of them will be out there. And what Israel is doing is pushing the world towards that direction, whereby they don't care whether they slaughter people in blood daylight or at night. They are pushing, they are pushing the, 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 the that even inter international criminal court is almost broken to pieces because they are tired of passing resolutions and nobody's listening. It's like breaking the law. It's like they are trying to crash the whole international system. And when that happens, there will be major upheaval. For better or for worse, it's going to happen to us and it's going to happen to uh, the rest of the world too. And people that think that that stuff is not going to come back to bite us. It will very much come to us because what this people right up two say, minutes, sir. Uh, uh, see, yeah, where are you timing now? Now I did, I did, I just started talking. What are you talking about? I just started talking. That is, I'm not even started. Rita was talking for more than one hour. I was here. No, no, no. She, she, she talked for 18 minutes. You don't talk for 15 minutes. How, how 15 minutes? How did I talk for 15 minutes? You should have told yes, me when I, I talk for eight minutes now. Uh, no, no, no. I, no, no, no. You have talked for 15 minutes, 15 minutes, and it's still counting. Ah, okay. that, that is very quick. Oh, that is really yes, ah. This is uh, my, this is my mood. I really need to check. This time. Yes, don't okay. worry. Do you, do you know the only way you will know if your time is right after the broker you play your v, your your speech? Then you will know. <laughs> okay, okay, that's fine. That's fine. Um, so but the the um, uh, issue, um, I I think to say he should renounce his um. Uh, the, his goal, his goal of um, or separatist um, tendencies in terms of wanting to seek to cre create a Biafra nation, for to ask him to renounce that, I don't think anybody has a right to say that. That's one. But you can ask him to renounce violence. That is against the law. You can't. But that's not what they are asking. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You can't ask him to renounce his separatist um, uh, ideology. But that's what they're asking. So. Hey, they, 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 he, he, will not, he should not submit to that. He should not. And then that, that's, that means they are going to, they, they are looking for a way to, to leave him there forever. Then he will fight his own. See, because but because the, the they, know, is, they know he's not going to accept that. They know. They, okay. You can't, he shouldn't. If you can't ask him to, uh, to renounce his own political views, but you can ask, uh, ask him to renounce breaking the law. That is the difference. If, and if Namdi Kanu came out to that and said, I, I'm against violence, like the way um, Arafat or Palestine, uh, Palestinians came out, I'm against, I'm non-violent, I'm going to advocate for my um, separation of uh, this creation of Biafra in a peaceful way. They don't have, except uh, they can use the previous accusation they have against him, ag um, against him then. But to say um, you should renounce the entire Biafran ideology, that is just an excuse. Like you said, it's an excuse to pretend as if you want to, you don't, you want to release him, but he is the one holding, uh, holding out. Ask him to renounce violence. If you say you, you ask him to renounce violence and he refuses, most Nigerians will tell you that, eh, I'm not so sure about that. How can we release somebody that is saying if he comes out, he's going to uh, start carrying on advocating violence? You see what I mean? So that is the point. If you really, if they truly want to release him, they can ask him, can you pledge to renounce violence? Because if you look at uh, Shore, Shore is not advocating violence in Nigeria. Neda is, uh, I don't know much about um, uh, this thing, uh, the Yoruba um, one. But if he renounces violence, even I, and uh, who advocate that the Nigerian government um, uh, offer amnesty, because it's a form of amnesty, and to, to give somebody amnesty or pardon or something, you have to be convicted, isn't it? Before you can give somebody, you can't just release somebody uh, this way. Because there are rules to a state, and I really think Nigeria is so weak as a state that they can't even enforce anything. They can't. It's almost there is barely anything that can be enforced. Okay, and, and this is why I sympathize with all the people that have those views. That how is it that okay, can you are holding him? But there are people sponsoring terrorism. They are not being, they, you don't have them hauled before the court. There are people who are stealing our oil like crazy. You don't have them hauled before the court. Do you think oil theft doesn't kill people? When you deny people billions upon billions of dollars, you are killing them. That's what it is. So I, I, that's why I sympathize with those people. All I'm saying is that if you uh, want to truly release Nan Nekano, ask him to renounce violence. And it's up to him then. And I don't believe that most people will be sympathetic to him if he's Excuse me, sir. to saying that he's going to be violent. Mr. Tuninger, 
Um, sorry for interrupting, but you know, when you, you keep saying you are, they should ask them to come to um, um, succeed violence. You know, I don't think, I mean, okay, the last time we saw him in court, we all heard what he said. Nobody, not, not like this is what he said in print. He came out and said he's not in support of violence. He has said it time and time again. So you saying this now is making it seem as if he has been in support of violence. I don't understand where you are driving at. Uh, I, I really don't. He has been in support of violence before. Um, that is, there's ample evidence. Oh, you use the word before. Before, before his arrest now, yes. Oh, what about now? Now, what you see, what I what I heard, I don't know what I maybe I heard, misheard him. I when he was saying that stuff in court, I heard him say, um, "If I come out, there will be peace." It doesn't necessarily mean that. He oh my said goodness! He okay, did violence. you hear about the question that they asked him about? Um, um, they said, uh, "What do you uh, what do you um, think about those people who are intimidating people? You know, in the name of IPOB." Did you hear his response? Maybe you should watch the well, video well, you see, before you say what you what say, you're let saying. Me, let me let me give an idea of what I heard. His response was that he there are people should not be attacking their own people. They shouldn't be molesting their own people. They shouldn't be subjecting them to violence. That is not saying you he renounce said, violence. He said, "I do not support violence." To Nigeria, I what did he do again? No, I'm not going to argue with can you. I, can I, Please, can I come in watch here? it again. I will check it. Can I, I, didn't can know I come in here? I'm, I renounce violence totally. Yes, yes you can I, can come, I come in here? Yeah, yeah. You can come. All right. Thank you very much. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I might come in a very different way, but yeah, this is my own opinion here. Well, um, what he was saying is because right now he's in custody. Do I support the point that the federal government will say they should renounce it? No. He has to prove his point. That's my own. But the point is that when you advocate with violence, Mr. Mrs. Rita, you have just said he has not used violence. Have you, have, you, have you watched all the videos? Let's not look at it on the other side. Let's face reality here. I'm an advocate. I lambast the government. I don't care who they are because they have not actually produced what they, what, what they suppose is demanded Israel. By, the, by the citizen. Mr. That's what Israel. it is. Mr. Can Mr. I, I, let me just finish. Before. Let me, okay, let, let me just go finish. Ahead. The point is, let's not say because it favors us or is this is this. The reality is the reality. I don't support him if he wants to advocate. Nelson Mandela did that. But what actually came to the what actually came at the end? Dialogue. The people you have today in the South African Parliament, we're all part of the dialogue. The likes of Siri Ramaphosa, Jacob Zuma, Tambo Mbeki, they were all part of it. But were they not part of the ANC struggle? Yes. But the idea that you have to understand that this is a nation. This that is what I that is what we want to know. The idea you have to understand is a sovereign nation, whether you call it a hijab a, a, a or whatever, that's up to you. Because obviously, you are actually lobbying to the United Nations to say, recognize me. So also these countries are also being recognized. So you have to recognize that fact. But I do not see why this federal government, that's what I oppose, to tell him to stop. If you want to tell him to stop, then you stop your own. Do what is right for the people. But because this person actually advocated, it's because of the injustice. I admire, I, I, I admit that. That is a fact. And that is what I don't like the federal government that is doing. But the fact that you have to add violence to it, to call in and say, and some of the rhetoric you've been hearing, if you don't release him, we're going to burn down this country. Burn who? Are we okay? This is, is my own. Uh, Mr. Israel, Mr. Mr. Is anybody saying that and threatening the, the federal government, Inam Dikano did not send them. You are forgetting that in every Wait, group, listen, in every group uh, we have, uh, have people uh, listen, who are that's up to me, But I've just made my own point. My own, the other ones, I wanted to touch on the other ones, like Bob Brisky. A lot of people will come in and say, ah, oh, Bob Brisky, whatever he's doing, whatever Bob Brisky is doing, whether it's a she or he, that is his whole, that is his or her own business or whatever she wants to call it. That's her own right. But the point is, if there is, if we say what is law, rules of action established by an authority, which is a state, but because we don't have institutions running well in our country, that is why we see this garbage in, garbage out type of government we have. But if we have institutions where you live, let me take you for example. You live in Canada 
And in Canada, you have institutions that are working. Justin Trudeau will not knock on your door. The institutions will knock on your door. This is how it works. But in Nigeria, when you make laws, the laws are always kind of fluctuating because the institutions are not there. It's also meandering it to help break the same law they have created. You know what I mean by all institutions? They're not actually doing well. When you say bail is free, but actually you, when you go there, it's not free. That's what it is. But here is the point of this. If somebody, sub, if, even if it breaks the law, and I'm actually objecting it, and there's a law being established and the government is following it, and I'm, I want the law to work, and this person is being held accountable, and say, where did you get the money? I don't care. The law has to be its place. Let the government face its own criticism, and let the person who did that, I don't break that law, face his own criticism. This is where I stand. But Brisky should not be saying, oh, just because it's deep, they are going to tamper with him because yeah, him or her because of this and that. No. They have to, where did you get the money from? If you were living in a sane society, you have well, bank account very, that you cannot, oh you cannot actually tell the government or tell the authority or the institutions how you made your money. Does it even cause for questioning? This is the question. So even if you're lambasting the government and they're doing the right thing, you have to actually tell them, do it the way it will favor everybody. Let us now work. Let us make the institution work like a cash machine. Like I've always said, a cash machine does not even recognize whoever puts him or her, puts it there. It doesn't. If you, if I put the cash machine, it doesn't mean that, oh, Mr. Machiavelli, because you put me there, I'm going to give you 20 naira. It doesn't work like that. If I call for 20 naira, 10 naira, it's going to give me 10 naira. If you call for 20 naira, it's going to give you 20 naira. That is how institutions is supposed to regulate. So, so what I, I I'm trying to understand what you are saying, um, Machiavelli. Are, are you yeah. blaming the government or Me the people? Too. Yeah. For for who? Uh, Babriski? No, no, no. The, the situation right now. Are you blaming the people? The, the for Babriski, for Babriski, I'm not going to blame the government for if they are actually saying where did you get the money from? That's why law works, and this is what I want. This is what everybody wants. But what the point is that don't share it. If it's actually working for A, let it work for B. This is my question. This is what I'm saying. Because a lot of, I've seen the video, a lot of people are saying they are actually running after him. They are actually going after him because of X, Y, and Z. This is what I'm saying. Mr. Israel, the government, Machiavelli, Machiavelli, yes. listen. Uh -huh. Let us not kid ourselves. Listen, yeah. let's, let's not kid ourselves. Mm -hmm. There I, are I, people. I, wanted, I, I just want to, wait, let me just quickly finish so that I don't lose my thought. Okay, and okay, then you can ask a question. Then I, I heard when uh, my brother, what's his name, um, to Niger said about um, the, what's it called? Is it the, well, these people, the Palestinian Nigerians advocating, he said, yes, it actually is right. My brother, let me tell you one thing. The Palestinian itself have their own. So let their cough cough them. Let our cough cough us. Israel's, Israel's uh, 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 whatever they are doing, let it be Israel. It has nothing to do with Nigeria. The issue that we now see it as trying to make, make other people feel like, oh, look at what they're doing to them, then we should start feeling that I don't think is right. We have our own problem. They have their own problem. Let them sort it. If they don't understand what humanity is, they shouldn't just come in and start trying to make all us let us take side with them. Benny Gantz, Benjamin Netanyahu, and all the people who believe that they have what it takes to really, to really govern and try to do what it takes to suppress Hamas or whatever they want to do. That's their business. And the so-called Hamas, who does not, who believes that going inside bunkers or building mansions in Dubai and using the, 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 the least Palestinians to have their sheet. That is their own business. But the point is, both of them have to, rec they have to understand that one, Israel is not going anywhere. Palestina is not going anywhere. They need to face themselves, go to the United Nations and sort it at a two-state solution. Simple as that. It has nothing to do with us. Why should we be carrying placard for somebody else's business? Who carry placard for Nigerian business? Do they, um, two, uh, 200 Nigerians we are, we, we are being taken hostage. Did you see any of these people coming to save justice for these people? Did the Palestinian carry a flag for us? Did the Israeli carry a flag for Why should we, Nigerians, be mandated to come and say, come and take side? This is the point. 
So, Miss uh, 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 Madam Rita, you wanted to ask a question. Sorry. Yes, I was about to say. Um, I've lost my train of thought, but um, right. I think you were talking yeah, about. Let, let, me, okay. let me just acknowledge something you yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Go you ahead. Were correct. You were correct when you said Namdekano in that statement there did dismiss any form of violence in the name of Biafra. He did do that, and Thank I think you. I, I, that is the fact because I just checked it just now, and I hope he, they give him a chance to make a proper statement on this. And I, if he does that, I believe that most Nigerians will start changing their mind with the approach, the way he's going to approach it. Because often he's, he, he seems to be coming across as very forceful and, you know, advocating violence. But on that, on, when he said that thing that day, he actually dismissed all forms of violence in the name of Biafra. And that is a good thing. So you can agree that the statement that you made that he has to... Yes, um, I, I was inaccurate. I was not as accurate as you Thank were. you very I'm much. I just to correct that, yeah. Thank you for accepting that. Let me take this call. I'll come back to you guys quickly. Uh, we oh, Mr. Najawosh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. As All right, I wanted to, this is a own. I didn't touch somebody, on it. Somebody's on the phone. I'm coming to you, sir. Uh, Lord God is my strength. Thank you very much, man, for calling in. Please talk to us. Good oh, I'm to coming, you. please. I don't know what's happening to this, my phone. Can you hear me, Cora? Can you hear me? Yeah, well? we can hear you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Good evening, everyone, on the comment section. And uh, Sister uh, Sister Rita, good evening. Uh, you are, hope you are all right. And everyone on the comment section, on the panel. Please, I just want to say one thing. I'm, I'm not going into people's private life. My brother and I just finished speaking. I don't know how to pronounce your name, and I'm sorry, so I don't want to pronounce it wrongly. You see, when we are talking about the private life of people, we are talking about Bob Risky. Yeah, the way what he's doing is his private business. For me, I refuse to accept that. Today, I was going through all our boys, our children, our children who have been turned to transgender. I'm not saying the other way, the other thing I'm talking. They have been turned to because of the way they saw that this guy is flashing money. And we are saying it's not, it's his business. It's his business in his own room. It's his business in his own flat. It's his business in his own mansion. But the moment he comes outside to exhibit whatever he's doing, is affecting us and is affecting our children. We are not we are not interested in what he does in his other room, in his behind. We don't care. But what we are saying, you are is what he's doing is recruiting our children to start doing what he's doing. So for me, I'm not going to say that's his business. It's not his business. His business should be in his own, in his inner room, not outside, recruiting our children to start doing what he's doing. So I go against that. That's number one. Number two, we are talking about uh, the people in the north coming outside to say freedom, Palikan, Palestan, whatever they are saying. We have our own problem in our country. We've not been able to solve it. We have own guys there. Security is there. Some of our children, they are having babies for Boko Haram. We don't know where they are. We've not been able to solve it. And two Nigeria is saying that it is good for them to come and carry placards in Nigeria, not even close to uh, where the thing is happening. That they should free free them. It's what will Nigeria say that we make them free them. We have our own oh, that we should solve our problem instead of going to other people's country to say they should help them. We want people to come and help us because we have problems. So for them to be kind for Palestine, I'm so sorry. They don't have their priority right. And can I say something? This is why most of the leaders don't want to pay our children in the north to be educated because they can push them around like Nama, they can put their around like cow. Enough is enough of all this thing. So we cannot be saying that this is good when we have our own problem. Our eye, one of our eyes is pending us, and you are saying that we should remove that one and take somebody one and put it there. We need to solve our own problem before we go and carry black cards. For people, when we say not there for war, you be like, say we're there for war. I beg go to like that. No way should they talk. That's number Thank one. You. Number three, in Adikanu, 
tell him that he should stop talking about uh, uh, secessionists because he wants to live like everybody in Nigeria wants to live like Nigeria. Only now the camera said his own that everybody has seen. When people, everybody now come out, two, three, four from other different regions, they will know that it's not only, it's not only in Adikano. Nobody can change an idea when the time comes. That is not the kind of idea. Nobody can change it. And I'm sure he's ready to go to the last length with this his idea that he's out. So they should stop it. If they want to release him, they should release him. Uh, uh, Sunday Bowo was talking about Odudua too. He was he was talking about Odudua. So what are they saying that Sunday Bowo is not talking about Odudua? They were doing it when we go to protest for Chowore in West End. When we are saying free Chowore, we carry plastic everywhere. We see them too. We call it, they come there with Odudua. They want to leave Nigeria. So they should not tell us that, that uh, 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 Sunday Bowo was not talking about all of them want to leave, so they should stop that. They should release in the canoe. Thank you, my brother. Thank you very much, uh, Madam. Law of God is my strength. God bless you, man. I'll Thank take you. one more last call Thank quickly. You. Uh, then we are done with calls. Uh, Mr. FA, thanks for calling in. Please talk to us. Two Good minutes, evening. sir. Good evening, Good evening sir. to you. Thank you. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, we can hear you. I've already greeted you. Please go ahead. Thank okay. you. Okay, sir. Thank, thank you very much. Sir. May, God, may God bless you, Baba. Uh, let me greet uh, Madarita, Madarita, my sister. May God bless you. I like your submission this evening. You, every time you always uh, spoke in my mind. Um, I'm so very excited anytime I hear your voice. See, I want to talk about. Uh, can you hear me, sir? Yes. Okay. I want to talk about uh, uh, this Una uh, Dikanu uh, matter. My brother, see, Una Dikanu, uh, see, all, everybody for Nigeria want. We want, we want to leave Nigeria. For them to come, okay, first and foremost, why the, the uh, uh, court uh, 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 grant Una, Una Dikanu uh, 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 the winner? Why? Because the, the winner of what? As in, wait, 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 the, 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 the court free on her. Court free on Okay, Okay, if they see anything against her, you should say they for, the court for free on this one where uh, uh, Nigeria, where, where, where the, the so-called Kaba uh, they do, now just oppression. All Nigeria want leave. We want leave. Everybody go their separate way. I, I imagine first way they Europe. We call they, 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 they talk about our country. We say we don't have we don't have law. Nothing, nothing is working in that country. The one person will come media for you. Call they talk, they talk, they talk. We are we are one, we are all Nigeria. I'm not happy living in Western world uh, to go to my country. I must do fasting and prayer for good one month. Everybody want to leave. Everybody want to leave. You understand me so? May, may, I, know, I believe Una, Una Dukanu will not sign anything. He will not sign anything because there's no law in our, in our country. Nothing is working. No good air care. No good road. No good hospital. Nothing, nothing. No common lights. We don't have nothing. You are telling Una the Kanu to come and say that you should just stop this Biafra issue. If Nigeria could, Biafra will say they're foremost. Or don't want to say they're foremost. I don't understand. Let us say the truth to ourselves. We live in Western world. We enjoy democracy for years. Our country is messed up. I beg, I know your day, this. This matter at all, but they don't leave that bar. God, God don't already grant for free. They don't. They say Una the Kanu, he don't, he don't, he don't commit anything. But they free that man. This one our pressure now for Christ's sake. Eh? More, more, more. They tell each other the truth now. Nah. Eh? Bro, Baba, at the best, I just want to talk this thing because Una the Kanu not do anything. You don't do anything. This one our pressure. May call it sign. Thank you. Okay, now you want sign. Thank you, my brother. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Good to bro. Thank you. Sir. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you very much, uh, my wonderful people right there. Let me quickly come back to uh Machiavelli. Uh you say you want to comment on the Edo State uh upcoming governorship election. Please talk to us. Are you there? Okay, you are not available right now. Let me move on to the next person. 
uh, then. Um, before I come to you, Black Panther, let me pr quickly prioritize Madam Iris Finest. Sorry about that. Madam Iris Finest, thank you very much Ma, for joining us. Good evening to you. Please talk to us. Good evening, Mr. Ivis. Good evening, everybody. My comment session people, people in the panel, our invisible viewers. Uh, happy weekend to everyone. Thank you for always joining us and for keeping the platform going. I appreciate everyone. Thank you, Mr. Evis, for always coming, for your consistency, for standing for what you believe and for doing what is right. Thank you. Uh, greetings to Mommy Diaspora, Mr. Johnson, my people over there, Abo. Thank you all for always being there, for always coming to support the platform. Thank you all. Um, I'm Madarita, of course, my iron lady. I greet you, Machiavelli. Good to have you today in the building, Mr. Black Panther. I greet you all. Um, that being said, um, with the topic of today, though I was not here when you showcase the videos and the rest, uh, I can see the case of Bobrisky is being convicted. Uh, anyway, uh, Bob Risky issue, I think, is long overdue in certain aspects, not all. Because first of all, what I would like to hit on is Nigeria governments need to make the law about this thing very plain and open in such a way people will understand it. Because I understand that many people are still mistaking the whole of these things like we that are in the western world if you are conversant with these things they have categories you know so some people see them some people are calling bob risky a cross-dresser some are calling him transgender some are you know they are calling him a lot of name i even saw where somebody call him a drag queen or something like that yeah these things are in different categories there are actually some there in Nigeria that are still in the level of cross-dresser. And I think because the law doesn't permit it in our country, Bobrisky cannot come out to openly say what he is. That is why he's referring himself as a cross-dresser. I think his level has gone beyond the cross-dresser. At this point, if we are in the Western world, it's fair enough to address Bobrisky as a transgender because he has undergone certain operations and I uh, think he uh, have his boob is no longer wearing what he used to wear. When he started, he used to wear something. I think he show us online, he have operated it and did a lot of, a lot of things to himself, you know, homo drugs to change her vo his voice and to stop the beers from growing. He have really went through a lot of transformation. Then the rest that people are saying, like the one that are wearing female dresses to do comedy and the ones that are also imitating him, living on it, that have not undergo any through any of this treatment they are just dressing like female those are the ones that we can say okay these are cross dressers because there are stages to these things so clarifying that with people that don't understand how it works there are some group that actually drag queen most of those ones are not operated they are men they dress with funny peluca with big big heel on the leg and all that so of course we have the female to female one and the male to male one like that the list is going and they keep coming with different kind of uh, uh stage here in western world what am i trying to say is that nigerian government needs to make this law clear because what bob risky is arrested for now actually many people are still mistaking it like the very dark man is celebrating that he said something that made them to arrest bob risky and all that no he is fighting against his gender issue and all the whole of that. Then they are telling us that they arrested him for money, naira mutilation or money laundering and stuff like that. Now, is he allowed in our society? Culturally, it's completely no. And majority of us Africans, we know it's not our culture. And when you go beyond that, you're not becoming a parent. I, I believe a res no responsible parent will agree to such thing in our society. And why am I talking about the government in this thing? They made law about the mat to mat thing, same sex thing. That is 14 years, according to the law disclaim they made. Then 
our law did not say anything about cross-dressing. That is where most of them are jumping into that uh, uh, that uh, particular one to perpetrate what they are doing. When you ask them, they will tell you they are just cross-dressing because some of them actually also know the law. Some of them know their rights, even though not all. Because they know that our law did not ban cross-dressing. There is no punishment or legal right concerning that. That is why they are using that to cover their face. Why am I calling on the government? They should make it clear. If they want to make law concerning this, if it has to be all around so that we know what we are dealing with, because like I explained earlier, it has stages and different names. They have to make law in all these things, both you wearing a woman thing, uh, even if it's for content, even if it's for anything, even if it's for endorsement, or you just want to be using it to do whatever, because most of them will tell you it gives them money. That's why they are doing it. So a, a law that would be fully enforced should come into place for these things so that will not be mistaking this thing because people have a clamoring and why are they no arresting him? Why are they no arresting him? He's doing this, he's doing that. He has never actually opened my to say he's a gay guy. No, he has always said uh, that he's a cross dresser. In most of his interviews, he always agreed that he do it to make money, being a, fe a, femi a feminist, uh, give, uh, give him money. So that is what all he has been saying. So they have to specify these things and make the law very clear so that we will know what we are fighting against in the society. Not that we are trying to fight against this. This person will come out and say, but I'm not a gay, I'm, I'm a cross dresser. Or the other one come out, I'm not a gay, I'm a drag queen. So people are confused. We don't even know what we are fighting at this point. So that being said, concerning the arrest, I cannot come and say that uh, what EFCC or what the government is doing about his arrest is wrong. Of course, it's good. I understand that we Nigerians are used to say, uh, well, people have been doing it. Why not uh, also arrest those people? Why are they not carrying this because other people have done it? I keep saying it. If we continue like that, we cannot move forward. You know, we have to start from somewhere. The only thing I would say is that I encourage them. I am calling them that if you start from somewhere, you have to make it not to be selective. Go around, do it around. Anybody that is involved in it, who, whatever the person status in the society, he should roll for it. The other time, we have one actress that spent six months in jail for spraying error. And ever since, a lot of people have been doing it. Even in the party where she did that thing, a lot of other people did it there. A lot of these rich kids, children, and all that were there. And that was even the period of Naira scarcity, where people were buying Naira with, uh, with Naira. So I think they should go. I applaud them for doing this, because if Bobrisky actually have a certain money in his bank account that he cannot account for, he's talking about his business or maybe endorsement or stuff like that. Yes, you should be able to account for it. You are doing business, fine. Nobody's disputing that you can do business. It's a free world. You need to live. You need to survive. But account for it. Do it in a, in a certain legal way. Let it be transparent. So if you cannot account for it, whether Bob Risky or whoever is involved, they should make account for it. And outside Bob Risky, I think all these are social lights and most of all the celebrity I should go on them because I believe most of our politicians are actually hiding in under these people to be doing these things because sometimes you see they will come out and say they have endorsements ah they, this person just got endorsement of 20 million and you look at the business that is endorsing the person for 20 million sometimes what you will see the business will not look because let me put that word look because i'm not on ground with what you will see on their page and what you are seeing the kind of business they're into it will not look like business that worth 20 million and you are using 20 million to endorse somebody that will promote that business sometimes it doesn't just make sense to me they need to make it make sense they have to go after all of them that is what i'm saying that it should be clear if uh, there is a a, a law that cover it a prison term or punishment that cover it. all of them should go for it there should be transparency there should be accountability i am glad that they are taking advantage of uh, social media to make their money influencing doing whatever they are doing uh, because of uh, you know at least i know it is really helping a lot of you to this social media team because of lack of employment and at the same time distracting them because because some of them are making money from all these things sometimes they don't prioritize what 
is really happening on ground and the really issue nigerians are dealing with because they feel oh after all i am making my own money the next thing they do important issue they use it to mess it and laugh it away they remove important from it and look the laughing part of it i am not against it but let everybody be transparent about it the other day government was talking about paying tax for skit uh, makers and all that they were shouting hey why would they do that did they use their camera to record it i think nigeria should grow beyond certain level of reasoning so if bob risky have a certain amount of money that he cannot account for i am in support of them to bring him to book let him explain let us make account of it if he cannot account for it then he should pay the penalty that should be paid for that and that goes to all the socialites all the celebrities and even all the normal citizens even the politicians if possible let them go after all of them because status in the society and level should not be a yardstick to this if we are sanitizing the society we should sanitize it all through from big to to small or from small to to, to big so it should be like that. I am in support of that because law should come to place in Nigeria because we can't continue to deal with a lawless country like ours. So that is what I have to say about that. Going to what Fallon has said about the state police that they were abusing, sure, there is nothing that come up in Nigeria that our, our, our um, politicians doesn't abuse. But we can't because of that say we are not going to do certain things that we know is going to help the society or the country. There is nothing you have to do with Nigerian society, uh, Nigerian politicians that they will not take advantage of. They must take advantage of anything. But we have been clamoring for state police. Should we now relax? Maybe probably inside 36 state governors, uh, that five state governors will say, okay, let's say 10, we take advantage of it. Maybe 25 states that will make good use of it will, because of the 10 states that will take advantage of it and misuse it, will not uh, throw the rest uh, states to be battling insecurity. And we just have to try it same law that i'm talking about has to come to place they have to make enforce law and make it work anybody that abuses it should pay for it because now this is actually happened because nigeria is a lawless country we can't continue to deal with lawlessness in the country any government that abuse the power it should pay in most european countries that we are they, some of them do some certain things that is even minimal minor it's either they resign or they pay for it so it should be so so i don't think that should be a reason why nigeria should not have a state police we should have a state police and make a, and enforce a law that will work that will cover it that and will follow us follow the law strictly that is uh, uh, what i have to say about that as for in the kanu case of course in the kanu case it's not today that it has become a case of persecution the, the man has been uh, on a hot seat for many people for 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 reason best known to them and i believe especially the people that the system of nigeria today is benefiting are there now they kind of must have made some statements that were not okay uh, during his uh, broadcast uh, to nigeria government or to whoever think maybe his statement or some of his words offended them because sometimes now they can actually go off track we, if we are being sincere to ourselves we have to agree to that does that make the cause is fighting not to be okay no i agree 100 percent with the cause is fighting because nigeria is the way it is many people think different things will be solution to it some think amendment of constitution will be solution to it he and his followers think that breaking nigeria will be the solution to it then having their biafra is the solution or do the white people the one that are clamoring for do the nation feel that them having their nation is the solution to it for me until we have the real solution to nigeria problem i strongly believe anything that anybody believe it will be a solution to what they are doing they are free to do it if there are many countries in the world people are agitating but all i'm saying agitate it in the in the right way if you're agitating it's not going well you re-strategize and see how you can redo it and mind you what they should know is that there is never i don't think there is any country in the world that have achieved to get a referendum without the support of the sitting government of the country that is what they should know we need to because many people talk about this referendum and see if they can just wake up one morning maybe if they release now they can now suddenly they will just get their biafra it doesn't work that way we still have to see how we we'll work it out and see a government that will listen to them that will put this file on the table and call this people to run table for discussion they discuss about it and see if you now say okay let's throw it open let people come and vote what do they want the people that want to go away the ones that doesn't want to go they run election 
countries do it there are so many countries that have you know over the over the centuries that have that have splitted nigeria will not be the first and besides nigeria is a very big country look at togo our neighbor there yeah, togo is a very small country uh benin is a very small country where nigeria ghana is also not that big so i don't see any problem in dividing nigeria if that will be the, the solution because with the look of this you actually look as if Nigeria is too big for them to handle because we can't be like this is 1960 that we got independence, nothing is working, nothing is good. I know some people will come and tell me if Nigeria is bigger than America, if it's bigger than India, it's not bigger than this country, but those countries are doing well. Fortunately, Nigeria is not doing well. That is why all this, maybe this could, maybe this could, maybe this could is coming in. So that is it for me. I still call for his release since they have released every other person that were into this for him. Sunday Bo is out there. Uh, uh, you know, they have to also release him. Uh, so he is free. They, you know, the country should not be there. And especially now that he's sick, they should allow him a good treatment. They should free him because the court has said so. I don't know who is holding him, the power that is behind his arrest. I don't just know. But I still call for his release. I urge everybody to tweet releasing now the canoe, free now the canoe because they have to free him because not coming from us now the courts of the land have said so so coming to a do election uh i know that uh campaign is coming and um uh the kitchen will still start to be very hot and Mr. Ivy said that uh, we must come with our candidates and uh i will say just like sister rita said earlier we are between the pc pdp and the labor um i've also heard some other small party candidates they, they spoke uh which i must say some of them are very vibrant with uh, a lot of things to offer but unfortunately under the party they are coming from we all know how nigeria political space work i don't think a miracle like labor party we 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 come up in a do state anytime soon like the way labor party suddenly gained momentum because of peter will be so rolling that out because of the kind of party they are they 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 came out from i will center on this our three candidates uh aswen barista aswen godalo and the uh, barista akpata and the uh, senator monde Okbegolo. that being said these are three people i always say lesser evil and uh i don't trust nigeria politicians i keep saying that putting trust on them is a no for me but in this case we just have to choose Chosen as well, uh, me, I've also also stated in this platform time with that number, I don't play party politics. I don't do party. I do candidate politics. That is me. People that have listened to my submission or heard me in comment session over the years, that is my stand. In this case, I've checked out three of them. Before choosing them, I want to state categorically clear. I am choosing number one, because i did it in the federal i believe in in i believe in equality i believe in you know everybody should be carried along mm -hmm. fairness and equity i strongly believe that so for me for that i believe chance should be given to edo central as well to present the governor somebody might say should we choose a tribe over a uh, competence i will not call it tribalism as people are calling it i will call it people that are fighting for their rights because fighting for your rights is different from tribalism that is how i will see it because if edo central is clamoring for this and you really check how the thing has been going i think it's fair it's good and fair for them to have uh, a chance to present the coming governor as that happened it happened that apc and pdp actually played to that game they brought candidates there are two candidates from edo central and the Labour Party brought from Edo South, which first of all, rule him out for me. Then now we're talking about competence of three of them. Um, for me, Modeo Kwebo is, I, I, as I will call him, I normally call him a junior politician. Why do I call him junior politician? Before he came out for this senatorial position, I've never heard of him. I've also made some inquiry in Edo Central. Many people don't really know him before that time. He was lucky enough to win the, the candidacy and he became senator from Edo Central, which is good and fine. And I will also say, since he became the senator in Edo Central, I think I've never heard him 
uh, present a motion or say something tangible, even if you are not moving emotion, at least a lot is happening in the country. You can stand up and see speak against it. I've never heard any anything of sort from him. The only person I can say in Edo Central that is like doing something working for his people right now is uh, Audio Koje from the House of Rep. He has moved motion and is doing some quite a job, which I give kudos to him for that. That is what we are looking for: politicians that can work, that will represent us very well, that will represent their people. I say kudos to Audio for that. Then. Coming to Okbevolo, I have not, I don't know him with any private sector, something where he has functioned before. He might have personal business doing, probably it's not popular. I don't know about, I don't, I don't have anything about his pedigree, like, okay, he was successful in this private sector, he have done this, he have done that before. So I cannot see anything that can help me to support him. I've watched him talk, I've watched him try to say certain things. So a kind of incoherence, a bit not too fantastic to choose him on top uh, as well and Olomide uh, Akbata. So that give, put him aside for me. Then coming to Aswan with Olomide uh, Akbata, Aswan have worked in private sector, he has been successful with his businesses and all that. Then he have, according to him, he has been in economic team for uh, Oshomole and the rest of all that. I've checked him, I've watched him speak, I've listened to some of his plan, his recent interview in some other platform, I think he has something to offer. Then, uh, Olomide, people are supporting Olomide because he came out from the Labour Party with the influence of Peter Obi and all the all of that. I will not, because of Peter Obi, support somebody that is not Peter Obi. That is number one. I will not support him because he came out from the Labour Party. I will not do that because, be personally, I can be obedient and I'm not a Labour Party person. Just as I say, I'm not any party person. So, I will not choose him. I stand my ground. Mr. Evans, I'm confirming in front of you and the whole of the platform today that I am standing for Aswen Igudalo for Edo State 2024. I'm going to stand for Aswen. I'm going to defend uh, him and his vice, uh, Osaudin Oge. For now, uh, Akpata has not given us his vice. We don't know where he is. So, uh, but what will follow in other debates? I reserve my comment. People are talking about competency and corruption and not the whole of that, that they didn't see Olomide on that. And not. I have some things to say about that, but just like you said, the debate will soon start. I will reserve some things for my debates. I declare my support for Aswell Igudalo as the voice of hiring finest in the building in Niger Watch platform. Here I come, Aswell 2024, and uh, Osaudi Ogi, here we go. I support you guys. Thank you. I, I have a question, on, uh, my sister. I have a question. I have a question. Go okay. ahead with your question, quickly. Yeah, my sister and finance, it's, it's lovely to hear your voice, and I'm happy that you're back in the panel. Um, you said you don't play party politics, but your declaration in the beginning um, was regional. Why? Isn't it the same? ideology now with Asher Godalo that you use you you great I mean it was obvious you, you selected governor you supported Governor Obaseki in 2020 election right because you all thought that he was the Messiah to transform Edo State into Dubai. Now isn't it the same antecedents I mean based on what you're saying now that Asher Godalo is displaying that Obaseki displayed that disappointed Edo people certainly not me because I didn't support because I know it was just a it was a pipe dream. All the things that was saying was a pipe dream. So what makes you think that what uh, Aswe Godalo is, is doing right now, isn't it a pipe dream? Like what we all saw in 2020. And I'm going back again. You say you don't play party politics. Agreed. But you just made a declaration based on regional. So what stance are you on, my sister? That's all I need to know. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Sister Rita. I will clear you on that. Regional, selecting people from region, does it's not necessarily a party politics because i can still select as when if you have come out from labor party if you have come out from pdp or whatever party being selecting people from senatorial region where i make straight statement to that region issue when people are talking about you can't put competence upon or top region that is where I made that statement. In every region, there is always a competence person. So right now, since there are people from that region that is out, and I see competence in him than the other guy, 
So I have to I have to make that region issue clear because many people are misunderstanding the region issue. They see it like tribalism. They see it like a, a kind of a, a, I don't know how to put it. So I have to make it clear. And for that thing you said, I don't play party politics. Peter Obi will prove it. Many people that know me this platform, I started supporting Peter Obi from PDP. If I play party politics, I will wait for him to come to a, 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 a Labour Party. I don't do that. I follow people because I know them. I know the antecedents. Even Oti, Governor Oti, that people are also clamoring now because of what is working now. I will, if you go to my Twitter page, you will see where I was reposting not, uh, most of the posts that was campaigning for him during the election because I know his antecedent before now. So I don't do party politics. I can boldly say that. And you, Sister Rita, that is asking me this thing, we have been in this platform for so long, you're supposed to know that. I don't yes. do party politics. I yes. support yes. candidates. I support yes. candidates, yes. not parties. There's, there's a purpose because I, I needed clarity. A lot of people listen to you. They need clarity because you're making statements and people are taking note. And that's why I needed you to say that to clarify. Yes. Thank you. Yes, thank you for the question. I, I really do appreciate it. So I reaffirm again, I'm not doing this for party. I'm not for PDP. I'm not for APC. I'm not for Labour. I can be obedient and still support anybody that I want to support. I can support Aswen in a those states election right now. If 2027 or Peter Obi is coming out or anybody that is more competent than Peter Obi, irrespective of the party, I can still support the person. That is how okay. my own system of politics will work. I go for people that have things upstairs, not party as per se. Uh, that is that is just uh, that, that is just aspect, on that aspect, Madam uh, Iris Finest, I agree with you because I remember you you mentioned it long time ago that you'll be supporting Mr. Peter Obi even when he was in PDP. So you've been you'll be following Peter Obi everywhere. So it's not because of the party, you know. So different from people like Cause that started supporting Peter Obi because he moved to a uh, Labour Party. Me personally. Yes, he went to be declared in PDP. I didn't support him. I've said it so many times, you know, even though I know I was born into these parties. But still, when I moved to Labour parties, when I declared my uh, support for him. So, but let's come to you supporting uh, Aswe Godaro. For me, I don't have anything to say about that because at the end of the day, uh, this is what I want people to do. Everybody to come in, tell us who you want to support for this governorship election. We all are from those states. Uh, if we like it or not, at the end of the day, we are still going to have one or amongst these major three that will become our governor. So it's better we start speaking for our candidate now. But the Irons have declared is uh, our own support for uh, Dr. Aswa Ngodaro now. That means she has the right now to start, you know, saying anything good about our candidate, you know, either on the panel or on the comment session without any hindrances, you know, because she has declared it. So... If you know you are supporting model Bewolo, you come here, let us know, tell us why you're supporting him. If you're supporting um Olumide Akbata, come here, let us know why you're supporting him. You know, like Mother Iron just stated. So yeah, like I said, I don't have much to say about that. Thank you very much, Mother Iris Finance, for your so for your submission. Um, Thank you, Mr. Elvis, for clarifying that. It's very important to me because at this point, many people might feel, oh, because somebody was telling me the comment session the other time, uh, which means you are no longer obedient if you are supporting us when you are betraying Peter will be forget Peter will be for presidency for 2027. I don't play politics like that. And I'm sure the person that was telling me that he started following Peter will be when he was in Labour Party. So Thank you so much for clarifying for 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 clarifying me uh, supporting Peter will be right from PDP. I I really appreciate. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Yes, um, that's fine. Like I said before, whoever that you guys want to support uh, at this time, me personally, I'm staying back. So you guys fight for your candidates. Like I said before, if anybody is waiting for me to do exactly what i did for mr Ptau before any candidate now uh i don't know i don't want to say anything so uh but the good thing about it is that the platform is open for now but when the campaign starts you know maybe the platform might not start moving to one particular uh area depend on the majority <laughs> because you cannot tell me if we have 80 percent for example supporting one particular candidate then we now have 20 percent supporting other candidate obviously their voices will overshadow you so have that in mind let me pick this call quickly and then i'll come back to the panel again to black panther uh thank you very much prince akwashi for calling in sir good evening to you 
Please talk to us, sir. You are not talking, sir. We can't hear you. Oh, if you miss it now, you might not be able to call back again because it's almost 10 o'clock. Mr. Akwashi, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Okay, finally. Please talk to us, sir. Good evening to you once again. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Go ahead. Good evening. I, I, okay, I just uh, wanted to greet you guys and... Uh, you know, I just had uh, Irene Finest uh, speaking. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised uh, she's speaking. So tell her I know. I know the kind of people she loves. She loves business people. So, uh, I, so uh, your line is breaking, sir. Your line is breaking. Whoever they want. You know, um, yeah, nobody can force any other person to to uh, uh, to support who they don't to force uh, support. But uh, uh, can you also remind her, please? Her principal over here needs her donation. He's still poor. He's still broke. Mm -hmm. So he needs he needs her donation. That's who's who's a, who is our principal? Hello, you just hang up. I don't understand the star question. I don't understand your network, both your what? network, your submission, everything. His bala blue. Anyway, Mr. I, thanks for calling in, sir. Please talk to us. Good evening to you. How are you doing? Oh, sorry, oh, sorry. You <laughs> say you wanted to pick only one call. Uh, I'm <laughs> Mr. Kwachi. I don't know say we'll pick another one, but thank you so much for your consideration. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Elvis, I, I wish uh, I wish I know this uh, candidates in Edo. I would have made my own uh, contributions, yes. but I don't know them very well, apart from Olumide that uh, I knew when he was the MBA chairman. Uh, but what me, uh, uh, Miss Iris Finest, I, I hope I got her name very well. Mrs. Mrs. Said, Mrs. Yeah, Mrs. Mrs. Thank Although you. here in the US, they call everybody Miss. I don't know why even those that are married they call oh, them okay, okay. you know so yes so what she said about equity is important you know that sense of belonging is very important i was thinking labor party was actually going to get somebody from edo central you know but but uh, at least to give them sense of belonging just like the Igbo people are clamoring and other tribes that have not produced the president are clamoring that's the same way people from that side of uh, edo states will also be clamoring it will look like there is exactly. no person from there you understand so mm. i i actually like i wish i really wish that labor party has somebody from central it would have been good things coming together you know um that's it but one one thing i want to see if you give me one minute you know um outside what you had here is the interview today uh that ruben abati did about those two girls that Cyborg girls. escaped from Yes, and then their their father. The things I had in that place has depressed me for more than four hours. You know, so politicians trying to play politics has used the life of young people to play politics, and now the damage is permanent. That's why sometimes when you say somebody that did something bad and started doing good, I say if the if the damage is not permanent, the damage is permanent. Do you know that those girls will never recover from this thing for life? You saw what, what they said about what they do to them in school. And even for those ones that are still married to those Boko Haram people that they call repentance, no bright price was paid against their will. I, I, I've been depressed for more than four hours because it could be my sister. It could be my, my cousin. My brother, I'm still behind watching. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Mr. very much. Ike. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Okay, let, let's move on. Let me come back to the panel again. Let me go to uh, Black Panther. I got Black Panther. I bet talk to us for for once. Uh, Black Panther, who oh, you they support for a do state governorship candidate? You are just bala <laughs> blue. You are bala blue everywhere. Uh, I see be. bala blue now. I see bala <laughs> blue trying to bala blue the candidate so that I can <laughs> finally bala blue them on the floor. <laughs> I want to thank everybody who has spoken. Yeah, I want to thank uh, everyone here. Miss Irene. Oh, sorry, I'm using Miss. I'm used to Miss because it's Miss. Everybody who categorize everybody as Miss here, yeah. whether you're married or not married. Sorry about that, Mrs. I want to thank Madam Rita. I want to thank uh, uh, Mr. Two Ninja. 
and everyone out there commenting i want to thank you all that is you are showing sign of that you want you love your country and you want things to be done right and i will say you are patriots i will start from the, the bottom the edo state government edo state governorship 2024 i would like to say i have not yet made up my mind but i'm still doing my statistics i want to put my statistics very right because when i start tabling i'll table some facts here and then uh, those are some of the very strong foundation i'm going to put down the other stronger one but i'm going to table this one down because so that you can know the direction we are going but i've not made up my mind no matter what it is i've not made up my mind yet but i still need to look at the party philosophy look at the person how he can play the ball very well and look at the person and look at his mental capacity to see the problem and not just to govern is this person ready to serve or you want to come and govern I want to say right here, from the position, we have three prominent parties. We are taking prominent ones if the other ones arise. That is why I'm still holding on. I want to take it from the PDP side. Now, there is something we all, it is very good for us to say we are sitting, we are not partisan. We have, it is very comfortable for, for us to say it, that we're going to pick this person but for us to be well assured because nigeria edo state is in a very a very critical in a very critical position and it's an it is it is an abnormal situation and when you have an abnormal situation you have to try to go beyond looking at the person you have to go beyond a lot of factors now the governor of Edo State, we all came together. He's a member, he was a member of APC. They drove him out of APC and dropped his own godfather, drove him out and brought in that came to PDP. We accepted, we accepted to go along with him. We were shouting four plus four. Talk back. We we were doing that because he was cheated. And most of those people don't like cheating. So that was, we were blindfolded with our ideal, per se, quote and unquote. But we didn't realize that there was, there is another thing inside of them that they are coming here to do. They were not coming to serve. They were coming to do what? To govern, to be the Lord over those people that gave them the power to be there. Now, he said, I'll put the water storm project in my forward now. He said one thing that is going to do that. But this is a man that came with an ideology of the APC. He now landed in PC, PDP. That is why I said the Nigerian position, they never change. And they will never change until the trumpet sound. He came in. He did everything he wanted to do, all the charade he wanted to do. But when he started the power project, I was looking at him with every eye to see let him do it fair let him do it to convince me but you failed the water storm project let him sweep let him do it to convince me but he failed the road let him even try to do at least if not 200 routes he failed the economic state of edo state he failed the insecurity he failed if not for the obedient that shouted, he paid 100% because he was silent, but we were not silent. If we were silent, he would have shown us his red eye, how he's going to fail, and how he's going to sell our land to the intruders. Now, most of our mothers, some of them were taken down, some of, our, some of the generation of Egyptian state were taken down in the crisis. The security crisis, no statement was made. And this, the PDP said they will not impose somebody, they will refuse Godfatherism. And this man now has come forth with Godfatherism and has taken the right, the right of a deputy who was aspiring, he has a right to aspire, 
Let him compete. It's a free land. It's nobody's state. It's our state. He took the right of that person and trashed it. Now, the question is, do we want a dictator to bring in someone for us despite the person is coming from Edo South, where they, wherever on this Onatan path? Can, can somebody with, 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 with that kind of character that have not done anything, can, can, a, can, can, can he produce somebody who is more than himself? The answer is no, because Nigerian politicians, they bring in what they have inside of them and put it on display to us, and they will never change. Now, this man that they brought him, he says a businessman. Oh, hula balu, hula balu. I would like to state here, he's a businessman, but in what kind of environment? You people say he's a success. There's no, you see, successful businessmen show themselves out. They don't hide. They show themselves. What they do shows out, propagate them out. Not somebody now will now hide and he will come up. I did this, I did that. Nobody knows. But this man from the from the process, from the what I've been going through, I have seen that he was a he was like a bookkeeper for both the first governor, the, the, the former governor, the LLC, LLC, NLC chairman, and this very governor. He was a bookkeeper. That is how I can summarize him. But I'm still looking at him. I want to hear him out before I conclude on him. And the second one, the other man, I don't know, he's new. I'll give him an opportunity. But I'm still going to look at him, whether it's somebody that can disobey all laws that are contradicting the progress of Edo State. I'll see from his speech. Then I'll move to the labor man, Akpata. Akpata as a person, I have seen him serve. I have seen him serve and he breaks all laws. The laws of, of whatsoever law the, 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 the bar said, he breaks all the law. He breaks all the law and I've seen him spoken. And I, when he left, he left with something that he said, come and verify. If I do anything wrong, call me back. I am responsible. I have seen him serve. It's not all about uh, businessmen. I don't, I don't use that as a yardstick to define a person or define somebody that can serve because I'm looking at the person that can serve. That is my benchmark to see who can be on that, that uh, can support. So I've seen him serve, but that I've not made so my mind. So who can serve him. amongst them now? That is why I said I will listen to their word. There's one word I want to see from them. You know, a man cannot separate himself from the word he speaks. He cannot. If he's going to fail by his word, we will know. If he's going to fail, we will know by through his word. We will know. So I want to say here yeah, that that one might play then. But the risky issue, but the risky, as long as he has broken the law, he should go to jail. But I know they will not jail him because he has a lot of powers that are backing him. And come to think about it, a lot of us think we have to read the law. We have to interpret the law the way we know the law. The way I know the law is like this. Somebody who is practicing gay and who is a, a, a what do they call the other one? A cross-dresser. We should know the difference. Somebody who is a cross-dresser doesn't have that right to change his body formation. But he can put something in there to represent that figure. He doesn't have the right to go under the doctor's knife and stick and start doing surgery to change his natural status. That one has gone beyond a cross-dresser. It's now putting on a cloth of practicing what the law says. If you practice it, you go to two or three years jail time. And the law says, if you have an intention in doing it, if your intention has already pulled you in, and if you are aiding and abetting that status, you have already committed a crime. Now, that was what I said yesterday. 
let the medical track association let them go and do a proper evaluation of his, the body structure and everything about him i'm sure the law will catch up with him because he has done something he has transformed himself to the position where the law has stated and the law must take its course on him he has done what is called transgendering that he has transformed himself to a female folk he is not cross-dressing cross-dressing is the physical thing you put on that make you look that form as a cross-dresser but when you go beyond it and change your body structure the way you were created by the creator then you have positioned yourself not longer a cross-dresser but you have gone into that realm of practicing what the law is against so that is how i believe it and that is how i think i think the law should go if there is a medical proof to read that is why i said there must be a medical proof to that issue before we can do but any other laws that that they, they sued him for he has committed he said he's guilty he should go in for it but i know they will say pay money that's where that's because this guy a lot of our politicians you see there they are all practicing it but we don't know a lot of the big chops you see out there they are practicing it but we don't know that is why we are forging ahead to say we have to bring up a strong institution how we can how can we get institution if you don't get a foundation right you cannot get the institution right simple as abc and somebody said out here that oh we should not we should not bring out the, the issue of state policy will come in now Oh, we stay policing. If we would they put fire for kerosene, would they put kerosene inside them or water? All those talk. Look, if you want to take state policing out of democracy or federalism, you think you cannot have true federalism. You stick to what you still stick to unitary system of governance. Nobody is read. Nobody is matured enough to practice democracy but what you do you go into it and follow the due process then you can start practicing it and as you go along you will perfect it there is no law that said you must be mature enough to practice democracy or the rule of law there's no law so when people come out here to say oh we must we are not mature enough look your maturity is your ability it starts from the ability to obey the rule of law, to obey law, common law of nature. When you can do that, but man is positioned in a way they will disobey. That is why we bring on good structure that we put them in order. And if they refuse, they'll go to jail. But before we can have that, we have to have a conference or we go alongside with the 1999 Constitutional Compact, which all the lawyers the constitutional lawyers do you know what it is when the the, the convergence of constitutional lawyers our obers and kings our our tribesmen come together to speak well over 100 billion naira was spent and you said that is a rubbish thing then you are not advocating for a good nigeria right that you are advocating for something else maybe for this government so my brothers and sisters nobody is matured enough to practice democracy until you get in there and you start from somewhere a baby was born today he grew from crawling from crawling he started standing he staggered and fell and later he started walking that is how the process of democracy itself because i'm using human nature to 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 study it that is how you build up yourself and become strong if we have good institute if you have a good institution and institution because whenever you come together and make a law everybody's bound to obey it and there is one thing about policing if you have policing you won't have your kidnapping because the job of it the job of the police is to go for these kidnappers it's not the job of the military it's the job of the police if we have the state police that our own tribesmen are involved they they will have the 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 the, the, the backing of the people to go after them because it, this is their land there is no there's no way in the world that you don't see some politicians using the state apparatus to propagate even in america they still use it 
but they, are, they, they know how to, they use it, they catch them, they jail them. But there's nowhere in the world they don't use it. But they use it in a different dimension. So if you, if you are using that as a yardstick to avoid state policing, then, my brother, the kidnapping will continue. The unruly behavior of the federal police will continue because you cannot stay in a, in a federal status and somebody stay in Abuja to control the, the, the security of a state. How it goes, does he know it? No, because the person there is the father to all. He cannot know everything. Then if you want to say they shouldn't have state police, then we shouldn't have governor. Because you said governor, you are contradicting yourself by saying governor is the head of security in the state. Whereas it's just a, 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 a word, but in practically it's not. So what are we, that is why the question comes, what do we really need in Nigeria? When we are talking about democracy, a lot of us need to go and study nations. They were not mature enough, but they went in, they practiced it and they perfected it. So what are we, what are we arguing? Like I told you, Mr. Najawad, I said cells have been built in Europe in everywhere to contradict us that are fighting for a constitutional reform, electoral reform. They will come up here and tell you that it is man that is the problem, not the institution, not the law. It is man that we have a lot of laws. Me and you have not sat down. My father and your father have not sat down to make a law that we can say my daddy was there, my tribe man was there. Then you want me to obey something that a man, look, for you writing a constitution for a nation, that is a, that is a sabotage and it's a criminal offense. People have not known it. For you to sit down and bring a constitution out of you and put it on our head and say this Nigerian constitution, Abu Salami should be arrested because he has committed a crime against the state. That's a crime. That's a crime. That's a crime. Two minutes. Two minutes. So, Thank you. my brothers and sisters, we should call Abu Salami. Let us cry to the world. Let them call him to tell us why did he bring that constitution to us? Why didn't he bring the 1963 that gave us the power to even say we want a referendum? Look, my brother and sister, it is because of the referendum in that one, that is why they can't go back to region. Not that regional governance failed. The difference between the food federalism and regional is that you are not functioning as a, a state. Regional, you have a group that gather themselves together to say be together. But the state, we are being divided. They want us, they wanted us to be divided and they give us a name so that they can perpetrate their evil. The regional governance did not fail. It did not fail. The military came in to throw it down. That was what happened. Any other thing was perpetrated, orchestrated by the politicians then to have their way from the north and down inside. That is why they had to give us a name. You are from Sokoto. You are from this. You are the Sokoto state. You are from so 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 Edo state. That is why they gave us a name. Let us stick either with the regional or let us go with what the comfort is. Why are they, the question is, why is why are people against we bringing that constitution? Is it because it will put us in a line where we can get to Eldorado, where we can get what we want, where we can fight for our freedom? Is it because of that? I want to say something again. Look, my brother, apartheid is taking place in Nigeria right now. And the people we, we have, Nigerians we have lost in the north and every other part is more than what is happening in Gaza. If we don't understand, Nigeria have no right, no, no not right. Nigeria have no, 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 nothing to go out there and say, ah, we support Pakistan. That is what we call religion's manipulation. Because we are having appetite in our country. We need to cry out for support of other countries to support us so that we can have a way forward in it. We need it because, because South Africa did it. We supported them and they got through it. So we need support, external support, so that we can get through it. But we need to do one thing that we need to organize ourselves because Nelson Mandela did not give up. We are organized. Nelson Mandela spoke word 
violent war because he was fighting for his freedom. So when everyone of us come here to speak about, oh, I want I, I, the constitutionality, sovereignty, we are not talking about sovereignty now. We are talking about rights of the people is taken from them. And the government is standing as a god over us, which is inappropriate and non well placed. So if you want to talk about true federalism, talk about it. If you want to talk about the situation on, on, on ground now, you talk about it because everybody is feeling it. Talk about the situation. Don't come and tell us the constitutionality. We are in an abnormal state. Nobody is taking your sovereignty. You talk on the do's and don'ts of what we are having on ground. Simple. If anybody, anybody has the right to talk, but you have to speak on what is on ground. That is what, because what you are speaking eloquently, oh, the, the sovereignty of the nation, that is eloquent speaking. We have gone beyond eloquent speaking. We are fighting for the survival of this nation. That is it. So you speak on it. Don't bring simple factors and start throwing us around sovereignty and uh, Nigeria is a nation. Who told you it's a nation? It's a nation. You have been you, more than one point something million is is uh, they have been taken down. That is apartheid. Who, who is who is doing it? Our own people against our own people. You that is what we are talking about. We want to put something down to take them out. That is Africa has to do it. Nigeria has to do it. Thank you, Nigeria Watch. Thank you very much, my brother Black Panther. Uh, that was a good submission right there in terms of uh, the constitution. I really do uh, concur with you on that. But in terms of uh, those states, I don't know what to say because you are still part of the people that is still currently pending. So we are waiting. Remember that you guys have a voice on this platform. So a lot of people are depending on you, waiting for you to pass uh, your support to any of the candidates. So whenever you guys are ready, no wala, we are here. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, Jaja, for the super chat. God bless you, sir. I really do appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone, right there on the comment section. Thank you for just coming in. I'm going to go bless you now. Uh, let's move on. We have two people just coming in. I wanted to give my final submission. But let's uh, give opportunity for them to talk to us. Uh, let me go to Oga Consign first. Oga Consign indicated for the link then. Oga Chris called over Trump. Well, thank you very much sir, for coming in. Good evening to you. You have eight minutes. Please talk to us. Uh, good evening, Dr. Evans. Yes, sir. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Eight you minutes. It remains, it remains six minutes for your eight minutes. So. Oh, I think it's now 15 minutes. Okay. <laughs> that to get, some people get 15 minutes here, bro. <laughs> no, no, no. People will get 15 minutes. Now people will start the broadcast. No, like okay. people will start with us, they get 15 minutes, not be not be not be people who the way they come in. In fact, I suppose give you five, five minutes, Seth. No, you are just coming yeah. in. Um yeah. I hope the whole panel is thank God bless all of you for coming. Like I said yesterday, anybody that comes here shows that you have the interest of Nigeria at heart. Only that the those that are ruining Nigeria. Are the one that doesn't have the interest of Nigeria at heart. It's very, it's very, very unfortunate. We are not in a, we are in a country that is not working. Everybody wants it to work, but those on top doesn't want it to work. They don't want to change anything in that country that will help the country to work. They don't want to change the situation of the police. They want to change the situation of the military. They want to, they don't want to change the situation of the civil servants. Nobody can go um, have a living wage of uh, 30,000 and a person will work good, you know? It's too bad. Everything is in shambles, education, everything. But I want to start with the first video you made about uh, the guy that was talking about how his one, his boots, one full of, full of name, man told him about uh, how the North and the Yorubas are conspiring to deny Igbos their right and also make the North to have the, pre the presence to reach, on, to reach to them. Well, it's very, very unfortunate. Whoever is holding somebody is also holding himself. If all this, well, I see, well, I know when the country 
people were coming together to be in that government, everything was moving. Even if we check, I think this is about these people who say they say they are leaders of Yoruba and the, uh, and the outsiders of Fulanese. They are only there to siphon money, so nothing will happen to them. If you check the history of Nigeria, people who have been ruling, when the Igbos were there, it's difficult to see an Igbo man siphoning money of Nigeria, eating money in the presidency, that side. It's difficult. And the, all these things are about because the country is being ruled by impunity. Nobody is being held account, held accountable. We know those have stolen Nigerian money, stolen Nigerian money to stupor. We know them. So all these things of uh, this book are not ruled. If Yoruba bring out their what they have in their shelves, Igbos bring out what they have in their shelves, the other um, Edo people, uh, other, other tribes bring out what they have in their shelves. I think Nigeria would go far. But this disunity, this hatred, and the worst of it is this, it's a conspiracy. It's like when uh, what the Brutus and the Cashew uh, decided to conspire to, to buy uh, uh, Julius Caesar. That is what it is. They are conspiring against the Igbos, and we are seeing it. Since this election, what happened since this election? Igbo houses have been burned. Uh, even those uh, Igbo houses have been, uh, have been, yeah, Igbo houses are, they don't, Igbo houses have been bring down, brought down. The God give one story, one, one excuse and the other. They don't want Igbo people to have any good post, even though, even if they're having good, the post, it's not me. But when things are done normally in a very good way, Things will work. Everybody will, if, if, the, if the place is peaceful, everybody is working with one heart. Honestly, we move forward. Honestly, we will be more than even, 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 even America. Because Nigeria have talents. Nigeria have. But when you are conspiring against them, not only Igbos now, because the guy even said they take us, even though they if all the whole people from, from a door down to Bayelsa to everywhere, they regard them as Igbos. And those people are not going to rule, only the only Yoruba and the, you know. How do they think other tribes can, can help the country to move to, to, to progress? They won't. They won't help, they won't help the country to progress. So that's why we are still in this circle, moving round, 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 round. Nobody's going forward. The worst of it is this. Conspiracy is a is a is a very, very bad thing. And that's why they don't want to release in Nandekano. Nandekano, is it prosecution now? Is it are they prosecuting him? Are they trying him? That's what people have been saying all along. This is not trial. If you say somebody because you don't go and do this, that's, that means it's no more trial, it's prosecution. How can you prosecute somebody you have not, you have not convicted? How can you prosecute somebody whom you didn't find any, as, didn't find guilty? That is what, that, I don't know. I don't know really. You see, we believe that the South, like Yoruba, Igbos, and all the rest. We are together before. We are moving forward before. What is worse that some people go and sabotage? It's like Yoruba elders or leaders or some of the wicked people go and they conspire against against uh, the other other minority tribes to move with these Fulanis. We know what the Fulanis have been doing all along. Fulanis, there are, there are many good Fulanis, but Fulanis are terrorists in nature. That's the problem. If they are, they are good like others, no other tribe in Nigeria are terrorists in nature than the Fulanis. That is why people call their names every time. No group, no region, no, no group, no, no tribe in Nigeria are the same way they, they are. There are good people everywhere. Also, there are bad people everywhere. But when some people are terrorists in nature, it's bad. And they are dominating, they are doing whatever they like, and nobody is heading to accountable. A country doesn't run like that. When people say they want to go, they want to go. Not because they want to go. Everybody wants to be together. But when things are not working out, what do you want other people to do? You can't have 10 children and they, you're treating five or six bad. And you say you are the leader or you are the owner of this, you know? Anything, all your people are corrupt. Whatever they do, nobody hold them accountable. Eh? The money, we don't see. The, oh, my God, you know? So all these things cannot help Nigeria. 
it will Nigeria. If people say Nigeria will not move for us, it's like somebody is cursing Nigeria. Nobody is cursing Nigeria. But the people who are winning Nigeria, the one cursing Nigeria, they don't want that country to move forward. I look at uh, since this uh, even this new administration came in, how many people have been fired? How many people have been kidnapped? How many? It's very, very painful. Very sometimes you, we, we don't sleep. You, you, when I think about all this, what's happening in Nigeria, you start to blame yourself. I, why did God make you to be a Nigerian? To be in this kind of situation? Some people are today in abroad. They don't want to come back anymore to their country. How can somebody stay uh, abroad for many years and he, with the time for retirement, you do not like to come back to his country? Some of those, they didn't come back to their country. When they are sick, they still come back to abroad again. You still see them again. You'll be wondering, what is happening? How can a country behave like that? How can a country be like that? A country is supposed to run with good people. If Nigeria today have good leaders that will push the country forward, I, I bet you, they've all the whole people in abroad, many people in abroad will come back. If the, the security situation is good, no people in abroad will come back. Today, the, the country that releases, uh, what they call it, a, a, a bandit, release terrorists, and then arrest the, arrest the, um, arrest activists and arrest journalists. You know, what do you call that country? It's very shameful. At a whole, a whole country, when Nigeria, Nigeria was moving forward before, the time of 70s, even though it was not in a fast place, but at least there was a bit love that time. There was happiness everywhere. We are together. Today, to, today now, this man, what, what is his name? This guy have a, 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 a what is it, um, Allen. Now they are saying no. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an Igbo, 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 Igbo this thing. But why? Why? Because they see Chicago, they wear this thing. But you forgetting that national team wears, uh, wears the Babarega. National team wears a, a, a full and uniform. But then nobody complains. In the other time, this guy that have a, uh, used to remember that have uh, this thing, have a uh, um, phone. Uh, I think what is that? Um, the line. They is use that ayor bad this thing to make it to make advert, but nobody complain. Why must say this everything about Igbo is a problem in Nigeria? Then he was leave them to go. You don't want them to go. Then you want what you want them to do? You want to to, to go to, to another another war? How what the, what will that war achieve for you? If you people if you do the Nigeria going to another war, what will it achieve for us? It cannot achieve anything for us. There's nothing like peace. In, peace is very important in life, even in your family, even in anywhere you. Peace is very, very important. And without peace, you can't move forward. Peace brings happiness. Peace brings love. Peace brings um, progress. If we don't have peace, we cannot move anywhere. We can't. You see, this issue of uh, this, uh, go, go, uh, the, the, the governors will turn state police to instrument. Yeah? One, one, minute left, uh, one minute left, huh? One minute. Four, four, eh? One minute, one. Oh, I thought it was four. Governors, <laughs> the, problem, <laughs> the problem is, if you know, I concord with that man a bit, like a fallen. You see, it's good to have police, uh, state police. It's very, very good. But because of impunity in Nigeria, that is the problem. That man is saying that. You see, and again, the state governors have not even paid salary off there. Even the, even the federal government that is having the state, these police people, they are not even paying them their salary. They, even their uniform, police uniforms are being bought by police people. So if they come to the states also, why the people are, are clamoring for this police of for, for, for state police is because the Fulanis are armed. Why not disarm them? If they disarm them today, I don't think any state will, uh, will call for police the, uh, state police. That is the problem. Things are not working. You can't uh, make some people to be the first choice of the country or to be the owners of the country or to be uh, 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 untouchable in the country. And you think that others will be quiet. You think that things will move forward. It will not. That is the problem. Let us let the, these all people. Let why why can't we say even say let us come together? When you say come together, the Fulanis don't want they don't, they don't want to hear about that. Come together. Let's talk about uh, the structure. They don't come and the certain leaders. I don't know. They become those. Uh, they become like the the the, the, the vegetable. Eh? Why should you take take care take care of this and give to another people? That is the problem. Why can't they force them? If you, do, if you don't want to do this, okay, we're not going to do anything again in this country. That's what they're supposed to do. Let us come together, give the, give the, give the house as an everyday job, at least, a, at least a, a month. We, if that's a month, they pay everybody's not coming together. Let us come together and fashion how the country move forward. Let us come together and have a new constitution. Let us come together and see, even if it's not a referendum, even if it's not what, at least let us come together and talk.
Let the, the certain leaders, let them stand up. They're not, they're not fools. They're not useless. Let them stand up and help their people. They should stand up and say, give will give a month or two months to the president. Let every, 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 every region come, come together. Let us bring our people. Let us make a, an, an, another constitution and they, so that how the country can move forward. They can't be saying, a full and a full and a full and With the leaders in South, let them stand up. Let them stand up. Because taking their duty to, to the full and is, is where the problem is. They can't be saying uh, the Fulanis are releasing terrorists, releasing their bandits, releasing everything, and they they they, they, they start to keep quiet. Now the the army has occupied the occupied the occupied the uh, delta. Tomorrow they are going to occupy Beesa. The next day they are, go are going to occupy Imo State. The next day they are going to occupy Anam uh, 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 Anambra, and the people are keeping quiet. Are we not human beings? Are they south? Are they useless? Are they stupid? The leaders there, who, who are, I don't know. They should give this ultimate. Come together, let us come together, let us organize the country, how it can work for everybody. Even this will be going around and going around. I what Obi is doing is good, but then, even if there's election tomorrow, Obi, even if Obi win, he will not, they will not put him there. I said this earlier before. Why the East, people say some of the Eastern leaders were not supporting Obi before. They were supporting, but they know that even if Obi win that day, they will not give him. Obi didn't win, did they give him? No. The same thing, even if there's election again in four years, in four years or ten years, that even any most any any person from the east, they will not they will not give him. So that is why I'm calling all these all these our leaders in the south, both Yoruba, both uh, El Edo, both Bayesa, everybody, let them come together. If the Fulani is going to kill us, let them kill us. If they're going to buy us, let them buy us. But let us come together. Tell them, this is what we want. We have to restructure the country. The time has come for us to restructure this country. The time has come. Our children have to go to school. Our children have to go, have good, uh, good, good education. Our children have to good, have good, uh, good hospitals. If you restructure the country today, either back to the regional or back, the things can move. We know when things are moving. When the Yorubas were in, in cocoa production, in the east were in, 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 in uh, uh, Palm Island and all the rest. The north were in, 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 agri, in agri, agriculture. Things were moving. People were happy. People were enjoying. But now we are like a cake people. We are not like no more country. Me, I don't understand. If you come here, ask me where I'm from. I don't say I'm a Nigerian because it's very shameful what is happening there. People, everybody knows what is okay, happening. Okay, thank there. you, Mr. Kosa. It's, it's very, very shameful. Okay, thank you, my brother. Thank you. God bless you. Thank, thank you, sir. You still managed to take me go that 15 minutes. So, oh, thank you. you. God bless you. <laughs> if you give, give more, uh, uh, you are see, 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 no problem. No problem. Uh, you are generous today. You. God bless you. All right. Thank you, sir. God bless you. All right. Let me give the same minutes for uh, Oga Chris so that we can have a final submission. Oga Chris, it's good to have you on the show. Good evening to you, sir. Please talk to us. Uh, good evening, sir. Mr. Nigerian. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you, sir. Ah, uh, Mr. Njaros, thank you very much for the opportunity to contribute to um, this national discourse. And bef uh, before I start, um, it is in order to appreciate the people that work behind the scene and in front of the scene to make this uh, broadcast um, successful every day. And number one on the list is Mommy Diaspora. Mommy, thank you so much for all you do. Um, I wish you a very beautiful weekend. Um, Madam Irene Finest, Good evening to you and every other admin in the comment section. And my co-panelists, I say good evening to all of you. Uh, Ninja Watch, uh, to Ninja, it's good to have you here. Although I barely agree with you on most of your political views. Black Panther, beautiful submission. Mr. Concern, welcome. Um, retired dance, hmm. beautiful and hot, Woto Woto. Well, um, I'll just dive into the issues for the day. And Mr. Nanjawa, to your humble self, I say thank you very much for the opportunity. I think the first thing is that um, the issues surrounding the protest um, in Abuja or wherever that was, whether Kaduna or whatever, is a constant reminder to all of us that um, the way the country is, we are just one Nigeria on paper. We don't really consider ourselves as one Nigerians, because you cannot tell me, um, considering the the kind of carnage that has been going on in other parts of the country, these guys are there, they refuse to say anything. 
but you are protesting for people that are how many kilometers away from you, you are protesting for them and apart from the 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 unfortunate incidents that happen to those people every other indices of life they are better off than you I was in a church when one of the pastors said we should pray for Ukraine. I was like, what is this one talking about? Pray for Ukraine, Ukraine that's a lot better than you. So back to the uh, to the protest in Abuja or Kaduna, I think, um, you see, if only we as Nigerians, we can fight for each other like this, you know, our politi uh, politicians, our political leaders, they will never ever take us for granted. If only they know we can come together as a united front, as a united force. They know that an injury to one becomes an injury to all. They will never ever try what they are doing. But they know that whenever they do whatever they are doing, there's always one section of the country that will support them. For example, if they do some things in the, in the south, you see people in the north applauding them. They do something in the north, people in the south applauding them. So there's just this constant division. Imagine the mine in Bielsa. If you go to the northern space, they were all praising the military for what they did. And this has been the tool that these politicians, they've been using to perpetrate their evil in the society. I think this is one of the very rare um, um, situations where I uh, always uh, support to Niger because he has always advocated that um, we don't exhibit the powers that we have. We have not really hold our politicians to account. That is why they keep doing what they are doing. So, well, that is just that for that. But it's a constant reminder that we might think we are one Nigeria, but the truth is that we are as divided as divide itself. Then Blank Patari, we are talking about the constitution of the Salami. I yeah, enjoy your passion, but we have to understand that Abdul Salami himself, when I interviewed him on uh, Arise TV, he told Nigerians that, okay, this was just like three, three years ago. He said he understood that he gave us the constitution that we've been complaining about. But he asked uh, the journalists, the people that were interviewing him, he asked them a simple question that, okay, even if he gave them the constitution, did he also write that they should not change the constitution if they want to? He asked another pertinent question that what has held them back from changing the constitution? In fact, he went as far as saying the confab they did in 2014 that Jonathan who pretended over, that did he do anything to stop the confab? And after the confab, why was he not signing to law? That if he had done something wrong in, during the... Um, in giving Nigeria the 1999 constitution, but Nigeria, they had over 20 years to make that correction, and they have refused to because people are benefiting from it. Yes, we can argue that and the constitution itself was skewed in such a way that it's almost impossible to, to change. It's almost in, impossible to, to kind of um, review. But no matter how you look at it, uh, it's not casted in stone. If the people are willing enough, especially the southern politicians, if they are ready to draw the first palm oil, I'm sure they can be able to do something. And just like the last speaker, Mr. Konsan was talking, and um, he made re reference to, what was his name again? Uh, Shakespeare's uh, Julius Caesar. You know, when uh, Cassius approached uh, Brutus in Julius Caesar, that they should do that, and stuff they did against uh, Julius Caesar. Now, um, Brutus was giving an excuse that, you know, Julius Caesar is a strong man, this, that, you know, we are not, and Cassius replied him, and I quote, he said, the fault, whole Brutus, is not in our stars, but it is in us because we are underlings. I think that's exactly the situation in Nigeria. The fault, is not in the Fulanis or the Alsas or the Northern people or the fault is actually in us because we are not determined enough to change the status quo. The fault is in us because we enjoy the corruption, we enjoy the kind of things the constitution gives us. The fault is in us because the constitution, whenever we are in power, the constitution allows us 
to abuse power the way we can. The fault is in us because we are greedy to do the right thing. Because you can, is it not clear? Before people get to power, everybody is complaining about the constitution, but immediately they get there. Nobody talks about the constitution any longer. Just imagine the people from Labour Party, the people that you ordinarily think will go there to effect changes. But they've got, they have gone there, and all of a sudden, the constitution is no longer a problem again. Imagine Tinubu himself. He is somebody that has spent all his years fighting for constitutional review, regional government. That was actually why he and his Nadeko people, he went to exile. He went to exile because of this fight for regional government, military junta, fight against making Nigeria, making the constitution, the people's constitution. Now he came back, became the, even while he was the governor, he championed states, the states, so that the state will have their powers. He even went as far as daring Obasanjo. He created local government. Obasanjo withdrew his allocation for four years. But look at him there today. Now he's no longer talking about the constitution. So the fault, like Keisha told Brutus, is not in our stars. It is in us because we are weaklings, because we don't want to do the right thing, because we are not ready to make that change. Democracy is never offered on a platter of good. You have to fight for it. You have to get it. You have to take it. You have to go the extra mile. Look at every nation on that. There is no one that has achieved their democracy on a platter of good. They have to go for it. It is power. The same thing with power. Power is not given. Even in the most advanced democracy, you have to take power. Imagine what Trump was about to do in the US in that last election. But the institution has to take this power away from him. The institution stood against him and the institution they succeeded. And if you look across the continent, everywhere that there has been change of power, even if it is not violently, but you have to take it. You don't sit down and expect it to be delivered in your lap. It doesn't work that way. I'm talking about canon. It's another reminder of how divided we are, of how deceitful we are, of how unserious we are, of how unprepared we are, of how unfair we are, of how we don't have a definition of who is a Nigerian, what is citizenship. It is lacking in the setting of nine because if you talk about citizenship it's a concept that bestow almost equal rights on everybody if you say i am a citizen of great britain it means you enjoy everything every britain every briton will enjoy irrespective of which part of britain you come from I'm talking about citizenship by birth, not by a, a naturalization now. But in Nigeria, that is what is lacking. Who is a Nigerian? How do you defend a Nigerian? If there's actually the concept of citizenship, you wouldn't see people people from, uh, uh, especially the Katsinas, these people that have uh, boundaries with the Nigerian Republic. They see themselves. They see people in the Nigerian Republic as more or, or less their citizens than than Nigerians in the southern part of the country. It's because we lack that concept of citizenship. If not that, why the double standard against Namdi Kano? Because he's not seen as a citizen. That is why the state that is supposed to protect his fundamental human rights has become the instrument of abuse of his human rights. Imagine when the Igbo, Igbo politicians, the northern Igbo politicians, there's this prominent Igbo man, he led a team to Buhari because it's easy to say the Igbos are not doing enough. There was one man, he was the last person remaining of his generation in the 70s. He led a team to Buhari and he said, please, can you release Nandi Kanu on bail for me? Release him to me before he died because the guy was very old then. I think it's two years ago, and Buhari told him that, well, I know you are an elder statement, I've listened to you, but you know I cannot do anything outside the law. If the court, whatever the court says about his case, I'm going to obey. That was what Buhari told that elder statement. And 
Some months later, the man actually died. Now, what did the court say? The court now delivered their judgment, and they said Nam the Kano should be released. But of course, the Buari, the lying Buari that promised to the satanic Buari that promised to to release Nam the Kano refused to listen to the law, refused to listen to court, and he promised that he was going to do whatever the court says, but he refused to. And as usual, nothing happened because the concept of citizenship didn't apply to Namdi Kanun. And he today is still in court. He went, he won all the cases from the lowest court to the highest court. To the extent the Supreme Court gave him judgment. Thirty minutes left, sir. Okay, that's even talking about the bail itself. It's not even supposed to be so. Because this man in the first place, the trial itself is supposed to be null and void. But yet, the lower court wouldn't listen to what the Supreme Court says. And it's still in the same country that the military, they are releasing members of Boko Haram and they said it's, and they cannot do otherwise because it is the court that ordered them to do so. Again, another case of double standard. I'll just quickly gallop to the Edo State um, election. You see, um, it's very clear for me. I don't even need to think about it twice. For APC, it's a no-no. For PDP, for obvious reasons, it's a double no-no. So the only person I'm left with is Akbata and the others. And from common sense, I've looked at Akbata's profile. He has been able to serve in the highest echelon of wherever he belonged to. And he performed well. And the guy has stood against Buhari, like I've said on this platform many times. And the guy left 1.5 billion naira when he was the NBA chairman. He even broke, it's, it's two panther that said that he broke all known convention for somebody that has no his son to become an NBA chairman. It's not an easy feat. So it means he has the grit, he has the tenacity to do that. Then as for Madam Irene Finance, I completely disagree with you. Because if you don't play party politics and you play regional politics, I don't think there's any difference there. Because let's take, for example, if we even want to base it on region, let's just assume that um, it was not discovered that Mahmoud, INEC chairman, is from Edo North. And we also discovered that, uh, sorry, Edo Central. We also discovered that El Rufai is also from Edo Central. And both of them were given, one was given a PC ticket and one was given PDP ticket, and you have them to contest against Tolumi de Akbata. Are you going to actually pick between uh, um, uh, the INEC chairman and the Rufai, all because it is uh, the time for Edo Central? Now, when they talk about regional, um, when, when they talk about rotation, rotation has to be with the concept of the best candidate. You see, this is how they are bastardized quota system and they make it look as if it's a very bad thing. Quota system is supposed to be good, it's supposed to be an affirmative action to carry the weak and everybody along. The same thing happens in Australia where they have to give special quotas to the aborigines. Even in Iceland, there's a part of Iceland where they give special quota to some, some natives of Ice, these Icelandic people that they don't really like education, they just like fishing. So this set of people, they never pay a dime for application fee to universities. So when they are doing regional policies, it means that you have to bring your best. If there was any better candidate than Ulumi De Akbata from Edo Central, I will wholeheartedly go with that candidate. But as long as it is these two people that they can present to us, for now, the way it stands, Ulumi De Akbata stands shoulder high above these two other guys, if not for anything, but for by association. There's no way, there's no way we can separate the drum from the drummer. Because we've said this before, Lumi Diak, but uh, 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 what was his name? Aswen Igodalu. He may have all the credentials, but the baggages are much. Of course, uh, 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 the senator from Edo Central, from APC, his association, we, we, we have seen what the APC people can do. So the earlier we avoid those things now, the better. If they had it, it has nothing to do with that, but it has nothing to do with the Labour Party. 
It's just comparing the three people, putting them on the same pedestal and seeing where they are coming from. It is clear, crystal clear, that Tulumi Akbata is a, a better candidate than these two other people. But having said that, I'm not going to be the man piece of Ulumi Diak, but he has to. He has to come out and address the people. He has to do his own work by himself. So um, in summary, I think um, we all have a duty like we've been doing to make Nigeria a better place for all of us. We have to fight for citizenship. And I wouldn't end this without referring to uh, Mr. Femi Falana. It's just laughable when he said uh, the governors will control state police. I, I don't know. I don't know what uh, the man is turning to. It's completely laughable and uh, it staggers my imagination that somebody of that uh, of, of that repute, somebody uh, that is... Mr. Sure. Chris, yeah. just one second. That was why when I called him, I said, I don't know where Falano is coming from. He has to come and address himself very well and argue it out to the constitutional lawyers and to the Nigerian nation why he made a clause. He put a clause in having state police. Has it not yes. been done before? Yeah, for me, I know where it's coming from. It's not difficult to know. It's not even difficult to know. Femi Fala now with all he knows, just like I said, it staggers my imagination that with all his... Um, um, legal sagacity for him to have made that statement that is simply unscrupulous from him it's just politics that we play every day every time it's only gani fawaini that stood the test of time that fought for the people he was consistent all through i've made this known to all of us before go and listen to the to the debate between femi falan and barista michael zekome and you'd be surprised at the stand of Femi Fall. It was on national television. To the extent people called channels, was it channels of uh, Arise TV, that they have to bring the two of them back again. They had to come back the following day and continue the debate. That was how strong it was. Why the irreputable, uh, irrepressible by Mr. Michael Zekome stood for the people. Femi Fall and now choose to go the way of the government. So I'm not surprised what he's doing today. Like they said in politics, stupidity is not a handicap. It is a tactic that they use to de deceive the people and keep the people perpetually downtrodden. Mr. Nanjawa, good evening. Bro, bro, let, let me say this. Do you know that Falano is a politician? All right. Of course, it's, it's obvious. That's because he vied for that. governorship. He was an aspirant for a governorship in uh, Ekiti State, and he lost. That, that's why I said yes. I'm not surprised. That's why I said in politics, stupidity is not uh, a handicap. It's um, a tool that they use to keep the people perpetually down through. Okay. Once again, Mr. Nanja, good evening thank and thank you for the opportunity. God bless you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chris. Mr. Harris, I would like to respond uh, to Mr. Chris. No, on your final submission now, on your final submission, of course you will. Um, okay. We're going to keep to time now for final submission so that we can end the show. We're already uh, above four hours now. So let's give our final submission, my wonderful people. I'll come to uh, Madam Iris, uh, sorry, Madam Rita. Madam Rita, please give us your final submission for minutes. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Elvis. Um, what I have to say is um, I would never support the double standards. And why do I say that? In reference to um, the arrest and uh, the conviction of um, Bob the Idris, aka Bob Risky, is double standard. Because even if the law is doing what they're supposed to do, even if they're doing what they're supposed to do, right? When it becomes selective, it has to be set out. There's nothing, I don't believe personally, there's nothing like saying, at least we should say, oh, they are doing the right thing. So it wouldn't be like it's every time that the law is seems to be doing the right thing that we condemn them. Listen, there's a difference between when you are criticizing, it's not out of hate. It's for you to get better. If there is double standard in any processes, that no, it is not even a teachable moment for anybody or even the younger generation because the younger generations are watching. 
I can never support double standard. And if you are someone who is hypocritical, I will call you out. And I expect to be called out as well when it seems I'm being hypocritical. So if the federal government now is arresting or prosecuting or making a, a, a show of Bob Risky, it's double standard. This past weekend, are they telling me that in Lagos there was no, there was not one big part. Just go to Instagram. Just type any big celebrity name. Just type it there. And you see what's going on. What Bob, Bob Risky did, the only difference is that is he's a guy and he's just as a woman or he did some body change. But every other thing in regards to the money spending and all the show off every weekend, it happens in Nigeria, especially Lagos. So that's double standard and I must call it out. I would not say, oh, because they're doing something they're supposed to do, but it's double standard. So how is that teachable to a child? How is that teachable to the citizens that are watching? How? We must call it out. It's not about the hate or, or praising them. There is double standard and also applies to the law. The law is selective, and that's double standard again. So that's all I have to say for now. And um, in regards to a dual state election, like I would say, and I think I got, got this quote from somebody, I can't remember who right now. He said, a thief, a thief would never, ever bring a reverend father as a substitute for your problems. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mother Rita. God bless you. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, I'll go to Naja. Please give us your final submission for me. Mm, thank you, uh, Naja. Well, thank you for having me. Um, <clears throat> regarding um, double standards, um, yes, there, there is double standards. And uh, one can call that double standard out while still accepting that law still needs to be um, obeyed. It's not contradictory. It's still because in the end, what we want is a law, um, a law and order, and a society where the rule of law um, means something. Because there is this idea that when people um, people cross the line from calling out double standards to actually saying they should not even go ahead and prosecute the person that has been um, arrested for a potential um alleged crime so we can't mix both it's, it's true there is double standard and in any in any system you create in the world you always have these problems to an extent and, and in the case of nigeria is very acute that is true so we can keep it at that um regarding um what falan has said about police state police that is one of the areas that I've actually highlighted before that could be a problem for us. Um, we can't just say, oh, let's just go state police, going to solve the problem, or uh, break up the country is going to solve the problem. The idea that that is going to solve the problem is not taking into account not only the country, not taking into account the, so, the surrounding that you live in. The, the, fund the, the fundamentals are the problem. It's not the the configuration you create. We've created so many configurations, and this is where we still are. Um, if you, the state police, why people are talking about state police, they are assuming that when you have state police, you're going to get a police um, that is actually going to be more accountable to uh, the people uh, close to them. It's not necessarily the case. In the end, you, 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 if your state is insecure, what is going to happen? You will still do what you need to do nationally. You make your security apparatus strong. If you cannot make it strong, forget it. You are wasting your time. The way we have abandoned our national status um if you we can if we do that with our states too we are still going to get the same result nothing is going to change it might even be worse and the idea that um because if you make things regional or states is going to it never does solve problem what i've found in society is that people are divided when they want to be they can be divided in one family of three and they all have different opinions and very vicious too so that tells you sooner or later somebody that has a level of uh, reason has to say enough we have to, no matter how bad the, the divisions are, we have to find a way to work together. Because in that part is the only path to progress. Fighting each other doesn't lead to anywhere. And if you want progress, you have to go for it. You have to, the people have to pressure the, the government to do the right thing by them. Like when people criticize this uh, student loan stuff, I think it's been updated now. From what I gather, some people seem to be happy with the student loan, um, uh, this thing, uh, current one that is coming through, at least better than the previous one. What does that tell you? 
that if people frown at something, the government do pay attention. They they do when they do see that okay, this is rubbish, and they are not going to get any kind of kudos for doing it. They, then they then they will change their mind and go and do the right thing. The same thing, and I don't know how we can come here and say, oh, let's just I forget for it will be uh, this in uh, 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 now beginning to be freed and all the rest. But the stuff that is far more dangerous to the entire nation, like security, we don't actually have any campaign for it. Not one. Not one campaign for security. And we have to ask ourselves why that is the case. I'll leave it there. Thank you. Okay. Um, Oga uh, to Naja. Thank you very much. Uh, but we talk about security every day on this platform. So uh, at least you should applaud us. We are trying. Uh, how many platforms on social media or social media platform that is campaigning for anything anyway? How many? Because I know you are everywhere. So you, you are <laughs> no better. It's, it's not hashtag, now. It's not hashtag. Nobody, we don't have make it a campaign. And I think That's what I'm saying. Have you seen any platform doing it at all? I'm the only one doing it personally. Everywhere I go, that's where what I do. No you platform. See, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Mr. So that, I, I, I think I think I know one platform that will be willing to do it. I just see I know one platform that will be willing to do it. So and I, I think almost the, the others that I know in the Nigerian space that I go to anyway, they will be willing. They will not have anything against a campaign on that on that front. No, for me, I don't have issue with any campaign. But what I'm saying is that if we have lots of people putting out this kind of campaign, I think we'll go far. But relying on one particular person to do everything is not easy. Thank you. Very much. Yes, sir. You see, you see, what people are they are they are not educated Nigerians, right? They are saying that, oh, if we form state police, then the federal police is 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 more or less not existing. Because federal police has a role, state police has a role. And they all have their limitations and they all have their boundaries. So when somebody will come, like Falano will come, that's why I say, I don't know where he's coming from because he is a politician. He has moved out of uh, activism, he's a politician. I know of him because I've worked with him before. So I don't know where people are coming from. Do you want to have you to, met Wiki? Do you want do, do do we we to have hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Do you do you want the military to become a police? Let's organize all the lawyers in Nigeria and let them come out to tell us that we don't need state police. Then I will I will now say okay, let's go ahead. Okay. Uh thank you. Thank you. Um let me ask this quick question. Ogab uh Black Panther, do you support state po state police? Mr. Niger Watch, for Intel to flow very well and for Nigeria to be well secured, you need to have internal policing right. If you don't so have you internal support, policing you right, support, you support state yes, police. One thousand okay. percent, no matter what, we will face it. Let us face it okay. headlong. Any problem that comes with it, let us solve it because we are going to solve and we are solution providers. Okay. Thank you. To Niger, do you support state police? In principle, I have nothing against it. I just think it's not necessarily the solution. Okay. So, but uh, having more army is the solution? Uh, not necessarily the solution. It's a start. Of, actually, if you have more police, state police um, on the ground, it's a solution. If you have more police on the ground in the states, we, because right now we have, um, according to even UN, um, uh, this in um, proportions, well, we are quite um, more than doubled, more than two times below what we are supposed to be. So if you transfer state uh, police powers to the states and they go and recruit more people, that is a solution. Because now they, they are not so worried that it's outside people that are in the police anymore. You see what I mean? Okay. So it becomes a solution. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, let me hear from uh, Mother Iris Finest. Please give us your final submission for me, please. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Evis and the other panelists uh, for a job well done this evening. Everybody has spoken well. Uh, before I round up my final submission, uh, Mr. Chris said something referring to me. He said he disagreed with me, which I quite understand because we are in the opposite side of the 
of the game. So it's normal for him not to agree with me in certain things. Uh, same way I don't agree with him as well. It's just a normal thing. But there's something he said that uh, Labour Party could not find a competent person from Edo Central. Honestly, I am not against that. That is a party's business. Not, not that they, they did not find or what happened there. And I don't care to know. I'm just working with what we have. So they don't have candidate from there, which I want to support a candidate from there because of inclusiveness, as I said earlier. And um, they, 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 they brought what they have or what they got. Good and fine. I'm not against that. Are you saying that uh, if I said I don't do party politics, that uh, I do regional politics, is uh, regional politics is also party politics? I disagree with you on that because you can't say regional politics is party politics because it's like you saying that uh, certain people from a certain region are for one party, certain people for other region are for other party. No, there are people from a uh, different region that are for different political parties. So I don't agree with that. And besides, I don't play, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know. It's like, you are not understanding me. I am not for region or no region. I am just for a good candidate and for inclusiveness. So it's not that I, I am so glued to this region, if it's this region, that is when I was come out to support, because many people does it. They might not be interested for politics for the whole four years, but once somebody is coming from a, a, a certain region, they will not come out and be interested in politics. I don't do that. I can choose to be interested in politics in every time if I want to. In a, it, can, it can even not be from my state. For example, when they were doing a campaign in Abia State, I was rooting for Oti because I know him. I've been following his pedigree uh, from as, when he was a banker and all that. So you cannot accuse me of playing regional politics. I support candidates when I see that they are qualified, they are good, they are okay. Like I, that is just me. I, I don't have another way to to, I, to I explain. Think I, I, I think you don't have to explain yourself, but that is actually a good way. I'm a bit so, curious though. How how did you know Oti was? Uh, what is his uh, pedigree you were following in his banking? Because Oti has been fighting for 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 his seat in the political space, and I know about him during his banking sector and the money put out be safe for Anabra State. His name come on board on there. How they work together and stuff like that. So I I I do follow Eastern. I've been following Eastern politics for quite some time now. Even they have ring it out before. So I've read a lot about him and uh, his person, the way he is to his people and all that. I follow people. I follow people even when they are not known in a political space. Just as I was following Peter Obi from the beginning. Just as I'm, Madam, I'm following Chris Limogalu. Madam, so can I, I ask you a question? People. Yes. Did you follow, you say you follow people very well. And if you follow the banker, I guess you must have followed the man that will be handed over to, who is presently stole 4 billion, allegedly. He was a good banker and he made a good dividend for the banking sector, for his bank. So, Black Panther, if I, said I guess I you follow that guy people, very well. If I say I follow people, I didn't say I follow everybody. If I come to support somebody, it has to be somebody that I've been following. <laughs> I follow certain people that I come across. They are visible in the public space. They are in the corridor of leadership or they are in a certain private sector doing well that, that are visible. I follow them. For example, Tedola is not a politician for now. I've been following his story. Thank God everybody knows. I read about them. I, I read about people like that. Some people that are famous, that are out there, uh, Probably one day you just see that they now jump into a political corridor. So it gave me that uh, a bit of knowing as per se to like, so okay, I've been following this person for a while. I know about the person. Like Kisley Mogalu in this platform in the last election when Obi was still in PDP. I was rooting for him. Many people don't know him in this platform. I was explaining, writing his name. Okay, look out for him. Check out about him. Although many people still don't like him, but I think it's also 
a good uh, uh, candidate as per the party he was coming out from then. So that doesn't mean that I follow everybody. Like the person you are talking about now, I don't really know much about that person. Can I, 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 can I really ask, by, by following, I assume you are saying like you supported their approach right. to the way of doing things. I just have one question because uh, I was uh, kind of supporting uh, Ben Ayade of Cross River and almost followed him into a hole. Have you, uh, have you followed people before and you found out that they were quite uh, rubbish in the end? <laughs> Yes, sometimes it's like that. Sometimes you can follow people in their private sector and how they are going. Sometimes they come out to the political space and end up messing up the whole of those legacy they have laid with their personal and private uh, sector. That is why uh, I, I am, I'm when I come out to support, I always say I don't trust our Nigerian politicians. But as of today, today, with what I know about this person, I think he can do it. I think that is okay. a normal thing that happens to everybody. You can support somebody at the end of the day, the person end up disappointed you it's a case of nobody knows tomorrow nobody will know what will happen tomorrow i support based on what i'm seeing today so that is my how sister. i i i do my thing my sister and you know i'm very happy you said that you can support someone today and you find out the person is disappointing now remember you supported um governor Obasek in 2020 wholeheartedly and he ended up being a disappointment at least to See, me I don't, I, know about you. I don't know oh, why I you're always finished Yes, I, I don't know how because you have come with this to bring it. My sister, I have to bring it because the candidate you're supporting is coming is from this same person that disappointed you. No, the black pastor, hold on, please. Don't no, just me. let him finish the question that he's asking, then I will answer. So you can finish your question now. Yeah, see, the reason why you say I'm keep, I keep bringing up 2020, I have to bring it up because you just supported somebody that was brought out by the person that you supported in 2020. That's why, listen. It's like but, um, um, bread and butter. You cannot take out Aswe Golado and not mention Obaseke. In the same way, you cannot mention Obaseke and not mention Aswe Golado. So that's why every time your candidate is coming out, no, you will always have to listen. Let's have, 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 have finish. Let's have finish. I know where she's going and I have answer for her. Finish. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You don't know where I'm going to. You know, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that we have been here for a long time, Madarita. We know ourselves, so that's been to me. Next time, not carrying me go where I don't know. <laughs> no, just finish your question. Let me oh, no. finest. Wait, listen, finest. Okay. Listen, okay. I said I was very happy. You said sometimes you support people, you know, that you know, that at the end of the day they disappoint you. That's fine, it's life, right? Now. Obasaki disappointed you, at least based on, I mean, what the past and everything. I mean, you've come out to That's say that. That's what I wanted to ask you. How are you sure Obasaki disappointed her? How are you sure? No. I, Madam, so okay, okay, Obasek now, officially, Madam Irene, do you think Obasaki disappointed or not? That's disappointed the question you. you're supposed to be asking her. Are you satisfied with Obasaki? I'm saying this Obasek? now because in the past, Madam Irene has declared was, that Obasaki disappointed. Ma uh, no, Madam no. Irene, before, before I proceed, please, can you tell us now? In your own opinion, did Governor Baseki disappoint you based no, on his, his administration no, from 2020 till date? Uh, I, I would I like you to ask all your question, then I want to have everything together. So she don't, she don't finish, she don't finish. Answer, I'm answer, not answer. Finish, she said, I'm not no, finish. she said because she proceeds, so I want her to proceed and finish, but I don't want you to do watch, eh? so you problem, yo. <laughs> okay, okay, fine. That was question number one. Okay, now that he has disappointed, is I'm um, assuming he disappointed you. The person that he is bringing out now, because take it or leave it, is Governor Basaki that brought out Aswe Godano. Don't say it's PDP because we have the likes of Aslam Ojezwa complaining and the likes of the Deputy Governor complaining. So take it or leave it. Aswe Godano was brought out by his master, Governor Basaki. What makes you think now? Eh? Now the drama and the and the and the stick don't go together. What makes you think that Aswe Godano would not still disappoint? Because for me, the way he's talking, he's talking exactly the same way Governor Basek is, is, is I was saying in 2020, but he's just in a different tone, but the same thing. Answer the question. Thank you. First of all, um, you asking if Obaseki disappointed me or not. Mm -hmm. uh, I will first of all want to clear that. Yes, of mm -hmm. course, I support 
Governor mm -hmm. Baseki in the last election, in the sense that I came to know about him when they were fighting about the Godfatherism issue. I was not even uh, uh, current about his first tenure. So I heard about that Godfatherism issue, which Elvis has been talking about. Let's not use them to play victim and they will not come and win with that victimism. So I, it, it was, my support for Governor Baseki was a kind of following the trade. I, I can tell you, I did not really read much about him. I didn't read much about him. I didn't know much about him. But that injustice thing that everybody was clamoring was how I supported him. Now, the question of has he disappointed, uh, 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 am I disappointed by his performance or something? There is no politician that will ever satisfy us. We always need more and we ask for more. Then if you ask me for Baseki have met the expectation of Edo people, me personally, I can say no, because there are a lot of things that he promised that he did not do. That still does not mean that he did not work at all, as some people are saying that he did My not sister, do anything. You have not answered the question. You are going around in circles. I'm not going it's around. It's not for Edo people now. Yeah, for you. you. It's no, 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 no. Don't interrupt me. That is why I said ask, okay. ask your questions okay, straight okay, ahead. Chain of thought. So because I, you're not answering the question, that's why I'm interrupting. You're not answering the question. If I have finished, you can come and tell me that I didn't answer a question. And besides, don't expect me to say it where you want to hear. So I will answer it in my own way. She's a politician now. I am. Uh, I am. Uh, you know, this is a political situation now. Explain politics now. Black Panther, can you allow me, please? Don't let me lose my chain of thought. Black, Black Panther, I am make you, her now. I am telling you that. No, no, I would enjoy the politics. Myself, I am explaining myself. I am telling you that, fine, or Baseki have not met the expectation of Edo people and myself because based on what some things he promised that he would do that he did not do. And I'm also telling you that I cannot stand uh, in the in the line of people that say he did not do anything. There is no governor that never did anything. Did it disappoint me? Yes, in the sense that he did not complete what he promised during his campaign. But that doesn't mean that he's not doing nothing. If that answer your question. And the other one that you are saying, how do I know that that's when we not disappoint? Just what I said before my first submission, I told you that <laughs> I, don't, I don't trust any politician, but we are less with three people and we have to choose. Somebody has to sit in that power. For the three people that are standing, he's the person that I'm seeing as of today. And you saying that you are seeing a in him, I don't know how you are seeing two people to be one. All I am saying is that because with what I'm seeing on social media with Edo people, that's why Godalo crimes stand to be that because Obaseki is bringing him. Because uh, you have worked with uh, Obaseki or Shomuli. I will say my own and I stand on it. I cannot crucify anybody with her because of another person's crime. If Obaseki have not done well for Edo State, that is Obaseki. As well, I have not seen for that seat. He has not been tried to know if he will disappoint or not. So I will not because Obaseki did not do and is bringing another person and even if it's from the same father and the same mother with obaseki i will not because of what obaseki did not do and persecute him because obaseki is bringing him beside oshomole brought obaseki for us how did they end up now we can brought uh, fubara to uh, uh, river state how are they going uh, the other one Kogi, they have started fighting kaduna they are fighting so nigeria is not a place where uh, Nigeria can i call me table. Outside Lagos. So it's yes, only it's Lagos that we are seeing. Can I come in? Can you let that answer? That answer. Yeah, that's so now. Don't, don't, I, I don't, I don't buy to those things or say it's coming to do a basket or tenor. It's not going to do a basket or tenor. Until he come, if by God grace he won, he win, and he won, he started working, did not miss my expectation, I will still come out here and call him out. But what I will not do is to judge him with a basket thing. I will not do that okay. because can, if anybody judge him, it's my now, my brother said I will not like it. Thank you. Thank you very much, my sister. <laughs> I'm very happy you are you excuse me, Gessa, because I, I have to respond. I ask the question, please. I'll be very, very short. Thank you very much. I'm very happy that you have expressed this now, and I'm very happy you have shown us the trail of what happens with anointed candidates along the line, even presently, what we're seeing. And um, you have just kind of predicted, even if it has not come, if he becomes the governor, if if he becomes the governor, what you have just predicted will definitely happen. We all know that. And you, you know, the way you, you're speaking, I respect your choice. It's your choice on how you see it. But sometimes um, it is it is good that we're having this discussion because we are here to, to educate, you know, everybody, right? Or especially those who are greenhorns in the scheme of things of Nigerian politics or Edo politics now. But um, you you saying that just because we're not going to use Obaseki's sins, right? 
to judge Asra Gudalo. I would say that is kind of um comical with all due respect to you. Because you, you're sounding like you've never you understood. You can't say that. Because of, you can choose to do it that way. I will I'm not do it that way. Now. You. I'm so speaking I will now. Not because you when I don't Nigerian expect you to do it, politicians it, would never okay? change. My sister. So what, what are you saying that I predict <laughs> that will happen, if I may ask? What did I predict oh that? Lord, I said, no. Listen. I said, I'm happy you you you, you showed us the trail. of. I'm happy that you explained the trail of anointed candidates. You mentioned Kogi, Rivers. Now, this anointed candidate of Governor Baseki, that's why I said, take it or leave it. He's the anointed candidate of Governor Baseki. I said, now, it's like you have not predicted if he becomes governor. What, what is happening now? What has happened in the past with anointed candidates? That's exactly what's going to happen to Edo State. It's not the same. Because to the best of my knowledge, to the best of my knowledge, you are insisting that if he, if Asua Godalo win the election, it's going to be a Baseki third tenor. What I'm trying to say is that she's people are saying that of I Baseki third tenor. There are so many can, people, can there are so many talk, people that are to... candidates that they fall out along Let's the line. They can't even speak themselves. They can't walk in the same path. So yeah. it's not necessary that, that somebody bring no, somebody. That, that, that person must control the person. I think I don't think I didn't find this. You made your point, and I'm not I sure. It's, I'm not sure it's um, <laughs> uh, 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 that train of thought, thinking that this person is not his anointed candidate in Nigerian politics, like seriously, you just gave an example, my sister, of what happened in River State, what's happening in Kogi State, even in those states, Governor Shomile and, and uh, Governor Baseki, and, and you're not telling tell me that that's not going to happen if he becomes governor. It's like, it's like you're you, are you, are co you are contradicting yourself. Exactly. Don't you perform contradicting myself, my sister. Well, anyway. I am telling you that the rest was 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 brought from with their for their uh uh candidates. Now they are falling out with whoever that brought them in. I don't do my goodness, they are not doing those for Totono. So that is what I'm telling you. Okay. Do you think he emerged by the agreement of um, in the primaries? That's what I'm saying. You, you, you're sounding like a, a greenhorn, like you don't understand Nigerian politics. And I know you understand it. How no, did Asari Godalo emerge? What do we have, Shaibu? 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 Can you be quiet? Can you be quiet? No, no, I'm trying to tell you. Why do we have factions in PDP? Why do we have factions in PDP today? Why do we have factions in APC today? Even Labour Party too. Please, this is Nigerian policies. Let's not kid ourselves. Like, like the, uh, this, the, 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 nobody is a saint among them. My point Mother is that let us not be ignorant. Let us not be Mother ignorant of what is going on. And now I have a question for you. Which oh, guarantee? Yeah. Which guarantee do you have that this uh, uh, Akpata that you are also supporting it will be we 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 turn a door state to Dubai? I, will not fall I that never said I supported uh, 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 Akpata. I said I am but still I looking. Now. You don't. You, 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 my decision. Listen. Don't Let's not get one thing clear. Don't no, no, no. Okay, no, no, I'm not saying you're you intelligent. Listen, listen, why, you, why did you not say message to And I've made you my point. Don't you, don't mean, you just don't mean don't my words. Sister, you I do not, not mean my words. My sister, let me speak to you. I'm not hearing anything now. Black Panda. I do not mean my words. I'm not going to mention my name, please. I do not mean my words, my sister. I'm not making any sense out of their discussion. That's what I'm saying. Sorry, my brother. I am not going to expel a lot of energy here. And I will. I don't miss my words. I, I have repeatedly said it and I will not be pressured. I said I am not I've not picked any candidate. I'm still looking and I even I even shouted out and I wrote Olumide Akpata. He needs to come out. He needs to talk. That does not mean that does not mean that I'm supporting Olumide Akpata. No. Why did why did you not write the rest? Why did you not write the rest? I will not be pressured. I'm still waiting to because I want to listen to I have listened to the other two. 
Anybody coming from Obaseki is taught in Obaseki and Obaseki did not perform. So that's why that one is disqualified. As per APC, I've only heard him talk on the day he, on the day they, they made him the candidate, the candidate for APC. I want to hear him talk more. And as for Olumide Akpata, that one is Andrew Liver Salt. The other candidates, I'm not putting so much energy on them because I know reality is just these three parties. But that does not mean I'm supporting Olu Olu Olumide Akpata. At the end of the day, I might not even support the three of them, the, 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 the other two, when I found out that they're not competent enough for me. But I know I just said we pick one person at the end of the day. But it is my duty to speak about my opinion about these candidates so that I will, people will make their own informed choices. This is my point. Madarita, Ma let me inform you in advance that Niger was said the panel will not contain anybody that don't have candidates. So you no, will not give No, no, no. I will say no, no, will not prevent me from, from speaking out my opinion. Because this candidate is this channel is a channel for educating people. So it's also my duty, even if I'm an indie, if, if I want to be an independent, it's my duty to come here and tell people about my opinion. Because when you are in the box, you don't see what's Madarita, going, you don't see from outside. Because when you sit on the fence, you will have that that. Not that's why i choose to not to support anybody but mr ivy said that with our voices in this platform we have to choose a candidate so but there has to be a, there has to be a discerning there has to be a discerning voice in all of this candidate you've seen it in other countries when everybody's in there must always be a discerning voice to tell people that this person is not what they are this other person is not this so you cannot you cannot rule out the discerning voices you can't and i i don't want to expel enough energy on this uh, discussion because um the recapping has not started thank you um, um, I didn't exactly. I think it's better we wait for I, the campaign I, I, because I, I, it's going I, to be hot. I, I think uh, um, uh, this yeah, is uh, yeah, yeah, I think yeah, Kenneth's yeah, position yeah, is, yeah, is yeah, fine, yeah, and uh, hold everybody's hold position hold is fine. We shouldn't be insulting each other. Hold on now. Hold on now. Let's let Niger watch talk now. Ah, yes. Hello, hello. You see, you see this vibration that I'm hearing, and the 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 energy that I'm hearing now from my two lovely sisters this is what i want to be honest for the first time this is what i want to hear stay firm to the person you are supporting don't let anybody to be date you you understand yes i like this why you that is country whoever that is supporting anybody on this platform stay firm as well bring everything out to counter them this is it because like i said i'm not going to lock this platform on like we did on Peter Obi. No, I'm not going to do that. So it's not that energy will not leave for me that time to take the defend everything they go. Meanwhile, leave on for now. I'm going to defend that candidate. You know, you see, you see, you see the way my two sisters they talk now. I, I'm, I'm here learning. Let me still relax. <laughs> I don't want to be our next governor. Now they talk. So this is not a joke. Oh. It's not we're not a joke for here. Yeah, that was stop pretending. Pretend who Mr. Mr. Pretend Elvis, that was for you. Ah, what I do again? What, <laughs> what I'll go tell you your candidate very soon. <laughs> I will play all rap for her. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Wait to be my own for this matter now. Wait to be my you see, own. Okay, Mr. Elvis, pick a candidate. Mr. Elvis, pick a candidate. Peter will be I'll be my candidate. Now lie, you wrong. Oh, let's all there. Now I'll be first the talk. You said what? I said me all of us they talk, but I didn't say you they give your submission. Uh, my, my Peter Peter Obi is my candidate. So <laughs> is Oga, Oga, no stay for offense. If not, we'll go shakabula you. No, if I no, listen, there's nothing like fence for here. My platform is not sitting on the fence. So now no, you you, 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 now you, now you you are sitting on the fence and I'm holding my I'm my co co co. I'm I'm supporting Alen Oyema. Na lie. <laughs> you don't enter that today. <laughs> Tell me so. <laughs> I beg, I beg, like you leave me alone. You know because as the job be so, I say when I go throw bottle for this governorship election for Edo State, I I go your day here the wash. Meanwhile. <laughs> Somebody, let's say somebody, oh, jealous. So, ah, Mr. Keep, don't jealous. Hey, voila. <laughs> you know, see, uh, Dean of Faculty, see him there for there. Hey, 
Mr. Akim, good to have you back. Good to have you back. So excited. Mr. Akim, this one where Mr. Akim. Mr. Akim, welcome. Oh. Hmm. Good, good evening to everybody. Happy New Year. <laughs> Mr. Akim, my brother. Yes, brother. I'm sorry. I was watching from the. I was watching from behind. Behind. So um, I came in to to back up my sister, uh, Madam Irene Finest. Uh, my chest. This one uh, we're coming out with our full chest for Aswe Godalo. So there's nothing to. Okay, now Aswe Godalo, you still support? Thank you, bro. Thank Here you. we go. Yeah, Thank you. you. I expected it because I came and been supporting on your basic. So it is fine. It's okay. Nigeria watch. But not all of us. So now Aswe Godalo, you still support? Nigeria watch. Yes, I'm a full. I'm fully behind Aswe Godalo. Everybody. Everybody have the right to their own uh, uh, choice, but what we are going to, the question we are going to ask everybody is, your scorecard, what have you achieved before you want to become a governor? Now, the, the, the governor that will govern a those state for the next four to eight years, you have to show to the people your achievement, both at the, if it's at the private sector, you have to show us what, you, what you've been able to build from scratch, what you've been able to achieve as a person, as an individual, as an entity, you must be able to prove to us. This, look, the time of we've gone past it, past it, we've gone past those those days of Agbo government. Man. We don't Mr. Want Mr. Akin, we, we Mr. also look at the fact that Mr. Akin is not sitting. We've had educated Mr. people who Mr. are Akin, can I, can you give We are talking seconds? about character here. Mr. Okay. Akin, can you give me 10 seconds? Please. No, just 10 seconds. Please, the Hold on, hold on. I'll go okay, okay. Black Panther, please. You have been talking. Let her keep talking. I'm not you are the one talking now. <laughs> hold Why on, do you face on. me like I, this? I, I, I can just call me. Let him, please. Thank hold, you, sir. Hold, hold on, hold on, please. I can we talk. Everybody, hold on. Mr. Chris has been calling my name. Augusta, go ahead quickly. Mr. Yeah, Chris. and I draw what I think from this stage, eh, you go since the women don't talk finish, you go just get to um, hold on to the panel give everybody the opportunity to talk because this one where everybody they talk at each other so it's not going to make too much sense we are not going to move forward especially black no. panther to niger you guys no 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 no, no 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 now only this moment i be they look say whether the feature bottle and all that but no I, as for the ladies you see the other men just allow the two ladies to talk which is what you are supposed to do no I what black i was panther, saying they were not they were black, no, 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 hearing no. them no black man no, leave them it's now not business when I they did the hot to yeah. my business so, no 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 separate ladies from men i beg it's my no, when ladies are talking, you give them time uh, to ventilate. Eventually, they will calm down. Okay. I did not stop them. I said, let one speak before so the other, so that we can hear their point very now, well. Let me okay. let me make okay. because initially it was even me, Irene Finest, address. At the end of the day, you people took okay. over. Okay, but before Oga Chris, I beg with all due respect. You know, so normally person we supposed to speak to us now now Oga him, but I have to pause him for now I, because of Akin. Yeah, I don't know why I came come because it shocked me to hear now say I came you're the come now. You say that's why the support, that's why the support. So we suppose know how, where, and where are you coming from? And you have to tell us the state of a do state now, what is happening. You know, you can't just come from come like that. I swear, I swear, I swear. I, Mr. Akim. Uh, Mandarita, you were asking him question earlier on. I beg, finish that question. No, there was no question. I just said, you know, I'm not surprised uh, Akim is supporting us because he supported Governor Baseki. And my instincts never lie. 2020, oh, I spoke, no. I was insulted, but where are we today? So it's still the same tricks. You know, I, I can't be, I don't know. Let me just okay. stop here. I don't want to explore so much Mr. energy. Akin, Campaign please, hasn't started. Before you move on with uh, 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 Mr. Dr. Aswen, please, uh, oh, Governor Baseki, almost eight years in office scale one to ten what can you give to him so uh, it it my personally honest review i'll probably give him a seven seven uh, yes okay go ahead. What, <laughs> what did he accomplish please <laughs> Okay, thank you. if you want, if you want, if, if you have, if you want me to say, say, say things that he has done, then that's okay. I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay to do that. So first of all, you you need to um, you, you need to go and study his campaign when he wanted to come in as a governor in 2016. Focus point on Obaseki campaign was 
reorganization and uh, reform of the civil service system, right? Has he done that successfully over his governorship, his governorship, governorship term? Akim, Without to be him, honest, yeah. wait till you hear the explain. So before you finish, I might fail to tell you, say that seven, eh? Na bala blue. Yeah. May I tell you? Seven. No, be, yeah, be, yeah, but be, oh, before I say seven. No, no, seven, seven. No, no, no. I, I don't put water for my mouth. My seven, I call. Hmm. Okay. Go so ahead. before I say seven, I say personal, I say personal opinion, personal review. Uh, that is seven. So, by my, uh, so, by my own marking skin, seven na distinction, no? seventeen. Then, then look in a look comment section, seven. Mo look how they go vote for you. Uh, I don't make I don't make decisions based based on what people what comment sessions are going to say or what they are going to put out there. Okay, so I am a man of my own, of myself. I am I'm old enough to be able to make decisions for myself. So I don't have uh, look. I have regards for people at the comment session and their contribution, but they, they, it doesn't sway my opinion in one way or the other. I have my sense of belief and I stand by them. Uh, just uh, let me put that that aside. So this, only, if you look uh, at the, if you look at the civil service sector in the state, one of the best in the country. There's no nobody's arguing that. There's no even comparison. We're not even we're not even arguing about it. So if you have a better civil service statewide in that country, you point it to me. Uh, those states have one of the best. So that one he has achieved that. So you can say the reason why I did not even go higher than seven is because of the road. I uh, personally I have to be honest, it's not that Obaseki didn't do road, but I personally don't like the standard and the quality of the road that I'm seeing in those states. So that one I put that aside. So in terms of health sector, I think he has done well. He has built and construct. He has built and equipped a lot of uh, primary care centers, and he has uh, tried to upgrade the Stella Obasanjo hospitals as well. The uh, specialist hospital that Oshomole has built, that hospital is running perfectly well today with 24 hours electricity supply. So you have all of these things out there. Go to College of Agriculture in Igoriahi, right? You will see a completely newly built institution that stands with universities we not this is not even a university it's a college of agriculture with facilities that can compare to some universities in nigeria so look if you want i can continue to give you what you want to hear go to the head science uh, uh, school college of uh, nursing go and look at what obaseki did there as well so the man did well but if you want to see, you will see. If you don't want to see, you won't see. That is how life goes. Okay, the do that the uh Edo people, do you agree with him? Oh. I don't know. Everybody no, just wait, quiet. wait, wait. And to Niger, I don't know. Are we waiting for him to finish or we just uh, Mr. Niger? No, I thought he has finished I all this thing. No, no, I finished my own side of it. So uh, uh, Chris see, doesn't uh, know what he's well, doing. I'll just anymore. ask like this, Mr. Niger Wash. <laughs> when you say you surprised, say uh I yes, go support uh Obaseki. I for even surprised, say you surprised, but I can't remember. Say when Hakim was doing the job for Obaseki, most of the time, Akachi, night the night did the panel that time. We all know Hakim very well. He was the mouthpiece of Obaseki during the campaign. If you are truly proud of what Obaseki did, where have you been in the past four years? Why have you not been coming out? Can I ask a question? Because was not here during the campaign. It was far after campaign that Kachi was here. Those days that that is when Hakim was defending Governor Basaki. I think Mr. Nigerwatch was still here. Yeah, I didn't say Nigerwatch was not here. I say most of the time, Kachi, because I know exactly what I'm saying. I know Akin is from Kachi Dublin. came in when we were not rooting for Obina, not for Edo State. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Besides, I mean, Irene Finance, wait, I'm coming for you. I know the, the part I'm <laughs> talking to. I know the part I'm talking about. Akin is also from the Republic of Ireland. I know him very well. He knows me very well. And we all know what Obaseki has done to the state. What I expect is that um, all this why you would have come out Okay, Mr. Chris, up. Mr. Chris, let me ask you a question quickly so that you can move on. Scale 1 to 10, what can you give to Obaseki? I'm giving him 3.5. Okay. 
Okay. Yes, because the reason I gave him 3.5, I'm not ambiguous about it. In some, in most higher institutions, 40 is still a pass mark. So I have to give him 35. I'm very clear. Okay, okay. Yeah, you, are, you are too generous now. <laughs> yeah, I'm you very are, clear. You are too generous you, you now. You can let us see the marking skin. You can let no, us see, see the marking, the marking skin. skin that there. Let me take on our king. Now, because okay. I know him very well. See, you... You you said you live in Ireland or whatever. Now, the hospital you are talking about, tell me how many people in a those states, how many common people in a those states can afford that hospital? It's yeah, almost, before you are able to afford that hospital, that hospital is so, so expensive. So, so expensive. Because the reason I take Akim with high standard, if you live in Nigeria, it's a different thing. You cannot live and enjoy in a system that work. You see how a system works to care for the most vulnerable in the society. And you come to your country and you are defending another system that is completely against the downtrodden. How can you tell yeah. me a governor, a governor that demolished a library and replaced it with a mall? You call that a governor? You said it's only on the, uh, on the road. Do, do you know how many roads that Nigeria Watch has displayed on this platform that they call Biscuit Roads? Do you know how many but, of these abandoned but, but projects? Mr. Akim just, Mr. Mr. Akim just kicked against uh, Governor Obaseki's roads now. He's not That's what I'm you. saying. That's where I'm going to. If you kick against the road, so which one can't remain inside? So, uh, Mr. If Chris, you, you see this is, now. Mr. Chris, before you continue, yeah. I want to quickly say something. This, you see, this is the problem we have as people. Um, have you or anybody you know used that uh, specialist hospital any yes. any time recently? Listen, so not just not just any person I know, and not just any time recently. My sister was in that hospital last year. They do they did um, um, surgery for her. Is our family person, and if you must know, I had to even be calling some of the staffs there. The outrageous prices were just so much at a time. They formed, they had a WhatsApp group where they had to be sharing the receipts of payments. So this one is not whether they give somebody money or they not give. You, I'll give you that assignment. I can give any person that assignment on this platform. Everybody listening all over the world, go and look at the prices at that hospital. You know okay, what it is that to the extent you'll be, you'll be suggesting that people should leave state hospital and go to University of Benin Teaching Hospital because the hospital is being run as a private, uh, a private uh, whatever entity. You don't do that. It's not everything the state used to make money. See, let's okay. be re really factual. Can I, can, I, the... can I come in, please? Can I come in, yes, please? Yes, come in. Okay, thank you very much. So, so that hospital, I've had... Um, family members experience there too. One recently, my younger sister have a baby, gave birth to a baby there. And the other one was when uh, my mom had uh, a accident. She had a leg operation done in that same central hospital. So I have pictures, images from inside that hospital. I did video call, live video call, when my mom was admitted in that hospital. So I, I'm talking from personal one-on-one -on -one experience, right? So we we personally tried private hospitals after they've done rubbish to my mom's leg. I then advised them to take her to specialist hospital, which they did. And to my surprise, the facilities there were better than even the private hospital she was she was in before. The prices that we paid, okay, you might argue that for me it might be comfortable for me to pay those prices, but it was it was four or five times cheaper than what. I have paid in a private hospital where they did rubbish in the first places. Medications in that hospital, when they prescribe medicine for you for you to buy, medicines inside that hospital's pharmacies are cheaper than what you get outside. I'm not even talking second second hand story, and I'm telling you personal experience. So I don't know if if you say UBTH, you have to understand that UBTH could be heavily subsidized by federal government. It could be cheaper, but that central hospital is cheaper than a lot of private hospitals in Benin there. That one is confirmed. So put the, just put that one aside to say, it's, it's look, what prices are you talking about in the first place? 
Can I can I ask a question, no, Mr. It's a, can no, I ask no, you a no, question? No, for me. It no, make I ask a question. Now, now just okay. the boss people out. Maybe people okay. ask question now. You never yeah, talk, I go, talk I go, today. I go, if anybody tell me, can make I know. Mr. Chris, Mr. Chris, I'm going to tell something. You and I will live in the Republic of Ireland, right? Yes. You know very well. You you know very well, very very well that if you have if you have income of certain level, right? You, you don't get medical card. I don't have a medical card in this country. Even my own children don't have medical card because they said I earn, my earn is gone over a certain amount, then I cannot get medical card. If I go to the hospital But you today, can have private insurance on your own because I, uh, you are both... Is it, for, is it for free? Do you know how much is private private insurance every you, you month? You got to pay. You got to pay because you exactly. earn above the limit. Exactly. So what, no, what is Panther, the point of Black Panther, Black Panther, listen. What thing they call medical card? So may I tell you, in Ireland, you don't need any private insurance unless, unless okay. I repeat, unless you choose to. Within the core medical card, so the way it works in Ireland, if your income not reach certain level, government will give you card. Your wife, your children, everybody. You see, with that card, then eh, you can assess anything for hospital without paying. Even the medicine, get some medicine where they go write for you. Where they don't send me, you go to the pharmacy, go collect. Maybe two euro, three euro, four euro. You understand? So if yes. your income can't still reach certain level, maybe you be professional now. They're not going to give you that card. Because they don't say and say you go fear afford. So you go pay out of pocket. You go fear afford them. You see where they try to talk. So somebody will agree saying come from that kind of system. Then you they support a system where they say, Government hospital, which is supposed to be government hospital, people they pay tax. The people where they receive minimum wage, that is what I'm saying. Okay, and God so will bless say, you, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Yeah, but Mr. Mr. God, Chris, they can ask Mr. one question. No, I don't wait, 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 Hakim, 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 make yeah, I ask you one question. Hakim, Hakim, make I ask you this yeah. question now, since you don't yeah, really look at From what you pay for your mama and your sister, to be honest, the person where they get minimum wage for a dosage civil service, can he afford that same treatment? The answer is obviously no. But in that Republic of Ireland where you they talk, everybody, if your salary not rich, now that one be the benchmark, then go oh, give Mr. you that. Chris, come on, man. What are you talking about now? What are you what am I talking about? What yeah, is what difficult are you talking for about? you to understand? Listen, I would I look, I don't want to make sure that it is here. I work in certain section of the health uh, healthcare system, right? We have people who are in debt, health health bills they have not paid. What are you talking about here? Which, which category of people? What do you mean? Which category? People who doesn't people? I'm talking about people who are still on. Look, look. Let me don't go too far into details. Put let's forget the bad. Mr. Akin, let me ask you a we question. Have people, please. We have very, people very who are, who are in debt, people who are not able to pay bills. Mr. Akin, bills. Mr. Akin, hold on, hold on. Let me ask you a question. You live in you live in Ireland. Can from one to hundred percent? Can you grade the poverty rate in those states? From one to hundred, grade it. So are you attributing poverty rates to, to no, the state government? No, no, just answer my question. From no, you, you no, no. I, how am I supposed to answer your question when your question okay, is irrelevant? Okay, now, to the now, now, that means you are playing, if you cannot answer that question or give a rough estimate of that question, that means you are playing politics with the life of the adult state people. A exactly, oh. see, see, black If you cannot oh. answer that question, you see, cannot answer that question, answer. then the game, you are the playing politics with the said, life of the adult state Mr. people. King, Mr. Kim was here during the campaigns, and after how the campaigns, are you asking me about poverty rates? You when know I'm asking you. You know I'm asking you Black because Why? you need the poverty rate level yes, before Black you can Panther. start up on your I'm development. Very sure, I'm very sure this is the first time you people are seeing Hakim. This is a voice that was very vocal during Obaseki's time, and when Obaseki came, when the failures started, the voice disappeared, and now it's campaign time. He has come out again. Oh, that's what we are saying. That's what I'm saying. You said the beauty is that the right. development. When you yeah, okay, so the poverty rate of the people. Okay, can I say something? Mr. Please? Mr. Mr. Uh, was, please. Mr. Mr. Was, please. Hold on, hold on. I need to address something quickly. Mr. Chris, yes. what you said just now, first of all, you made a comment earlier on, and then you were going back and forth with uh, Madam Irene about it, which was not correct in the first place. So well, I didn't want to comment there. I didn't go back and forth with Madam Irene. I told her Hold to on. Wait. So now, now you've made another now. comment again, which is not which is not true. 
So what one, first of all, to say it. hold on, hold on. First of all, during the campaign for overtaking re-election, I was not coming to Niger Watch platform at the time. It was after the election that I started coming to Niger Watch. That's one. Secondly, I was very vibrant on Niger Watch until it, it got to the presidential election. And I made it clearly on this platform that because I was not a supporter of Peter Obi and the platform had been dedicated to, to support Peter Obi, that was why I did not come on the platform as a respect for uh, 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 Niger Watch, Mr. Evis. That was it. That it was, I was very clear about it. So I don't understand this one you're talking about. Uh, I disappeared because uh, you of Obasi. You, know. you disappear. You see this thing you are just saying. Eh? It's like you are talking to people that have uh, that are from a different planet. So you've been okay. that all this while, even okay. in the WhatsApp let's, group. Let's do with all this let's discussion this going way. on about let's Obasi. This way. All this while, this let's platform is only way. talking about Peter Obi. Come on. Come okay. on. You okay. can choose to be here when the discussion is about it, I'll be. You don't say anything. And if the discussion okay. is about Obaseki, you say something. Come okay. on. So, all right. The, the let's, discussion let's... tonight is different, and I came on. So, no, you... you not... Okay, go, go on. Go on, go on Mr. Um, okay, let's leave Obaseki out of this now. Obaseki has done his own, and uh, he's almost leaving office. Um... Mr. Kim, you mentioned something when you came to the platform that you are supporting as well, and you came to support uh, Madam Iris' uh, finest. Please, uh, can you tell us why you choose to support as well? Okay, so uh, I look at their profile. I look at his profile. Uh, is for me is personally is the most qualified among all the candidates. So when you look at the things that he has done uh, at the, from the private sectors alone. Uh, he owned one of the one of the biggest or one of the best uh, law firm in Nigeria. So for for me, that tells me that he knows how to build. Okay, he knows how to create. He is very creative. So uh, I I don't need somebody to tell me that he is the most qualified among the guys that are running right now. So we need people who are connected, who can attract investors into the into the state. Who can be able to use their knowledge, their uh, uh, their connections to 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 meet different people and to to reach different government uh, at different levels of government to bring investment into the state? Uh, th that is it. So for me, I think he's the most qualified person, and uh, uh, that's why I'm supporting him. Mr. Najawash, can I say something here? Yes, go ahead, Mr. Najawash. Let, let me say something here. It seems that. We don't know what we want. We are playing the old card. You know what? You want to say I'm saying that I can as well as a as a dumb head and carry all the things that the house he has built every time. Say, oh, he has done this, he has built them this, he has done this, and I will not say finally he has done well. Is that service? I ask one question here. How, how can give me an, a, your own estimate, your own rough, rough graph, the poverty level in a those state? Then let's start again from there. And when you now you now made a blunder here again. That, oh, he has a, a chamber. What what does chamber? Okay, that to Black do Pata, what the development the of a state. In a state Black Pata, what is the poverty? My rough level? estimate from one to hundred, the poverty level in a those state is sixty five percent. And it has not be got, it has not come down at all. So the question is, how is that relevant? How is that relevant to the conversation? This is what I'm okay, asking you. Let how me is tell it relevant? You how it's relevant. Let me tell you how it's relevant. You see that hospital you are talking about. That hospital is built for the bourgeois. It's not built for the people, the 65 percent that are poor in a those states. And that's exactly. great development. Is it for the bourgeois or for the people? That, that, that you need to bring up to the middle class that will not start paying good tax to the government for development. Exactly. Is that how you grade a government that are performing a state while we still playing the old rhetoric of our war and yeah, the rest? But, yeah, but you guys, do you understand that a those state is a sub-national? A lot of the things that you are talking about now... There is no sub-national there. Oh, it just, is can you listen, just it one, is simple. Hold on one, hold hold on one second. Hold on one second. Can you listen to me just one second? Yeah. Uh, listen, Edo State is a sub-national. 
what you're attributing to the state now are responsibilities that should be from the federal government. So how does it work? If you Whoa! look at the United States, Responsibility hold on, one, federal just, government. hold on, just hold on one second, one second. Just let's go to the United States now and look at how the system is almost, what is almost at the same uh, comparison with us, right? So look at it. When, what did Obama do? He brought in the Obama, the Obama care to, to give health care to American citizens. So, but why did, why was it not uh, Texas or whatever state that was, no, because at state level, it's, it's not something that you can just handle. You can provide the hospitals, the facilities, the equipment, but if you want to subsidize, subsidize that healthcare at, to, to, to a very low level, that funding have to come from the federal government, okay? That is how the whole country benefit. Imagine if you my turn brother, one state. Brother, like, wait, 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 hold wait, on, hold on, hold on. Let me say something. Let me tell you. you I stand here. Don't, 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 don't contradict. No, hold on. I stand hold on here. Now. Don't contradict. No, 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 no. What you said is wrong. Hold wait, on. Wait first. Wait. He forced. No complete okay, politics. Right. Wait first. Wait first. You are playing politics with all these things. Don't just oppose anything. We are talking about the those states. Listen, can you can you the can you say something? Those states. Can you wait, say something now, without saying someone is playing politics? Let me educate you. Let me educate you. The oh, economy God. of Edo State has to be developed by the Edo State government. Who make the policy? The federal government make policy. And the policy they make, Edo State is a federated unit that can make a better policy, but not overriding the policy of the state of the federal government. But you are not saying the federal government will determine the state of affair of a state what are you saying when did, when, when did see, i say that see. now no that's what that just is what, that's what you're saying see, Mr. Hacking, in what, see. In what way did i say that I said, I said i said the federal I government need to subsidize health care for the citizens no no the state of texas can subsidize health care too the state of texas subsidize health care it it is the hospital was built by a do state fund so you cannot tell the federal government to come, to come and subsidize. The poverty level Mr. Black Panther is talking about, if you know the poverty level is, for example, let's say 50%, if a state government is building any hospital, if it's building any infrastructure, it the state government has to set the price so that the poorest, those 50% of the poorest will be able to afford it. You don't need any federal government to come and do that for you. What's so yeah, difficult but, there in understanding? What have yeah, you got to do with federal government? Listen, listen, See, have you had anybody who complained that they, they were not able to afford that hospital? See, yeah, I don't know what you are no, talking just about. Answer the, answer the question. I don't know what you are talking about because I just finished saying my sister finished from... My you cannot answer the poverty one. level. You are asking a question that is linked yeah. to that one. Why are you confusing my, yourself? Your, your, your question yeah. regarding poverty level is irrelevant to the conversation. And you just, you just, oh, you just said something completely irrelevant. Yeah, it's relevant. irrelevant to the conversation. No, if you, if you, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no way, there's no way on the planet, on the planet, on the surface of the planet, where a subnational is the one that is driving. No, it is a national. When it comes to issue of addressing poverty, issue of addressing national education, Go and look at it. Every country, when it was done in Brazil, under Lula, Lula da Silva, it was a national program. What are you talking about? Do you guys even follow other uh, 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 other countries' progresses or whatever? Yeah, it's a national okay, 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 Was it state? Was it national? The so-called allow that was a bad investment. Allow that was just a bad investment and business. Okay, <laughs> let me tell you one thing. We're talking about, about, your, we're talking the, about the, welfare. We're no, talking no, about Mr. welfare. Mr. Akin, listen. You okay. can make your point without belittling any person. I don't know the kind of news you follow. Everybody uh, will not follow news. We refer to different countries. If you have refused to understand the point Black Panther was making, it becomes What point business. was he making? Yes, he was not saying that the states should be responsible for the poverty he said listen no that is that was what that was exactly what he said listen 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 if you have a hospital <laughs> in a state built by the state resources and you know the poverty level in that state you should be able to fix the price 
of services in that hospital that will match the poverty level in that and state. And I ask you a simple question. Have you had people who, were, who said they were not able to afford to pay for that a hospital? Lot, a lot of people. And I've also There's a lot of people you, that I know. Let me explain. That are not, of even the card, no. even the card, you, you can't afford it. Me, before Mr. you ask me that question, what is the minimum wage in those states? And what is the card? How much is it to take just a card in that hospital? A hospital where you, how much is it to take a card? I've said this before. My sister was admitted there. She couldn't have been able to do it without support from overseas. And no okay. civil Mr. Chris. Mr. Chris, so Mr. Your, Chris. Your, your, sister have, your sister have the card, right? No, she, she didn't. Why would she not have the card? She just went there on her own. Please. No, I said she have, no, 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 no. She have the card, right? How much did she pay for the card? Let's ask intelligent questions, please. No, but you know why? You know why I'm asking this question because I want us to pr to provide proofs now, right? You're going to send it to Niger Watch, and I'm going to send the card as well to Niger Watch so that see, we see. 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 Let, 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 no. let, let me say something here, Mr. No, King. See, yeah. I Mr. Have told King, you wait, that wait, we have okay, wait, receipt. okay, wait. You okay, have wait. your own receipt. Let's look yeah, that's at not, that, that, this. This is what I'm saying to you. So we'll provide without providing yeah. the proof now. Mr. King, Mr. King, Mr. King, what do you understand by by proof a federated state? You are for Obaseki because you see, eh, I know the kind of things you have supported on this platform. I know the kind of things you supported. I know. So, like I said, when you came in, it's I, I already know that oh, Akim is back. It's Obaseki standing again. So the the struggle wants to concede. Eh? When we are looking at these things, we have to look at this holistically. It is either a government. Mr. Chris, has it's not been. about Basek, it's about Aswan Gudan. No, why? no, Niger okay. Watch. Yeah, Niger Watch. Okay. Do you know Niger why? Watch, Niger... Who is Mr. Chris supporting anyway? Let's see, let's let's, 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 let's let me no, no, ask. No, 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 no. Uh, Mr. Chris, who are you supporting? <laughs> yeah, Mr. Chris, Mr. Chris, Mr. Chris. What I said is because you have been hiding. If you ask any person on this platform now, who am I supporting? They will tell you. Because you've so been are you supporting me. I'm supporting Olumide Akbata. Okay. Olumide Akbata. See, for obvious reasons. Which party that one? The SDP or B? No, Labour Party. Labour Party now. No, no, I know. Because you not talk and I don't talk about it. Maybe we look at like this. This idea where we talk, say, may they not judge your basic, which is what they call them. I swear, it go down by performance of a basic. See, we are all just playing to the gallery. There is no way, if we agree that Obaseki has failed, there is no way Obaseki will install. For the fact no, no, that... That, is, that is your personal opinion. That is your no, personal, opinion. personal opinion. You cannot opinion. say you, if, if we agree, if we, if we agree. What do you mean if we agree? You will agree. Mr. King, Mr. King, Mr. King, Mr. King, hold on. Mr. King, hold on. Mr. Chris, Mr. Chris. There is no way for the fact that Obaseki is even supporting Aswan Egodalu is enough for me not to support Aswan Egodalu because there is no way Obaseki will bring in somebody that will come and expose everything he has done. If, for example, Aswan Egodalu was even in PDP ordinarily and he fought the candidate of Obaseki and he won the ticket, I would have even have a reason to support Aswan Egodalu. Mr. Well, Chris, crazy. did you realize that Akpata is a relation to Obaseki and you expect him to probe him when he gets there? All those who are now old news. A relative and so hot. Oh and so old news, now the old news, you don't answer that question. Who now the big old news come? He has answered the question. Akpata has answered that question he just brought forward. And so we don't let us not be Mr. Black Panther, I am not asking you. I'm not asking you on the team, Mr. Chris, because when we are talking about don't trust politicians, don't come and tell me Akpata have answered it because when there will be no shit. It's a failure. That was what Akpata said openly. And he said Obaseki's government lacks human empathy. But as well as be saying that he will continue from where Obaseki stopped, he's going to continue with the development that tried Obaseki did. So which of them do you expect me to support? Akbata has told everybody that he's not going to go the way of Obaseki. What else do I want from him? In if River it's State, a, if it's Celestine about what they are saying, listen, listen, if it's about what they are saying, in River State, Celestine Omeya, if it's about what they are saying, where are we where Celestine, we are today? Because we are here where we are today now because everything about is said, he never, he never did can it. We, can, we here? can we have a quorum here? Yeah? Can we have a quorum here? Can we have a quorum here? You people are avoiding intellectual debate. 
Not be to yes. the shout, you do this, you do this. You are avoiding intellectual debate. I ask a question here. Somebody that is supporting a candidate is telling me how does the poverty rate got to do with the developmental rate of a state government? That yes, should show you the level of... Madam, wait. Madam, beg, wait. That should show you the level we are still playing the old card of not developing a those states. Look, most of us go run after this election. Most okay, of so us can, 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 go can run. ask a question. Can I ask Mr. a question? Mr. Okay, yes, hold on. Mr. Blancata, okay. I want to I want to make something clear a bit. Okay, this is a debate, and we all are supporting who we are supporting. We are airing our opinion. I don't like it sometimes when you sound like other people don't know what they are saying or what they are doing, except you. You can't say people madam, are madam, 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 madam. I have not finish. come against let you. I did not go please. against you. I'm not talking I say, about I say me. They are I'm not talking about the me. Madam, wait, 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 don't box me. Madam, let don't me box me. With that. Let me finish. Madam, I'm not wait, 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 wait. I will not wait. Let me finish because you are part of this. Madam, I'm not going to let you finish. You I will not box I will not stop for you either. I will not stop for you, you either. I am talking. I'm not, I'm if, you not to, if you want if, if you want intellectual debate, we will have it here. We don't have all politicians now. I am not to finish what I am I'm saying. I'm not arguing with you. You are to people every you, time. Wait, wait, you, wait, wait. No, madam, madam, you want to box me. That is the politics you want to play. You want to box me somewhere. I am not challenging your right. You have the right. So why are you going that way? That people are avoiding intellectual debate. I am saying this is a debate. If somebody does not respond the way you want the person to respond, does not mean that the person is not having intellectual debate. Let's not make it as if some know what they are saying. Madam, 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 what do I mean by madam? What do I mean by intellectual debate? We have to come in a logical form. We have to come with a data. You cannot come here and you want to you want to support a candidate and tell me the person build or speak to, build a road, build a, a, a house, build a, this, and how and I ask a question. As that just opposing it, rephrasing it, how does that increase the the poverty level in the state? It's not telling me that how does poverty got to do with the discussion of what you, we are saying. Then and ask, I'll go back. How what is the meaning of governance? Let him answer that question. What do you mean I of governance? Not, if governance I, I cannot increase I'm not against what you are asking. I'm not against what you are asking. All I'm saying is that let's just be conscious about how we say it and let's respect each other and let madam, the conversation Madam, go. madam, I don't I'm know how you want me to respect you. I'm respecting you. I'm saying intellectual debate. I'm not abusing you. It's not about me. It's not about me. Don't put I respect. Not madam, madam, about madam. Me. We're talking about everybody madam. in the panel, not about me. Madam, I do always observe you. You Look, you cannot box also. The new generation cannot box them. Every time you come in, you say respect. We, nobody did disrespect anybody here. And I, I first of all said to you that I respect who you stand for. Nobody disagree with it. I only said intellectual debate. Let's bring fact that the people will understand what we are saying. We are saying we are using the old rhetoric of saying, hey, he do this, he do this. And that's the question, just opposing with the population. How does that affect it? Because that is what we need. A, a person who will come and serve, not a person who come and put one foundation here. You say, don't do this. That is not development. If it does not affect the, the, the lower people, it does not bring the poverty rate, it doesn't reduce the poverty rate down, it is not development. And that person is not doing service to the state. For Baseki or whatever you want to say it is, we cannot dispute or Baseki from this case because he autocratically put in this guy there. And we, as a people, we are following the rhetoric because. I told the people that politicians will never change. And we, we don't want to understand it. We are still seeing it. I am respecting who you support, and that's big. But one thing I want to say here is that if we are to do things the way to, in a different way, because you cannot continue to do things the same way and expect a different result, my people, I beg you now, let us, let them debate before we start putting all the forces in the world back in one candidate. So that Edo people can quietly look and reason. Let us change the mindset. Let us look at people who want to serve and people who want to govern. They are two different things. Mm -hmm. Serving and governing, they are two different things. So we got to so, look at people who want so to serve now. Talking, and we will not make our talking, choice. We'll be talking for very long. Uh, is it okay for someone sorry, to Sorry, sorry about in? that. You can go. i finish. Sorry. Uh, okay, finish. okay. So, you know, when Mr. Mr. Evis asked me earlier on that, oh, um, I supported Obaseki. I was supporting Obaseki. Uh, and what was the reason and how did I think that he has, he has done? So I gave my own math. This is what I think. 
and the reasons why I gave those marks, but I would have expected somebody to say, no, those things you're saying, they, they're not on ground, they don't exist, or one or two, or this or that. Like, look, uh, there's, th there's a say that Rome was not built in a day. There's not one governor of, for over eight years, for an eight year span, that will be able to fix any state in Nigeria. Okay? So, one governor will come and do that. Can you can you repeat that again? Because I don't know if it's your internet or mine. You said there's no so one said, governor in Nigeria. I said there, there's no one governor that can come and fix the a state in an eight year term. It's going to be a continuity. Another person will come, will do their own. Another person will come, they will do their own. Another person will come and do their own. Another person will come and do their own. That was how, that was how it's going to be a gradual process. But if you say Obasaki has failed, then you have to compare, make compar comparison with what against what in that in the circles of Nigeria, or in the or you make uh, cases against him with say maybe Adams or Shomole or maybe Eloki Benedion. How has he fair against those past governors or? How did he fare against other state governors during his time in Nigeria? So this is how you will judge him. Not just, just look at it, high service, he has failed. No, it doesn't work like that. Oh, no, you live in the West. You see how things is done in the West, so he has failed. No, come on, man. We, are, we, we, we should be more... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm listening to what you said. Yeah, do you realize that? Do you realize that? Intention. Now, if, if Rome was not built in a day, did you also read that the people building Rome, they were stealing the bricks that was meant to build Rome? No. Rome wasn't built in a day, and the people building Rome, they were, they were not stealing the materials meant for the building of Rome. We also need to add that caveat. The okay, so... Yes. Then no one's stealing any material now? Or is that what... No. Mr. Kim, Mr. Mr. Chris, uh, I was about to ask Mr. Kim a question, please. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, uh, Mr. Kim, yeah, yeah you, you know, the, the projects that you mentioned, you know, I, um, I, I want to ask, were those projects done from scratch, from foundation level? The reason why I ask, because when I hear people talk about the Secretariat that was built, I think, by Ogbo Media, if somebody can do the research, I think it was it's built in the, in the 80s. And then somebody comes to renovate it, and then they now use that as a political score point. And then they now want to talk about Ogbe Stadium, how it has been renewed. It's so funny. Ogbe Stadium was listen, Ogbe Stadium was renovated by Oshomone. But and I know it's all SPVs anyway, we all know that. And then Obasagi came, renovated it. Can you even tell me the expendi expenditures of all these projects? Now, the biscuit roads. The existing roads that are biscuit roads that are in a, in fact, for me to even use roads, to me, I think that is just kind of um, primordial to even use it. But I'm just listing things that that is visible now. Roads, for example, the, the so called biscuit, biscuit road, not so called, the expenditure of those roads, the contractor of those roads. Do you even know the contractor that did Ogwe Stadium? Do you know the contractor that did um, the, the secretariat on, on Sapple Road? Now, the Osishima power plant, do you realize it's not even for Edo people? We just have a little investment in that. If that thing is owned by a group of, I don't want to say much, in a group of people that are not even from Edo state, but it is just an investment. And that Osishima power plant is not serving the state because that was the campaign. He's going to bring light in the entire state. Now, most of what he campaigned for, because you mentioned from the first tenure, you were saying, let us list what he said he was going to do. And you, okay. you kind of said, like, based on the administ administrative processes, you can give him a scorecard on that. He did well in that. But, however, the Gele Gele Seaport that was used to campaign, and then the airport, the cargo airport that was going to open in Auchi, amongst other things that he promised, they're not existing. Ekewa Road, okay, beloved Ekewa Road, beloved Ekewa Road, it's still under construction. You live in the diaspora. Many of you civil engineers, please come online. Tell us okay. how, long, how long it will take, including an estimate of expenditure, to build a road, a, a corner road, is it up to 20 kilometers? Somebody can correct me, do the statistics there. It, and I, I don't think it's up to 20 kilometers, a Kenwan road. Since 2020 or 2019, they started, 20, 2020, yes, they renovated, they started the renovation. Till date, I just came from Nigeria recently. It is a pitiful, 
pitiful situation. That's all I can say about it. So when you come here and then you start to say Obaseki did what you gave him seven, fine. That's your opinion. I respect that. To okay. me, I will give him one. And that one is for the renovation. Now, the red okay, roof revolution, education, um, Mr. Elvis, I don't know if you want to cut me off. I don't know if, and I know I'm, I'm just trying to respond to Mr. Akin because no, go I'm going to do my go research. Ahead. Okay, I'm going to do my research. Want, and then, okay, go ahead. And, and, and I want everyone to do their research. This is not um, the MOU, you know, parlance or uh, EMAC. It's the IMAC I'm talking about. And I don't know if you've been to Edo State very recently. It is a pitiful situation. The only thing that's making Edo State run today are the people from diaspora. Because you know that Edo people, practically every home has some has somebody in diaspora. And even that percentage that Mr. Black Panther gave, he says 65% of the poverty rate. The reason why it's even 65 is because of people in diaspora. They have that obligated to send money to their parents on a daily basis. I can tell you for sure. I, I can, I'm saying in terms of the scorecard on a scale of one to 10, I give him one. And that one is just the renovation of the palm house renovation of uh, what what uh, what's it call it oak bay stadium and you know the other renovations he has been doing and he's taking the glory for it and i don't understand i don't understand for the life of me why people will be supporting something that's mediocre i don't get it you see there's, 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 a, there's, a, there's a quote that says you don't really fear the oppressor you fear the people that support and encourage the oppressor that absolutely is, that is my anger mind blowing when you see something, it's not really about party. And some people will say, I hate Obasaki. I am still saying it, I don't. That man will even listen to me because he knows that I'm not being hypocritical. I'm not being a, a psycho fancy. I'm saying it the way it is. You didn't do well. If he did so well, I swear Godalo right now should be campaigning based on his party of the person representing the party right now. He should be campaigning that, oh, look at the uh, PDP governor, Governor Basaki. See what he has done, see what he has done. Alex Oti, whose IGR of Abia State is not even it's not even more than a do state. But take, take a look at what this guy has done within his space of few months. Let us start using those examples. Let us not go with the old rhetorics. Please. Because so, at the end of the day, it just is for everybody. And this ASA agenda thing is to squash that those, those things are separatist statements. Because at the end of the day, even if an ASA man wants to run for governorship, you will need a donut, you will need a do south to win. You will need those votes. Mother so, Richard, I there is no such thing like a agenda. It's a door agenda. No. They're calling um, it a door agenda because they oh, want to show no, no. He started the ESA agenda in case you did not know. Because he told, he told the ESA people to vote for him. But was why Governor Baseki won. Listen, my sister, listen. Governor Baseki won because he promised the Edo Central that they will that they will, uh, they will, they will become governor if they vote for him. And which I he has kept that promise. And he I did that by intimidating PDP members who have been there for donkey years. Example is Shri Shaibu. Example with uh, what is uh, Anselmo Jeswa. And then we will have the other faction again. Can I ask you that a question? So and money has been used to buy people. Right. If you are buying, if you are buying people off, what does that tell you? It means but that you want to bring somebody that will cover your tracks. Nobody is a fool. Can you allow me to ask a question, please? Go ahead. My, can my I question respond? is you. Can I respond to Mr. King because he threw some questions to me. He said, "What?" Well, no, okay. Madam Rita, I've said a lot of things. Let me quickly ask. Let me quickly ask Madam Rita this question. I will. I will give you the the floor. Um, Madarita, you are always talking about this successor, successor thing of us. I keep bringing us when that is the crime of the man, which I know. I want to ask you, did you know that Peter will be when he was living in Anabra State? He was in support of his successor. How did he go? His successor disappointed at the at the at the end till so at the end no, no, listen, listen, no, listen. he disappointed but he did not listen my sister and i'm answering your question he did not disappoint he did not disappoint as badly as what governor baseki did in edo state let us not compare anambra okay which which airport do we have now Please, please, my sister, let's not go there. Oh, did not disappoint us. Go there. It is not comparable. Uh, You're comparing apples and oranges, my sister. Okay. 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 Madam, you are wasting your time. It was on this platform. Hold on one second. It was on this platform. It was on this platform, yeah, when some people were telling us that Autumn, Governor Autumn, former Governor of Benue State, 
was a better governor than Obas Eki. So I, I've heard a lot of things. So I don't those things I don't let it bother me anymore. So he's better Mutta, than governor Obas Eki because he stood against the Fulani killing his people. Okay, what did governor Obas Eki do? No, she okay, said it's not good that there was okay, a woman that okay, came to this okay. channel and was crying about her grandmother. Okay. We didn't see it from the governor. If governor Otto can go point. out and challenge the federal government, that is a governor. That is a man that yeah. cares about the people. That is a man that understands emotional intelligence. Please, let's not go there. I'm getting so, upset, okay. but let's not go there. You've told me to hold on twice. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I've never. I was going to respond to Madam Rita. No, we we've gone past that. It's just going to be back and forth. You said I should compare. Is it with a foreign state? Is it with a local state? Is it now? I'll take one state from the southeast. If you are not satisfied, I'll pick another one from the north. Okay. I'll take uh, yeah the state of the is it rising sun the salt of the nation no but let me not understand is all basically contesting for the third term again or like what that was hold on one second now let us like that was his contesting he's just Niger putting a prodigy there he's contesting okay. Niger Niger watch, wait. he said maybe we compare which state we want is all like compare and i just i remember very clearly that you they complain that time Say if you they talk about Obaseki, then go they tell you say may you know they compare those states with so so and so place. I heard you complain about that several times. Now, Mr. Akim, I'll take a state from the southeast. If you are not satisfied, I'll go to the northeast. If you are not satisfied, I'll go to northwest. Let's start from the salt of the nation. That is a Boeing state. Look at everything, look at what a do state receive and what a Boeing receive. And let's look at the infrastructure, Dave Umayi gave to Eboin people. Dave Umayi built a teaching hospital from scratch. Your governor renovated a nursing school that was built by Ogbemudia or Ogbemudia in the 70s, in the 80s. While Dave Umayi built a teaching, you know, a teaching hospital from scratch, from the very foundation. Dave Umayi gave them international airports, which he wanted to name after Buhari and Buhari refused. But your governor gave your state a renovated airport. Dave Umayi gave them several sports complex. But Obaseki renovated Ogbem. Now we'll talk about the renovation of Ogbemudia Stadium. Lucky Benedio renovated that stadium in 2000, 2002. Then Oshomole came again from 2006, 2000, and 2008. Oshomole renovated that stadium. Then Obaseki came again. One stadium, you know, every governor since 1999, they were all innovating that stadium. But Dave Umayi, on the other hand, gave his people brand new facility. Then let's talk about road. Obaseki is biscuit roads everywhere. But Dave Umayi gave his people flyovers. Flyovers. That was what he gave his people. So in which other area do you want to compare? Now, it's not, it's not finished. And yet, a Boeing has spent less amount of money than what Obaseki has spent. Bros, let me add you to it to Dave Moy. Yeah. All the roads by Dave Moy. You are, not, are you satisfied? If you are not satisfied, I'll just crawl to the Northeast. No, I'm, I'm satisfied, but I want to respond to you if that's okay. Yes, you can respond. Okay, Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I will, I, will, I will first of all say that I'm I'm surprised and shocked that uh, you actually use Ebo in state and uh, not Anambra state as uh, well, uh, because of your support for Peter Obi. So for me, I would have no, no, would, no, 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 have... no, no. Do you know why I didn't go to Anambra state? It was deliberate. See, you guys, so, eh, you can come like it is written in the Bible. You can come like a mighty Russian, with, but the Lord will read the standard. I purpose okay. that was like it's if you okay. see the okay. next example I said, I said okay. I was going to use the state. There's no need for there's Listen. no need for a Sunday sermon. Okay. Listen. So let me I just said respond. I was going to use a state from the northeast. I am very deliberate in all my arguments. I chose yeah, a boy. I refuse to choose hold Anna on. Brown in Lugo because a boy is one of the most downtrodden states in the southeast with the least allocation. That was why I used a boy. It it's was fine, very good. Fine. I understand. You understand. Yeah. I understand. You use a boy. Okay, so it's fine. You talked. You talked about roads and uh, bridges and uh, hospitals and stadium. So 
I don't want to go too deep into why is certain things and why certain things doesn't play because one, uh, as it Abakaleke, the capital of Ebo is uh, the capital of Ebo, um, newly uh, created. Maybe the past governors didn't were not able to build those things. But what you need to understand is that uh, Benin City had been a capital city for a very, very, very long time. Even during when we were, we were Bender State, Benin City was the capital of Bender State. So a lot of this facility, we've, we've had them on ground. So it was just to be renovated, not to build a new one. So, and that was what the governor felt that he needed to do. So put that one aside, okay? Let me give, okay, let me even say, I, I give you that one. But you know how funny it is that you did not talk about the 